once was mine Those cravings backstabbed me Deceived me Never shall I tolerate their crimes again Now let the hunt begin Oh Seven thousand souls Scared and daunted Such a tale of old Not too long ago This village was a golden scene of hope Call down the reckoning To bring back hope and peace Restore our glory To live forever Bring down the dark regime
Welcome everyone to the LPL playoffs as we officially hit the lower bracket in our double elimination stage. And that means that it's elimination day. A singular BO5 will decide which team has a fighting chance to go and represent the region at MSI and which one will officially say goodbye and be on a break until summer split. I'm Jeannie, your host, joined on the analyst armchairs, I'm going to call them, with Nymera and Trouble. Thank you so much for joining me to both of you. How are you feeling today? Oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling great. It's like, we're going to have to lose one team today. And I, I'm just going to say, I'm just so mind blown in terms of like me joining the LPL and sitting here live for the very first time ever. One team has to go and it's like, 12 international titles between all of these players. What is going on? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the thing with the LPL. We're so stacked with talent. Any given playoff series you go into is going to have some big name teams and big name players as well. And this one's no different. And we're going to dive straight into that because with the playoff bracket and the way it played out means that today we're going to be looking at NIP going up against JDG. And as we already touched upon, the loser will unfortunately be on break until summer. Now, I'm going to hold my horses here because I want to hear your live reaction in terms of NIP against JDG. Did you use the elimination match here? So I think if you were asking at the start of the year, having BLG, Top Esports and JDG as a top three and then having NIP as a fourth team, it wouldn't be that out there. I think if you looked about towards the end of the regular split though, people are going, NIP? Really? You sure about that? Particularly with teams like Weibo and LNG kind of on the up at that point. I think right here, right now, though, the fact that NIP have made elimination bracket, took a game off of BLG, that's huge. Yeah, and having to play against JDG, potentially if you beat JDG right here, you make a huge statement for a team that was very formally formed. Yeah, and it brings also the question... There you go. Formally formed. Formal. There we go, absolutely. <laughs> it brings the question in terms of well, how exactly we got here. What went right for NIP? What potentially might have gone wrong for JDG? And that's something that we're going to be looking more into as we head into the later stages of the day. Yeah, you know, we've had a hell of playoffs so far. You know, it is a slog. We have a huge amount of games, and particularly with JDG, they started off well against Weibo. Yeah, absolutely. I felt like JDG coming into the playoffs, we expected them to pretty much 3-0 every single team that sort of finished under them in terms of the playoffs bracket. And it was no surprise when they went up against Weibo and absolutely smashed them. I feel like the problems came later on when they had to face Tess. And unfortunately, it was a completely different series and a completely different phase for JDG. And yeah, particularly against Top Esports, this is why we are having to revisit our expectations of JDG, particularly between games two and three as well. They had exactly the same drafts. It was really really not it. Um, you know, they banned out the Alistair for game three, but it really wasn't the, the difference that they needed. So we have to now ask, okay, is this just a blip or was it something else? Whereas on the other side, you know, BLG, they stopped NIP for the most part. They had some fantastic games. Respectfully. But, NIP, they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they did, of course, take a game off of BLG and that's a big moment for them. I feel like the creativity that NIP came into this particular series with was incredible and very commendable. BLG is the top dog in the LPL. I feel like you need some spies yeah. for two Moonbase Alpha, we yeah, call it. Yeah, exactly. That. Or uh, some moon breaths or like mouthwash. I don't know. You guys were saying a lot of things during this yeah, cast. Yeah, we did. But I feel like the creativity that NIP showed in this particular series and the fact that you're not trying to fight the Titans toe to toe because you know how good they are at their game. And I feel like looking at this particular series versus JDG and JDG having a very similar way of playing, mm -hmm. I feel like NIP might bring some spice here too. Oh, I feel like we're coming through with the predictions pretty early on in terms of spice being brought. Maybe even like a five game banger. I guess we're going to have to hey, wait and see. We can hope. Oh, we can hope. I feel like that's not very convincing. That's not what I wanted to hear. I'm like, yeah, Jenny, you're right. We're going to be looking at five games. Maybe <laughs> I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. I guess we're going to have to look. We'll figure that one out. But when we're looking at JDG particularly, I think a lot of questions come up in terms of this is a team that has had a lot of success, not just regionally, but also internationally. And now they're on the brink of elimination. Being on a break until summer mm. split. So they might not be a surprise based off play on this split to be around the third, fourth place mark. I think there are two teams markedly better than them so far. But as in terms of history, this team has been the most dominant in recent LPL history. They've won four titles um, in their entire history. They've won an MSI championship. They've been consistently showing up to international events as well. JDG are built for success. Absolutely, and I feel like the big hit for JDG came at Worlds 2023 because it was it was the golden ball, right? It was every international title and every domestic title, double LPL, the MSI. And then when it came to Worlds, they still had a pretty good showing. It just wasn't quite that title that they were looking for. And with a lot of changes coming in, people were like, oh, upgrade, downgrade, whatever it is. The team has absolutely changed. Now they find themselves in a little bit of a, of a shaky situation. Yeah, change is something that we're going to talk about. But first of all, I want to highlight the point that with this amount 
amount of success that a team like JDG has received in the past, there is a lot of expectations on their shoulders in terms of how they would or should be particularly performing this time around. So being in the spot that they currently are, it does kind of give those of us watching at home a sense that they could be in trouble. Yeah, the past is, you know, Past in the past, the future's a mystery, but today is a gift, but this one's a bad wow, one. Wow, this is such a, a present. Wow. It is a present. Oh, you went there. Um, but JDG, you know, um, in terms of their past um, titles, when they have won, things have started very well from the end of the regular season, and they've ended up in very high seeding. For all of their four um, LPL titles, they have been second seed at least. They're mm -hmm. starting in third seed this time. They need to build in a way that they haven't really had to in previous playoffs, at least. Starting from third, particularly with the looks of um, Top Esports demolishing the three out in the form of BLG, that's going to be a hard ask. Yeah, and we're looking at this and we're looking at their re regional, like recent performances regionally, internationally. We're looking at the success. We're looking at potentially being third seed and that not necessarily translating into a win in the LPL. But something to keep in mind here, Trouble, is the fact that it's not the identical roster that had this golden road run. And I feel like maybe this is why they're starting from a lower seed as well. And I feel like the team has to build up. Now, talking about build up, Yaga walking back into the roster, he's not a stranger. Like, he's <laughs> played for JDG before. I feel like him and Kanave are probably some of the biggest brains when it comes mm -hmm. to like a mid-jungle duo uh, in terms of synergizing, reading the map, the way they play around their vision and also add, adding Flandre. You're like, you've added a world champion. You've added a mid laner that has had success in this particular roster before. So I feel like, yes, you might have to do a little bit of rebuilding in terms of how you want to play the game. But the third seed is not a bad start. Yeah, and particularly when, you know, the pieces that you lost are, you know, Knight369, who have gone onto their own teams and been, you know, arguably best in role in both of them. Knight with an MVP, 3 Six nine been incredibly powerful too as well. I'm um, just replacing those pieces very very hard. Even mm -hmm. though Yugao has been such a big part of this roster. Yeah, and change is not necessarily a bad thing. It change is something that happens throughout rosters all the time, especially with the nature of how esports works. But I think something that I really like to touch upon here is that it's different, right? And different means that even though you have the third place this time around, doesn't necessarily mean the fact that you that's a negative thing like it used to be in the past it could be a positive and you know may may maybe second maybe msi i don't know maybe hope you're so positive today yeah, uh, so i have to be every now and then yeah there has been many equations when it comes to jdg in terms of rosters but there's been one particular constant on the roster in terms of the jungler and in terms of kanavi and i know that a lot of people might just like come with pitchforks at me but i'm just gonna say it i feel like he's the smartest jungler in the world, or at least two. For me, he is number one. I wanted to highlight particularly his series versus Top Esports. And you're gonna be like, Georgia, you're crazy. They lost three and zero. It was clean from Top Esports, but Kanavi made the difference in this series. He looked good. He lost 3-0 and he looked good. I wanna particularly highlight this one. You see how the bot lane will go in and give jungle, get that information towards their jungler. And you'll see that Kanavi will start towards the top side. He expects the bot lane invade, but this is a win-win scenario from him because whether he gets in or not, he gets the top quarter of the jungle, he gets to bully Tian out of his own jungle as well, since he has the priority lanes from the top side of the map. And that was a pretty good early game read from Kanavi to get that early game advantage for his team. Now, of course, the top doesn't, sh uh, the clip doesn't show that, but he also gets a solo kill, straight, uh, duo kill, straight after this towards the top side of the map. Same pretty much situation right here. He knows that he has the priority lanes towards the top side of the map, but does he do? He stops Tien's path. Later on, he'll bully him out of the red bath. He takes his entire top side of the jungle. He takes his flash later on as well, which creates a very vulnerable situation for the top esports jungle, because every single time in this game, Tien stepped into his top quadrant, Kanavi was there. And I think particularly for Kanavi as an individual player as well, um, he's taken up the captaincy role um, within this team this year. And that's not always the most um, important thing within esports teams compared to like some more traditional sports. But I think particularly for him, it's meant a lot symbolically. I think Kanavi has been really at the top of the tree for such a long time. And, you know, he was on my shortlist for MVP. This guy is so important to JDG's success. Get him an international, uh, not international, a world you, you just want a Kanavi skin. <laughs> he wants the international. I just want a Kanavi skin, even though I'm not a jungler. First, <laughs> need to get to MSI, which means first, you also need to win this particular game. But they're going to be going up against NIP and we've already talked a little bit more about in terms of their potentially really similarities in terms of how NIP approaches the game but NIP is here we've seen the creativity and this roster has been doing really well and exceeding expectations yeah I think uh, at the start of the year you know I thought this team could very much get towards top five top four potential they have made it here it's been a rocky road this has been a combination of the OMG 2023 roster and then the V5 roster of the past as well which of course um, NIP coming in to 
kind of take over the V5 brand as well, very new to the league. Um, but this team has a lot of very powerful pieces that they've had to find some way to work together. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like I want to stick around where you said it's a very particular new team because I feel like even the name changes, it is a new team and it's very difficult, you know, for players to invest in a team like this. And yeah, Rookie has been V5 before and we've talked about this, but I feel like he's such a core piece for that particular team and so much does rely on his back. Yeah, and that's something to look forward to because we're having some new competition or new kids on the block, yeah. however you mm -hmm. want to talk about it, in terms of, in in the sense of NIP. And they're going up against a team like JDG who has so much experience under their belt. The other two, the other three teams remaining in the top four have around 600 LPL games played. Now, if you look at um, that number there, that's not that much. That's like, <laughs> you know, almost, a, you know, it's about a fifth of it. NIP, they are... <laughs> I need my calculator here for the <laughs> the, is, the thing is, when you look at NIP compared to the other top four teams, they don't have titles. They don't have a huge amount of um, historical success. They barely have any history in general. They need to really start building from here. They're already top four. It's a great start, but they are working against the weight of history. They are setting their precedent today. I feel like both of these teams are so to say working against history because JDG, where they have a history of success in a lot of different titles under their belt, but a change in their roster. You're now looking at NIP, 129 games. It's like less than place look you game. <laughs> both of these teams Whoa. have, you know, they, they both have something to prove today. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, we say 129 games or whatever is like less than 200. Every other team has 600. You know who has probably more than 600 games? Oh, tell it's me. probably Ooh. Rookie. Probably this guy. I, th I think at this point I'm a spokesperson for Rookie. <laughs> I think that's what it's, ha it's, kind of, it's come down to. But he is such a core piece for the team. And I feel like right here we wanted to highlight his champion pool because you, Namera, mentioned uh, weapons of choice. Yep. Because he's literally such a huge pressure point when it comes to all of the games. I feel like this hard shoving or hard brawling into the side lanes, creating pressure picks is what has put NIP on the map. And what this means you can do is you can get a good early laning phase and immediately get impact in the map. This guy takes all of these picks and you know, we had the Asu as a thing there, but if we just pause this clip and just visit just what he does here. Now, what NIP are trying to do in this clip is you see a lot of vision control on the bot side of the map. You see jungler pathing towards bot side. So you think, okay, that's strong side bot lane, which means that you have a weak side top lane. And as you can see in this clip, there's an attempt to die from RNG. So let's start playing now and see what Rookie does. Because you have a jungler on the bot side of the map. Well, turns out because you have Rookie as your mid laner on picks that get involved early, you also have a jungler on the other side of the map at the same time. He takes the Wii side of the map, walks through the lanes, so he doesn't walk over enemy vision going up towards the top of the play. They coordinate with globals as well. Yes, it misses in this case, but the thought process is what's important here. And Rookie immediately punishes the other side of the map. He does a really strong 2v2 here, but the mechanical execution of this is actually secondary to the fact that actually allows them to play towards a great play towards this in a 2v2, while they are still winning on the bot side of the map. No other player in the LPL is doing this right now. And honestly, no other team in the world is doing this right now to this kind of extent. At the end of this clip as well, we see, you know, Rookie gets away with a snowball, but then also they get to dive on the bot side of the map as well. There is no weak side of the map on this play because Rookie uses these champions in this way. Yeah, beautiful play on the map from the from the mid laner, acting as, as you mentioned it yourself, the second jungler. But to me, then trouble brings the question of how that mid lane matchup could potentially go. We're looking at Rookie going up against Yagao. They're both incredible players in their own right. But what can we really be looking forward to? I feel like Yagao has a really tough task of having to pin Rookie down in lane. Yeah. Yeah. this particular one. Uh, we mentioned how Yagao and Kanavi as a duo read the map so well. And I wanted to, uh, I, I know that stats, I know that stats oh, don't on. always tell the whole story, <laughs> but, but I feel like if I could name this particular graphic, it would be you versus the guys who tells you not to worry about. Uh, <laughs> and, and you is Yagao at this point because rookie stats and the way he plays the map speak for themselves. Not only is he 30% of his entire team's damage, but he's also pulling numbers. 70, 772 damage per minute. Well, I think we talked about this uh, a little bit, Namera, when we we're preparing for this particular matchup as well. We said, yeah, Gao is not necessarily flashy in terms of the damage numbers that he pulls. However, his clutch factor is what makes him so important for his team. Yeah, there is one thing you cannot deny about Yagao, and sometimes stats will lie to you. These are regular season stats mostly. Yagao, that's never really been his specialty, but when the game matters, Yagao steps up. Yagao is one of the most clutch players in the history of the LPL. It took him years to get himself an all-pro team because of this, because he wasn't necessarily showcasing everything at a regional um, kind of regular season level. But I mean, last year we saw him beat Rookie, uh, not Rookie, we saw him beat Chovy, we saw him beat Faker, we saw him beat so many different players players you know he's even been uh, at some points maybe not so recently but he was knight's kryptonite for a little while too this guy has a massive massive pedigree of stepping up when it matters 
Yeah, and I feel like uh, the whole story about Yagao will definitely have to be, hey, you need to stop Rookie from getting out of the lane. And I feel like he can change the story uh, of those stats. We said again, the stats do not tell necessarily a lot of the story. But for Rookie, I feel like they speak for themselves. And if you do not pin down this guy in lane, he's going to cause massive problems. Well, it's a mid lane matchup to be looking forward to. The start of the BO5 series of JDG going up against NIP. We're ready. So let's head over to our caster's Munch and Lyric to bring it down. Thanks so much, Ginny. Yeah, we're here. It's Munch, it's Lyric, and we're coming to you guys with our first elimination match here in the double eliminations. It's NIP versus JDG. And I feel like there is real precedent for this to be an absolute bag of Lyric. I feel like both of these teams have shown strength throughout playoffs. They've also shown big weaknesses throughout playoffs. And it's going to be down to the preparation of either team on, on how they can approach this series. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. Both of these teams have actually been the two most aggressive teams so far in playoffs, which is like a really cool dynamic to bring in. The AD was talking about it, but like Rookie versus Yagao, I feel like can, can be such an exciting one. Uh, Yagao actually shutting down Rookie in, in summer playoffs of last year on TES. So just a lot of cool dynamics, a lot of action that we can expect uh, to be seen today. And it, it's really cool, right? Because for JDG, yeah. wanting wanting to go on to MSI to defend that title. For Rookie, man, we've been begging him to get back to internationals for years. <laughs> Yeah, it feels like this is this is an angle. This is a very real angle. They're in the top four. This is honestly, it feels like he's been so close a few times in the last few years yeah. as well. It feels like he's so close once again. But there's another couple of steps required to make it to that tournament, and he would have to. I mean, honestly, if Rookie makes it to Worlds this year, he there's no argument that the team will have deserved it because to get through JDG Top Esports BLG, like those are your three opponents that you're fighting against. It's a tough one, and you know we're talking about JDG being down in the lower bracket and. Like, I think a lot of people are a little bit surprised to see them here in the lower bracket, but at the same time, it's BLG and Top Esports that are in the upper bracket. Yeah. Top Esports in their series against JDG looked on another level. So honestly, the top four feels so strong to me. Yeah, exactly, right? So, so falling down to this lower bracket, not really like, like a disservice to any team, but okay. you had to make it down here. Now it's about stepping up. NIP have had a much more grueling run, a lot more reps under their belt compared to JDG, who yeah. very contrasting results from like a 3-0, a 2-0-3. So it's going to be about the mental bounce back that they can make. Yeah, I mean, like NIP coming all the way from round two, like this is their fourth best of five of playoffs. Like if they make it to MSI, they will have played so many games across playoffs. It'll be insane. You can see JDG though, stepping in towards the arena today. Worth mentioning as well, the top lane uh, for JDG. Obviously we saw quite a bit of sheer towards the end of the split. Flandre coming in for playoffs and I think two mixed results like versus Weibo looking really, really good versus Top Esports struggling a little bit more. Yeah, and it, it's crazy, right? I, I especially feel bad after him getting so heavily criticized uh, uh, in the last game uh, against TES. He just got hard camped over, over and over again. Yeah. And it's like, man, look at the MVPs of playoffs so far. Like, Flandre is the only one who has them on JDG's side. <laughs> like, this guy stepped up in a huge way against Weibo and uh, definitely can do it here once again against Shanji. It's going to be a little bit different because Shanji always does have, you know, that that quirkier pool, especially having to worry I mean, so much about things like the rumble. But yeah. uh, Flandre also has that that same dynamic. I mean, there is that quirkiness to Shanji, but at the same time, I, I feel like Shanji during this playoff specifically hasn't been that quirky. Like we have seen a couple yeah. of the counter picks. We've seen a little bit of that rumble coming out. But realistically, a lot of the time he's on the Renekton versus Rek'Sai, it's just a miserable matchup. I feel like so often yeah. he's not been set up to to have that impact and, and you know, having often the counter pick, but being banned away so you don't really have much of a counter towards the Rek'Sai. It, it does feel like it's been a tough playoffs for Shanxi. I don't think it's been his best split ever anyway, but also some of these drafts, I feel like it's difficult for him to perform. Yeah, definitely, right? It, it, I mean, for NIP, they've definitely lent into this being a rookie team and making sure they have those drafts uh, be based around him. And like the AD was saying, that that could be the the key to success up against yeah. JDG with, with how little they actually play around mid lane themselves. Yeah, we'll see how much the, the mid lane focus will be across the course of today. Because, I mean, rookie versus Yagao, the desk were already talking about it as well. It's going to be an exciting matchup. Two absolutely legendary mid laners in the LPL, but for totally different reasons we were just saying backstage before we came live i hope yagao brings out like a zoe or a leblanc or something because yagao has played carries over the years it's not that he never he plays carries it's just more recent history he's not been a carry player 
Exactly right. You think back to, to 2019 and 2020, it being all about the Zoe. And that's where he thrived. And I think a lot of people are still associating him with that champion. Rookie's been leaning, uh, you know, deeper into the pool with the Yasos and the Yone. So, Yigao, it's your turn, buddy. See if we can pull it out today. JDG going to be our first team to step out onto the stage. And we'll see how they're going to perform. Actually, surprisingly, did worse in the round four of the bracket matches. Like BLG losing a game to NIP, whereas top esports matches with 3 0 of JDG. So JDG very much going to need to come back into things. Flandre looking pleased with the reception he's received as he walks in. Again, as he should, coming back in out of nowhere uh, and really just having the performance of his life against Swaybo in that first series before not being able to find impact in the second, really leaning on things like the Rexhead that you were talking about. So now, if Sean is just going to elect to go into the Renekton, and like, Flandre is going to absolutely love that. It certainly is. I'm... I feel like across the board, we've got some really good matchups today, to be honest. This bot lane that just stepped out, Ruler are missing. I feel like a bot lane with a big reputation, but they haven't really been the hard carry 2v2 that we remember from last year. This split, so I, I feel like Lackluster is, is too strong for what I'm trying to say here, but they've not had the absolute star power that we've got used to. Forward to control have looked pretty good across playoffs. Droll especially has had some real standout games. He's also had a couple of games where he gets caught out a bit, kind of, High highs and low lows here for Joel across playoffs. I'm excited yeah. for that 2v2 down on the bottom side, though. Exactly. Like, I really feel like the NIP bot lane has started to step up more in playoffs. They were uninspiring in the regular season. You know, they'd have their moments. Fotik, of course, can carry games. But again, when there's so many elite 2v2s in the LPL, it feels like you need to be able to fare a little bit better in lane. We haven't seen Roller and Missing really being that big dominating presence. So. If Otik and Joao can step up here and, and especially really make it through lane because that's where their picks ha have been inching towards, right? Playing more for fights. Uh, they should be able to have the time of their lives in this series against JDG. They certainly should. There he is, Rookie steps out onto the stage. Look at that swagger. <laughs> Absolute swagger, waves with one hand. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, NIP, like you say, they're a team that could challenge JDG in the early game. I'm hoping we get a little bit of a brawl, to be honest, today, because both teams have shown early presence. Both teams have shown that they're willing to draft towards those early game picks as well. Like, both teams have shown a little bit of Callista across the course of the year. Uh, Fotic, you know, quite a lot of Varus games in there. Varus has been a high priority for Ruler as well, but the Lucian as well has been a big pick for NIP. I do feel like there is plenty of options for early aggression for either team but across playoffs we've seen teams really lean into that early game but we've also seen series where everyone just kind of takes their hand off the wheel goes full scaling so i am curious what the prep will have ended up looking like for the two teams and what their conclusions are coming into today i wouldn't be surprised if we see it be more tamed with uh with what's at stake right yeah. knowing that if you lose here it's you're eliminated yeah uh, both teams, but hell, that also that also means when you do throw, you know, the curve balls, and maybe when you do draft a bit more aggressively or, or push the tempo, you can catch your opponent off guard. So I think this first game is is going to be one of the you know the most important, especially looking at level ones, because one of the big things that that just destroyed JDG in their series against top esports was DS was coming in every game with. I say a slightly different level one, but it was five cent people topside. It didn't matter which side they were on, and it ended up working out every yep. single time. So if <laughs> NIP or if JG have learned from that and have prepared some level ones of their own, again, it's one of the like yep. lowest, lowest investment, highest payoff things you could do in big series like this. I mean, NIP have been sharing it across playoffs. And I feel like across the world, honestly, it's starting to become more and more of a thing in the current meta, like to have some of these crazy level one stuff. Going for some of these lane swaps. I'm sure you've all seen the uh, discourse on Twitter this morning about lane swaps. Plenty to be discussed there. I'm not going to put my foot in it and try and uh, have a strong opinion about the subject right now here on broadcast. But we'll see if either of the teams have a strong opinion on how to approach those lane swaps and if they even see an angle to do so. It was NIP that kind of brought it to the spotlight in the kind of recent uh, Major League discourse yeah and I, I mean they're really the only one i could imagine doing it even going forward in, in the rest of the playoffs maybe maybe ts would, would lean into that kind of style too but we've really seen them leaning heavily on things like the jinx and the thrash uh and then really being able to set up that hyper carry so looking yeah. at photic to be able to do it again i'm kind of curious to see 
how JDG approached the, the bot lane draft as well, with uh, like the, the Zeri three games in a row against top esports, obviously didn't really work out for them. It was a high priority pick for them. I wonder if they are going to change things up or if they're quite happy to stick to that style that they've kind of established for themselves. And like the Wukong, uh, the Wukong Annie, sorry, not Ari, um, that we saw pretty consistently from them, or at least in the last two games of that series. You know, yeah, these are things that on paper, it sounds really good, but when it came to the actual series, weren't able to have the impact they wanted. I, you know, I'm leaning towards that, that they go away from it, just because the flames of the common man are quite strong. The discourse <laughs> online, when they would not change their draft, you know, like, uh, I could, I could, but, I could see that being a catalyst for some change. Yeah, I could see so. I, I, I love that term, the flames of the common man. It sounds like a, like, I don't know, an alternative punk band or something like this, yeah, you know, the does, flames of the yeah. common man. Bring down the establishment. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll see if the flames of the common man are enough for JDG to change their tact coming into things. And I feel like NIP as well, having that extra day. I mean, obviously both teams got a little break for themselves uh, coming into things. There's been a couple of days since the last games were played. NIP, just an ever so slightly longer break. They get to watch that series during their break and, and watch how JDG were sort of exploited by top esports i will say what top esports did to jdg is pretty difficult to replicate like there's yeah. an extent to which when you watch top esports win games like there are very few teams in the world that have players that are good enough and coordinated enough to pull off the level of destruction that top esports are able to yeah especially how, how they were playing out in the mid game pulling jdg around the map like that's a hard like you are pulling jdg around the map just yeah. think about those words right ts uh, really that, did some incredible things in that know, series. It's crazy to think about, it, isn't it? When you think about like 2020 JDG versus Top Esports, I feel like JDG were the one that were all about the macro. Top Esports were all about like just hand stiff, you know? Feels like maybe things have changed over the years. But then to be fair, I feel like Top Esports kind of both these days. Anyway, JDG versus NIP. It's time to get into our first champ select and kick this series off. So many questions to be answered and already a few being answered. Shanji loses his rumble, but that Ari as well taken off the board. Yeah, and my mind immediately jumps to the Kalista. It's something we haven't seen JDG lean on too heavily throughout the split, but we know Ruler and Missing can play it. Uh, the Renata being taken off the board, but I really feel like aggressive 2v2s could be the way forward in this series with, with how both sides have, have liked to draft towards scaling. Yep, great call. And it will be hovered here by JDG. There are still plenty of combos he can play without that Renata. And over to NIP now because the other aggressive AD carries somewhat being removed with the virus and Lucian. But things like the Draven are available while it's not a pick that you necessarily think of Photic for. It is something he's played in the past. And honestly, I I'd love it. I'd love to see NIP just, just match the strength in that 2v2. We have the Talia being hovered right now, which I think we should expect to be locked in for Rookie. I mean, this guy is just so mobile. They were calling him the second jungler on the desk, and it really feels like that. He just wants to get out of lane. Yeah. Now, typically here, I, I feel like we, we we would see more scaling come out from NIP in, in this final matchup, but I don't know how many times you could really just fall back on that Jinx lane that they've loved going towards. I'd be kind of surprised to see a Yumi locked in anyway, just because it's not like JDG are taking Yumi Kalista. Do you really no, need to no. prioritize that pick right now? Uh, but on the point of Rookie, like you say, getting that Talia is so important. We've seen across playoffs. His Ari and his Talia are both insane. So a real comfort there for NIP. The Nautilus, very high priority throughout playoffs. Now to JDG. Blind pick Rex side for the top lane could be very, very potent, but then probably getting your support will be important with the Kalista. Yeah, and I mean, we were seeing JDG first picking Rexai on blue side, so you know Flandre absolutely loving this pick. Oh, and we're going to have the Ash support come out with the Callista, so really wanting to, to, to drive that nail forward of just being able to win out 2v2, have that prio available, and maybe give them a way to play through when you expect NIP a lot of the time to, to send their pressure towards top side. So it's going to be the Jinx Town set down in this bottom side. Not too surprising of a pick there for Photic. It's something he absolutely loves. And it's alongside this Nautilus, which, you know, Juo has had a split where he's had high highs and low lows. We mentioned it earlier, but the Nautilus has absolutely been comfort for him. He's on a 70% win rate over 16 games across the course of this year. And it's so good at setting up carries like the Jinx, where you can set up for that initial pick and get the reset for your AD carry. 
Now I'm, I'm wondering if NIP is going to try and focus out mid lane here because Yigao has had more of a controlled champion pool. Things like the Annie, of course, uh, coming to mind if they want to have some pressure in that mid lane. Nico would be another nice one. So already getting that off the board and maybe going to try and push Yigao into that that second tier of his champion pool. I mean, we've already had to play the Vagar uh, in playoffs against the Talia, so you do have other things yeah. that you can lean on as JDG. One thing I will say is if I'm if I'm an IP coming into this one, maybe I don't ban the Annie and I don't ban the Wukong, and I'm like, go for it again, guys. <laughs> like, we kind of want to play against that one as well. <laughs> yeah, well. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Annie banned in, in actuality. It's such a good setup, obviously with a Callista as well. You're very yeah. good at following up on that potential pick. Now for like you said, Shanji have been going has been going towards that Renekton up against the Rek side. But it's kind of the same logic as you just said, right? Maybe JDG are like, hey, you are completely fine to take that one away. Uh, we know we'll be able to get Pryo and do well in this matchup. And when looking at, at Aki, I really feel like the only thing he's he's leaned on Super Bowl is gonna say is the Nocturne. Uh, I don't know how well it would have fit, but JDG clearly saying it's enough of a threat to take off the board. It's a Sichuani angle for Aki, I fear. It uh, does seem to be kind of their, their fallback pick a lot of the time. What have we got, Shanji? Let's see something good. Let's see something different to the Renekton. I really don't feel like the Renekton has been having much impact for him up in that top side, especially in this matchup. The Twisted Fate, I would be super down for, but it is going to be Udir in the end. And this, I think, is totally acceptable, right? With that R, you can so easily clear the waves and pretty much just be able to completely ignore the Rek'Sai uh, in that matchup. So it actually might even set up NIP to be able to, to try and look to cover some of the aggression that JDG are leaning down towards bot with. Now looking towards mids, right? We already talked about it. We, we've seen him pull up Vagar if they wanted to go that route and try to have that cage to dissuade something like the Jinx, the Azir. Kind of a fun one, right? This isn't a pick that Yagao leans into all as heavily as some of the other mid lane staples, but especially if they lock in this Vi, JDG having a really solid composition, great picks, can look to match in the 5v5. Ton CC aplenty. Yeah. And it's worth mentioning that like Yagao has played a ton of Azir over the course of his career. While it's not yeah. been one of his big picks this year, he's only played it four times this year. He has got a 100% win rate on it this year. He's got 66 games on it across his career. Like, this is definitely comfort for him. Uh, don't, don't get it twisted. Over to NIP now, as they're going to answer this vibe that's come through from Kanavi. Yeah, it looks like they're leaning towards the Zinjiao right now. Uh, be able to try to dissuade some of that aggression and have some of the, that strong early 2v2s with Rookie. And I think this one's going to be a fun one because for JDG, again, leaning heavier into picks, leaning heavier, I think, into some earlier power spikes coming online at one item. NIP, if the game goes on, should have a better front to back with the Jinx, but it's going to be about getting there. It's about this early game, especially with a Callista in the hands of Ruler. When you've got the Ash with Vi combo as well, with a Zir to be able to swoop back if, if it all kicks off. Like, I feel like the pick composition here from JDG is potent, but Rookie on Talia is a pick composition in of himself. I am excited for what he's going to bring to the early and mid game. When Aki goes aggressive on the Sins out, expect Rookie to join in on the plays. And that's what's going to be the, the most uh, interesting thing to follow in the early game, right? Kanavi, usually the one who likes to be aggressive on JDG. How how well can, can Yagao prevent Rookie from, from going to be able to help out Aki, right? Those 2v2s in mid-jungle might look a little bit different than you'd expect, not just actually fighting around the lane itself, but kind of two separated 1v1s where JDG's favored in jungle and NIP are favored in mid. We'll see how the matchup is going to go down, how these... 2v2s are gonna go down. I'm looking towards JDG though. Aggression has been locked in and I want to see it pop off. I want to see Ruler Missing back in a formidable form. We talked about this duo, not necessarily being the, the hard carry duo that we got to know them to be last year. Let's see if that changes today in our lower bracket in our first elimination match of our double elimination. It's JDG up against the ninjas in pajamas. Game number one of a best of five, and you know this one's gonna be a doozy. We were Aki talking just about... get caught. Yeah, and we were talking about this before the game, right? Level 1s were really the, the, the death of JDG in pretty much all those games against TS. 
clearly taking something away, but no one from NIP going to fall for it. I wasn't sure if Aki's positioning on the map. Oh, okay, Flood Drake sees someone. He's going to know what's going on. It's Joel up on that top side. Votic is up on the top side as well. NIP known for these level one shenanigans and JDG ready for it. But Kanavi's moved down to the bottom side. He's starting on his chickens. Yagao drops a ward, which kind of ruins everything for NIP, that ward. Nobody's spotted by it directly, but everyone in range, if they just step an inch. They almost had such a great timing on where they would have found that pick, but now they are going to start moving forward. Does mean, oh right? And NIP committing, committing their, their bot lane duo up towards his top side. So Flandre immediately gets onto the wave, wants to try and thin out as many minions as physically possible. Or in fact, no, just trying to stack that wave so it pushes in towards him. But Joel now gets an opportunity to just find that route for free. Hook lands on in. Good damage onto Flandre. Don't anticipate a kill at this point, but massive damage. And Flandre now going to be on the struggle bus. Yeah, setting him behind, but we know for NIP wanting to dodge out on that 2v2 because going up against Callista and Ash, the double Halo Blades would be so oppressive. Uh, had they been able to get a little bit more off of that, would have been nice. But I think NIP are going to be completely content now, just knowing that their Jinx isn't getting set behind early in the laning phase. Yeah, you see Shanji literally halfway up the lane as well. Like, th this is the weird thing about the, the swap is, yes, you're, you're putting Flandre behind, you also put your own top laner behind, so it's a bit of an odd one. And the, the two bot lanes farming up for themselves. Like you say, though, the 2v2 not going through, which is exactly what NIP are looking for here. Flandre, I mean, what can you do? <laughs> what can this poor man do? Neither top laner a single CS so far this game. That's why I'm curious to see what, what uh, JDG are able to do in response. I wonder if Shanji goes and checks on the situation of Kanavi invading his own jungle or if they try to prevent him from walking forward. Doesn't seem like they're going to do it, but this, this sets up a dive. Shanji might get dive, but he did get the first CS of any top laner this game. Got a second one as well. Cannon is there. Shanji is going to go down for first blood and missing walks away with it as well. Rookie and Yagao trading heavily in the mid lane as well. As uh, Flandre still not a single CS. It's not going to be traded for a dive at the top side. Man, it is rough being Flandre. I mean, again, at least, at least he hasn't gone down. He hasn't given kill gold over like a JDG were, were able to pick up. But look, now with, with Rookie winning start in mid lane, having two lanes of Pryo that they'll be able to play with. And that'll start being more impactful, especially once we get neutral objectives spawning on the map. The junglers are running into each other. They certainly are. Aki versus Kanavi. Aki winning it out so far. Kanavi getting real low and Shanshi's here to help out as well. Kanavi, no flash after the dive. And it's a solo kill for Aki. Huge going over to Aki. I mean, it seems like Kanavi not expecting Aki to be in his bot side jungle, uh, ignoring the camps in his top side even still. Giving him that window where he's able to find the oh. solo kill. <laughs> Yagao yeah, just about gets away with his life. The Scorch nearly finishing him off. Sub 20 HP on that play. Rookie's flash now down though. Does mean he could be punished by Kanavi. Right now, both junglers are in the area. Actually, we have both three-man squads being around mid. NIP just trying to make sure that Rookie's going to be able to push this one out. You could start moving up for that top side scuttle. It's going to end up being two scuttles going over to NIP. Now I wonder if they're going to start sending Photic down with this dragon timing, or if they're just going to commit up to topside and taking grubs. Let's see what they're going to go for. Looks like Photic is going to continue going up towards the topside. So far, I kind of want to take stock before the grubs kick off, right? It's a 200 gold lead, and that's it for JDG right now. Nothing too significant. But looking at the AD carries, Photic ever so slightly ahead in CS, but you can see one extra plate went the way of Ruler. So we're relatively even there. Jungler's relatively even, mid laner's relatively even, and top laner's just as far behind as each other. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit of a weird one, and I think a lot's going to depend on how quickly JDG can start stacking up these drakes. Because it's like, all right, NIP are avoiding where you could have gotten a huge advantage. Now it's about trying to force him to fight on those timers where you are going to be stronger. So we can see Kanavi pathing down now, and I think if you can just get these drakes going, it uh, still could be pretty good for JDG. See if they can get it going for themselves. Shanti trying to clear underneath. I mean, Ash Callista. There's not many lanes that are worse to have to solo lane against either. Like you mentioned before, the double Halo Blade. So oppressive. It's going to be wailing away on this. This this feels nostalgic to me. The 2v1 lanes on both opposite sides of the map. Like, this used to happen every game. And, like, 
I mean, my memory's no good for which season's which, but it's like season four or something a long, long time ago. We see this all the time. And now we're back to that once again as Kanavi wants to set up a dive onto Shanji. The shield is there, but it's not going to be enough. Missing happy to tank once again. Oh, so low, but he gets away with it. And let's remember, NIP have opted into this lane swap. NIP have done this lane swap before and have practiced this, but it's actually JDG playing it out slightly better. Uh, now Shanji going down twice. Sure, Vlad is not getting any CS, but he's not giving anything over to the opposing side. That's true. That's true. And actually, technically, has a CS lead. He's 18 yeah. to 15 at the 6 minute 30 mark of the game. It's not exactly astounding stuff, but the fact that he's not died, like you say, not giving that gold over, the fact that we're, we're now even in place, the three grubs definitely helping Fotic work through this tower now that that early protection is gone as well. They're trying to finish this one off. Shanji has got back into that bottom side. I don't know if he can defend this tower or not. The minion wave should be cleared here. So Ruler can't finish the job, but it means Fotic will finish off the first tower. Yeah, so going to be a nice bit of a gold injection there for being able to get that one. But still, we expect JDG to be able to finish it off now. And now this is where it's going to be a little bit interesting with you'd expect uh, bot lane duos either swapping sides or I wonder if they're going to just end up lane allocating towards mid yeah. and start playing off these timers. I mean, won't have Dragon for a few more minutes. We're getting close to sixes, where, which is where JDG can really start proactively pushing into enemy jungle. Kanavi getting his now, but when Missing gets the Enchanted Crystal Arrow will really be where JDG's comp can start just slamming that go button. What a weird game of League of Legends. What a strange way to start this series. The two teams kind of just skirting around each other. Oh, reset will be blocked there by Shanji. Good job from him as Fotic is on his way down and has that rocket available. Shanji setting up for the Super Mega Death Rocket. Missing solo Fotic. Holding onto it for now. The rocket comes through. Oh, missing <laughs> just about. That's his third barely survival this game. <laughs> yeah, having to use the heal to stay alive. Nice, nice play by Nip. A little bit creative. Ooh, missing. Ends up getting away in the end, but there we go. Uh, now we're gonna have a big tempo advantage playing around this spot side, already being here, already getting more plates on the Fotic. A slow on to draw, but not really much follow-up available for them. Like you say, more plates for Fotic. Shanji's down here as well. Flandre is up in the top side of the map and no TP available. So NIP with the man advantage here. And I think JDG are respecting that fact. They're not gonna contest this one. Both mid laners were hovering as well. It will just be more CS denied, but this time it's Ruler being denied CS. This is much better than that first lane top that we saw from NIP. Right, this is like a conscious choice of, all right, like we're setting Shanji even further behind, but we're making sure that Ruler doesn't have a chance to get in this game. Still though, Ruler already having the op opportunity in inventory, you know, is gonna be pretty strong right now if they just find an isolated 2v2 or 3v3 situation. But look at Aki, he's... I'm now waiting in the wings. We'll see if he actually commits to that recall or, or sticks around because Kanavi. Oh, <laughs> instant flash from Rookie. Well read from him. Reactions on point there, as you expect them to be. This is very much the top level of the LPL. So Yagao, nice attempt. Rookie loses that summoner again. So again, potential opportunity for Kanavi. He's got that ultimate available to get down onto Rookie and set up for a kill. And Kanavi's one of the, the people that the way the early game went out really affected uh, the most, right? He's just been such a, a dominating part of JDG Hell. Even in that TES series, he, he was consistently getting the better of TN early on. But the fact that we just ended up with, with a split map, it didn't really open up for any of that usual domination to come through. Uh, Joao in the area. There is a ward there, unfortunately, so he's been spotted. JDG with full information on this one, and Fotic immediately arrives. Wherever Ruler goes, <laughs> Fotic will be there. He'll uh, he'll find a way to deny any kind of advantage here. And it's going to be that lethality, Callista coming on through. As NIP try and get themselves six grubs. But Kanavi's in the area. It's going to be a fourth one taken, and immediately they back off. Yep, nice job by JDG, making sure that they can't take any more than that, and, and maybe push his advantage even further. Uh, going to be able to get two, and now both teams actually being up towards this top side. Oh, ho, 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 it was so close. close. It was close. Yeah. Not Probably able to get in the it. end. I wonder if JDG... Nope, so not going to push up anymore. Four NIP having a really nice defensive vision line just around the outskirts of that Herald pit, so... 
Gonna know exactly everything that's going on around the neutral objective. And now for JDG, it's about transitioning back down towards bot side and making sure you get your hands on this dragon and you keep that stacking going at a nice pace. Yeah. It's kind of funny to see the top laners the same or slightly higher level than ADCs, like only just ahead yeah. of ADCs and XP. Like, how often do you see that? This has been such a strange game of League of Legends. But now Drake spawning, second one of the game. Gold is just about even between our two teams here. And it is an item advantage for Ruler with positioning on the map. NIP feel comfortable to start this one off. And I think this is huge. They're going to completely deny this one. JDG might be able to turn it into an advantageous fight. They're going to try We're and TP for it. coming on through. Aki flashes to safety. Juo hooks in just to deny the engages. Shanji is 1v1-ing Flandre on the bottom side of the fight. Rookie has moved in. Has that wall available? It's, wait a second, missing. Did he hit the blast cone there? Knockback comes on through. Shanji still zoning as Juo gets low. And Aki has to dive in to save his support. Voting over the wall, but he can't really get any damage down. And Aki will for Flandre. Ooh. Flashes the rocket. JDG just about get ahead. So we see NIP, they pick up the Drake, JDG able to get a kill off of it, and a little bit of pressure, getting their vision line a bit deeper. I don't think they should be able to get a plate off of this in mid, but maybe you can get a bit more gold injection there. I, I actually think it's it's good that NIP was uh, able to stop that stacking again, not going to feel as doomed and, and forced to fight early on like you were now, though. I got to see that blast plant too, if it ended up being missing or, or a mistake on NIP's part, because Rookie especially ended up piecing out of here pretty quickly. After that, we can see Flandre kind of getting abused and then left on his own in the 1v1, but oh, it is. Oh, no. It's <laughs> missing, sending them over. I it, it just opens. I, I, yeah, I think he maybe hit Aki. I'm not sure. I, I need another slow replay. It was uh, too many wards, too many players. Either way, but it works it, out. It works out exactly. for JDG. It ends up opening up for the pick. You can see that even Rookie realized pretty early on of, all right, this isn't really a position we can recover from. Throws out his Unraveled Earth, starts making his way back, and really just gives JDG the opportunity to pick that one up. So far, so good. JDG with a lead. But like you say, NIP quite happy to play the scaling game here. You've got, at the end of the day, Jinx to Leah for the late game. You've got Frontline. You've got Engage. This composition will certainly function later on. Ah, uh, Joel hit by an arrow, but it's not really going to lead to much, or is it? Face call. Saves missing. Both supports just getting chunked. I'm still surprised at how much Ruler's Q does right now, only with the opportunity in the yeah, Serrated Zurich. That's, yeah, that's where that damage came from. And it's funny, because despite the fact that both top laners got set behind, so, you know, there aren't going to be as tanky as they normally would be, uh, like, once we get to, say, like, the 20-minute mark of the game, Typically, that should just help out NIP because they also just, they have more sources of frontline with the fact that JDG and Ash in the support role. But at the same time, it also means you're just softening Shanji up so that this full Lethality Callista can actually deal meaningful damage for, yeah, you know, a longer amount of time than he otherwise would have. Yeah, he's got about a minute left in him <laughs> before the next armor item comes through for Shanji. Yeah, we'll see what, what he's able to get done with this pick. It's been a controversial pick, to be fair, this Lethality Callista. I've seen a lot of discourse on Twitter and that about this build. I personally am not a fan, but I can see the merit of the early strength it can bring. NIP, though, yeah. speaking of early strength, utilizing theirs and starting off this Herald. Looks like JDG not going to even look for a contest. But to go back to the Lethality Callista, right? I think it especially makes sense in drafts like this where Talia Jinx are going to outrange you. It's all about the Q. For me, it's a lot more about the player than it is about the build itself. Like, <laughs> I see I, I see Jackie Love play Lethality Callista. It's like, I am all in. I, I see someone like Light, and it's not even, you know, about Light's skill on the Callista itself. But it's like, you have a guy like that who is this huge team fight yeah. carry, stay away from it. Yeah, you want the scaling. And a, a rookie trying to protect this blue buff. It'll be taken. Konami smites it in the end. Yaga would love to get in that circle. I don't think he'll have a chance, though, because the whole gang has arrived from NIP. And I feel like this game, I can't believe there's only four kills on the scoreboard, because the entire game, these two teams have been posturing at each other. Yeah, both looking for chances to punish. Like you said, though, NIP were, were mostly towards the side of the map because Shanji wandered down towards mid. Uh, clearly, JDG didn't commit enough for him to feel comfortable running over the wave and think, hey, they aren't going to back off. So it did give Flandre a little bit more free time towards that top side. But sadly, NIP didn't see the window that they were looking for. Certainly didn't. So minor gold lead for JDG. Oh, nice little Q there from Ruler. Getting a bit of damage down. 
and we're looking towards these mid-game fights now. Like, we've got a Vi on the table. We've got a Lethality Callista on the table. But Vi, Ash especially, so good at catching people out. And that is where the real test will be for NIP, right? Is as we enter this mid-game, as, as it comes down to rotating around the map, when it comes down to vision control, there is so much ability for JDG to punish you if you misstep. Kanavi moves in <laughs> and just steals that one away. Aki, totally none the wiser, unfortunately. And this is looking a little bit like the mid game the TFs played against them, right? Just constantly poking and prodding your head into enemy jungle with the prowls that you have, stealing away those camps and just maintaining that pressure. Gold lead, seismic oh. shove. It's not Kanavi picking, it's Kanavi getting picked. Nice flick back from Rookie and the follow-up from the rest of the team as well. NIP now with advantage on the map just as Drake comes up. This will be their second. Yeah, and they look at Shanji looking for the angle. Landre anticipates him. Photix just getting onto the tower though. This is going to be a tier one taken for NIP. You'd expect, but the arrow lands and it's an opportunity Ooh. for Yagao to knock it out of the park. Aki on the front lines trying to protect his team. Shanji just ain't tanky enough and Rookie doesn't have their damage. Or does he? Finds one. Ruler gets out with his life and Shanji's still going strong somehow. The shield comes on through, but Flandre dives into the back line. Aki gets the knock up. Can they finish the Void Beast? The answer's no. Huge play by JDG, missing an Egal, being the ones to start it off, and Ruler and Flandre, the ones to benefit, picking up those kills, and now Drake up once again. This is going to be JDG's. And it felt so good for NIP when they got that pick on Kanavi. It felt like the fight was over before it began. But JDG find the angle. One and arrow onto Fotic to start it off. Joel's here, Aki's here, but they're too late to contest. Kanavi gonna have to be careful about his pathing. It doesn't end up giving an opportunity over to Joa to find the hook. But I, I feel like the, the last like minute have really shown some key characteristics about both teams, right? For NIP, it really being the rookie show with him setting up the, the, the pick that made it look almost favorable for NIP. And then JDG, just man, how any of them can, can step up at any time to come together as a team. We're gonna go all the way back to that initial pick. Like you I, said, I, I mean, I think it's worth mentioning as well that like the initial pick is good. The Herald slam into mid lane is good. It's an overstay though from NIP. There's a moment here where like at this point you can just go take Drake for free. There is no available contest from JDG there, but then this arrow sets it up from missing. Yeah, and I, th I think a, a big part of it too is things like the Unraveled Earth already being used by Rookie, Seismic Shove being down. Like a lot of things you don't have to worry about. So now Yigao can just jump forward and look for that Emperor's Divide. I mean, the NIP almost make a comeback with how squishy the members of JDG are, but still, once once they get in that threshold, Flandre can throw out the ult and just finish it off. Oh, another great arrow! Ah, uh, but he is on the top, so I got a little overexcited <laughs> on that one. <laughs> but I will say, Ruler is terrifying at this point in the game. Love this build or hate it when it's 3-0-3 and it's only 19 minutes on the clock. You know Ruler is in a terrifying spot right now. And NIP, they're gonna have to do their best to just weather the storm at this point. I feel like they, at this point, cannot really contest and even fight. No, it's going to be incredibly hard, right? Because just that that same amount of damage isn't there. Two items to one, and I mean, going a crit route. We did have the IE just finished, so at least now items being a bit equalized. Yeah. I think for NIP, a lot of it's going to be about starting things off the way they did last time, starting off with a bit of a pick yourself is Rookie's intercepted. Oh, no. Oh, what a blunder. Goes straight into the middle of everyone. Rookie, no way out of this one. As Flandre finishes the job trying to deny the siege, but actually just gifts over a kill. And it's small things like that. JDG committing two people towards the side lane that Rookie's playing towards, already knowing that he's going to want to look to save that turret and being able to intercept. So JDG looking completely revitalized. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> after, after after the loss to TES. Yeah, it feels like that was a wake up call, doesn't it? Because this is a different team today. This is the team that beat Weibo. This is the team that handedly took Weibo out of the bracket. And now it feels like back on form once again. Maybe it is just a, a top esports diff. Maybe it was more top looking incredible than JDG struggling. I, I think it definitely was, right? Again, especially in terms of that 2v2. But we're going to see here. They anticipate Rookie's going to move over, being down towards that bot side, and just cut him off. Doesn't even have a chance to move after the ult comes out from Kanavi. So JDG just continuing to push this map forward and keep the gears of the game moving. 
We have Baron up now, so it's something that NIP are going to have to be conscious of, though JDG yeah. haven't really been one of our, our big, like, sneak Baron, go for the cheeky play type of team. Yeah. And I think um, the Baron is, is a conversation worth having as well when it comes to this composition from JDG, because I think some viewers at home would see the Azir and think, Azir, oh, that's just a scaling pick, right? That's a team fight pick, and it doesn't fit with the rest of this composition. When it comes to objectives, like, Lethality Callista is not good at taking objectives. Azir is. So Yagao is JDG's path to be able to take these kind of objectives. Exactly, right? It, it kind of gives you... It, it's the thing that gives you DPS later on in the game, knowing you're going to be losing out with Callista. I mean, hell, even just Callista in general, honestly, uh, yeah. Azir just being so good late game. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna have the wave clear now. You're gonna have that consistent DPS that wouldn't be there otherwise, and you're gonna have that damage for neutrals. So I think JDG really covering their base as well. And Flandre, you know, is gonna be tanky enough to be able to deal with NIP at the time where their composition spikes. Missing spotted NIP. They're trying to get into River. It's 40 seconds until Drake spawns, and NIP know that they need to not lose complete control just yet. Draw ever so slightly wide on the hook. Rookie doesn't find his knockup either. JDG posturing aggressively. Yagao does have his TP available. It looks like he is going to go for the long walk instead as Flandre tries to get into this brush. And I, I would think NIP should have a good idea. Go for the hook. Knockback. Another great arrow comes through. Photic denied at the start of the fight. Fate's called to save. Missing now is the front line being pushed away on the bottom side by NIP. Wall comes out from Rookie, but it kind of just separates Duo. Knockup's coming on through. And Kanavi's caught out. The reset for Photic as Flandre keeps himself alive using his own ultimate. But three down. And JDG sent packing. Missing next on the chopping block. And the rocket finds his mark. Ruler doesn't get slowed. The cleanse actually misused there and he will survive the play nip look to the purple worm exactly now nip gonna be able to move over to that baron rookie not even caring that ruler's here also gets a mid lane turret off of it huge swing for nip my goodness this game has been chaotic it's been close and it has been everything i wanted to see in this series seven to seven now gold just about even ever so slightly nip favored when they finish this baron off Let's take another look. It was such a weird fight starting out with NIP. It seems like, thinking, hey, we have the angle. Let's go for it. Maybe even have the, the idea that Yagao isn't there from off of what they've seen. But the real difference maker in my mind was actually what we see here, where Rookie's going to use this wall. And it's like, all right, you actually kind of leave Joa and Shanji sectioned off to still lose that 3v3. But right there from Rookie, Unraveled Earth and the seismic shove gives Botic the ability to get the reset. Oh boy. We don't have a moment here. JDG grab themselves a Drake and NIP aren't happy about it. I don't think they can force a fight, though. If Dwarves' hook goes wide, it's really hard for NIP to get into the action. I mean, hell, the, the two times we, we successfully seen them find action are actually off seismic shoves, and it was about to be a third. Bit of a jump scare there for Ruler, but holds his nerve, keeps himself alive there. As the Siege now in the mid lane, and you've got a Jinx on your squad. You've got a Talia to deny potential engages. Feels good to try and siege Aki Corp as Kanavi goes in onto Fotik. He's knocked into the action and executed by Ruler. Beautiful combo from JDG and Dwo. He's going to feel the brunt on the end of the play. It's 10 on the board for JDG. JDG with the coordination to make the play possible. <laughs> it just looks so easy. You got following in Kanavi there. So it's going to stop some of the pressure that NIP have been able to find with this Baron. And like you said, I mean, going against the Jinx Talia, that could have been deadly. Fantastic picks onto Photic this game. Like, he's only died twice, but like, the arrows from missing have been consistently finding him. And this time, Kanavi gets onto that battle line. Aki blocks the arrow, but then it just means Kanavi can get it. Yeah, I mean, they lock him down with the fact that the Xin Zhao CC, there's no one there to stop the Azir's. We actually have a pick happening in the bottom left hand of our screen. Looks like someone on NIP being brought down. Flandre, he's got some tunnels. Can he get out of this one? We've seen Rek'Sai get out of crazier situations. Shanji trying to chase it and <laughs> will finish the job. So a kill there, but what do they lose elsewhere on the map? Because Yaga onto a tier two. And the whole squad in that quadrant. So if anyone from NIP tried to answer, there was opportunities it's... for a pick there, but it looks like NIP realized, hey, we can't contest this. We got our kill bot. It's all fine. Honestly, I don't feel like that's worth, though, for NIP. Like, is the one kill on Flandre really worth your tier two on the top side? I guess if you could <laughs> well, trade this bottom tier two, it would be worth. 
Yeah, and with the Baron, it looks like they're going to be able to. No one going to be down there in time. And I even like Juan Fote coming into the squadron of the jungle, clearing out vision, and now also giving JDG some question marks in their head about who's in here. Worth mentioning as well, three drakes for JDG. Next one up in just over two and a half minutes. And that could be pretty valuable. I feel like there's been a lot of conversation about Cloud Drake this year on, on its value. I am coming around to Cloud Drake, you know, since they got the passive movement speed, like 20% movement speed permanently. It's kind of insane, especially when you've got a pick composition that wants to outmaneuver your opponents. Like this is a really valuable soul for JDG if they can get it. Exactly, especially because, right, a big problem they'll have is just Fotik out outranging them and being able to outkite them in these fights once he gets excited. So if they can get that on lock, it'll give JDG the ability to keep running them down and then making a similar play that we saw a few minutes ago, right? Kanavi send it in, Yigao followed through with the Emperor's Divide and give Fotik no escape routes. Feels like NIP are just being sort of herded under their towers here by JDG. Complete map dominance from them. Still a while until that Drake comes up, but if they can maintain this, certainly be in a strong position. But I like the NIP aren't just trying to fight for this vision control in the jungle, aren't just trying to brute force anything. They are down in gold right now, and compositionally they're behind, right? You've got a Jinx who now is on three items. The Jinx definitely starting to come online, but you know, three and a half fight among the lethality Callista is still pretty terrifying. Exactly right. So Sephardic will be able to start taking over, but it's about if they can even get the fights they're looking for, because look at JDG playing the map so wide. I especially love Flandre. We consistently see Shanji shadowing his team and then hoping to find an opportunity to start a 5v5, but Flandre is always pulling Shanji's attention to the opposite side of the map. Like, look at this railway system that he has going on. <laughs> it's so funny watching Rek'Sai build up these tunnel networks. It's like, uh, you know, full on. It, it, it's like going down to London and jumping in the tube, you know? He's just flying anywhere on the map. Uh, for, I, I, do you know, I was going to name how much that costs, but I realize I have absolutely no idea how much it costs because I just hit my card on the thing. You know, it might be really <laughs> expensive. <laughs> I, I hope it's not. <laughs> I never really think about it. I go to London so rarely. Oh, dear. Either way, it's safe. free for him. It's free for yeah, him. That's the most important say. thing. He's, he ain't spending any money on that. Um, it's kind of it's kind of weird to think back to you know when when uh, Rexo was all about just taking the tunnel system all over the map as compared yeah. to now when the ult was like the TP to one of your tunnels yeah the farm alarm <laughs> it, was, it was kind of fun with the silly plays that would open up too but dragons coming up in ten seconds so I shouldn't reminisce about silly plays because this is soul point for JDG if they get this they have that soul and they're completely denying NIP entry towards this river. No more silly plays, only serious ones from here on out. It's 10 to 8. It's a slight gold lead for JDG. It's three drakes already, and it's looking like it. Soul. NIP not contesting. Rocket comes through, and Ruler's Spell Shield just blocks it entirely. That is a cloud soul for JDG. Still, though, I think it's so good that NIP was able to get that <laughs> get that earlier one. We could have been at a point where we were potentially fighting for Elder now. I've got to say, well. the flash reactions this game have been on point. We have seen so many, like, split-second flashes this game, which I feel like is a skill that's kind of underrated a lot of the time in League of Legends. You know, these are pro players. You expect them to have good reactions, but it's been consistent today. It's been good. It's been clean. Yeah. It's been nice to see them so locked in because, again, we haven't really been stressing the, the stakes and the tension too much. Still in the game one, even this game can still go either way, but this is elimination for either side. I mean, JDG have really just built up such a legacy over yeah. these past few years, even though I don't think third is unexpected with, again, just how good Tez and BLG are. Uh, it really would be a disappointment just just the, the yeah. path that they, they've set the past few years. I think that's worth mentioning that, like, this is not a disappointment to me for either team being in this lower bracket game because of those two opponents. And also, whoever wins this one, they've got a mountain to climb later in the bracket. But we'll return to that later because everyone, once again, as has been customary this game, posturing for a fight. Arrow goes through onto Droll this time as Rookie. I don't know if he misused his Sonya's there, but Droll was just going to go down for it. A bit of a weird one from NIP, and JDG are more than happy to capitalize on it. There's one pick. It's Flandre not quite... I, I wonder if that wall was meant to block him. Yeah, and now I, I want to see if they turn to this. They don't have Enchanted Crystal Arrow for the turn, but Kanavi still is Zolt. You even have Emperor's Divide if they start to walk up. So Aki trying to, to clear out this vision before going towards the pit. Now it's going to be all about how JDG shuts him down. Aki gets vision. 
They are just burning through this. Are they going to go for a 50-50? He gets in the pit. He doesn't get the smite, though. Ruler finding a kill and the Baron. Beautifully done. JDG now with everything. Yeah, JDG clearly not feeling too too weird about Aki being able to get in the pit when they do have the Callista with the Ren, but them not taking any damage, even in the contest, means that they just get to, to pick up with the waves and start pushing forward in a 5v4. This has been clean. Another arrow hits from missing, and Yaga follows it up once again. This combo is too damn clean from JDG. A beautiful setup and a beautiful follow up. JDG have rinsed NIP. I mean, their synergy is just so on point. They're working together so well to find those picks. And now NIP, I mean, going, going down in the first game, backs against the wall because of it. My lord, JDG, they had their way to mix this morning, didn't they? What a game number one. Even early game, very back and forth early game. But once we got into that mid game, they just took control. Yeah, I mean, it looked great. It, it was on point, despite the fact that they did figure out playing up against that lane swap. They honestly kind of did better than NIP. Flandre wasn't dying. And then once we got Enchanted Crystal Arrow up uh, post six, like you said, missing and you got that combo, which is so well done. Yeah, I mean, I don't think missing missed a single arrow that, that I remember seeing at very least. Uh, and then on top of that, Yagao's follow-ups. Like, Yagao on a Zir today looking real clean with it. Uh, absolutely fantastic game coming out from him. And we talked about, you know, he's very comfortable on this pick. This is a pick he's played over the years, but it's good to see him on form to start the day today. Yeah, I mean, like you said, really both sides in terms of mechanical ability looking on form. All right, well, that's the end of game number one. It's NIP up against the ropes now as JDG start strong. Let's see if they can keep that momentum going into game two.
Welcome back to the LPL. JGG putting themselves in the lead, getting the first series of this one. And honestly, looking at it, average lane swap enjoyers into great team fighting, into closing out the game nice and cleanly. Even a Baron couldn't stop them this time around. Yeah, I think that, you know, JDG, you know, on the one hand, we had the lane swap. On the other hand, we had the response to it. it I, love like that, it was, I love I know, the I, was, I was sat there on the break and I'm just like, I need to do this. Anyway, it was a really good <laughs> response to that early game. Again, we've been hearing a lot about this recently because it's been, you know, played across multiple regions. That was really fun to watch. Uh, I wonder why it's played uh, across multiple mm, regions. I wonder if it's, it's because almost it's a team as if that NIP started that. it. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if there's a who's the MVP. I wonder. We're going to be having a look at those as well in terms of the. I think the MVP when we're looking at how this game was played. Do we want to throw out names here? But it's going to be, of course. Look, missing is really, really good at range support. <laughs> compared to really? Well, com compared to a lot of the LPL. Look, LPL has not really been a range support region as a majority of players. But you have a couple of key players like Crisp, Mako is one of them too, and missing who have been absolutely clutch on this pick. His arrows were fantastic. His hawk shots were fantastic in the early game as well. And we'll, we'll get around to talking about that too. He sets up so much success. Can we also just say that Ash is just such a lethal pick every time it's picked on the Rift, especially in the LPL with how aggressive teams choose to use the likes of the Hawkshot or the pressure that you pretty much generate in lanes super early on uh, to set up early dives, or early aggression, or force people off of their lanes, actually. Uh, which later on, we'll see why NIP chose to roll swap into this. But I feel like a lot of the Ash players that we have over in the LPL, pretty much if they get an early game lead, they just run away with it. And you're CC'd for like two years. Yeah, see you in um, 2026. That's yeah, because it's 2026. That was pretty quick, quick math. Thanks. Yeah. I, I, that <laughs> was so hard right now. Yeah, I'm. I, God, I, I hope so at this point. I've tried too much in it. But yeah, I think Missy walks away with a very um, valid MVP at that one. I think he's been, you know, a core to this roster as well. We talked about, you know, how um, Kanavi and Yugao were a great duo. Kanavi and Missing as well. They've really put together mm -hmm. some great title streaks together now. Yeah, we're looking at this game particularly, and I think what we really need to highlight as well is just the fact that lane swapping is back. We've already touched upon it. We talked about it. We talked about in terms of the composition that JDG went for and how they don't really want to play into their traditional lanes. But to me, it brings the question of how often are we going to keep seeing these lane swaps occurring? I feel like in this particular game, it was very needed, specifically for NIP. You see a lot of the times the lane swap will happen with someone like the likes of Jinx, who likes to chip onto towers like really quickly. And I feel like particularly right here, you have Ash and Kalista, Hail of Blades, deadly duo. You know, JDG are going to split them up in half, try to dive you. you got to get the heck out of dodge, and that's why they did it. Yeah, and, you know, we've been seeing lane swaps for, obviously, they were a thing of the past, really. I mean, remember back to Season 4, Season 5. Um, some of these players were even around know, kind of course as well. That is the past. Yeah. It, the was, very, it, was, it was a long time ago. And the reason it was played back then was largely to avoid kill lanes a lot of the time. So you have picks which either scale better or can survive dives at level 1 better than your opponent as well, particularly in top lane as well. And it allows, particularly right now, because the meta has been about 2v2 kill lanes, mm -hmm. allows you to avoid them as well. So when it comes down to this kind of draft, you understand the logic pretty pretty solidly, actually. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. And I think we want to highlight this a little further with some of the B-roll and clips that we have available from this game particularly. And I want to focus more on the side of the Rek'Sai and the Ash and how that as a champion, that as a draft, has actually set up the success of the lane swap. Yeah, so I mean, um, what we saw coming through from this early game, of course, is something that we have known from NIP. But the fact that we come through the draft as well, um, we'll talk about that a little bit later, though, because you want to talk about the NIP, uh, the NIP side of this. I feel like that was very clever. You see that Aki has actually managed to sneak himself into that mid lane brush, and JDG are actually grouping up as five. They're expecting the split map, and they're expecting NIP to invade from the top side for their own uh, split map. And the fact that Aki is already in this brush has complete control of that side of the map. He will see the, con the word that will fall down from Yagao as well. So they do know at which point J uh, JDG will have vision onto them, right? And then they will choose to split them up. I think this is a very, very clever decision. However, the thing is that you do pressure out two tanks. You have Udyr on one side and you have Rek'Sai on the other side. They will be fine in terms of lane swapping. Your only issue right here is are we going to get the Jinx ahead towards the top side of the map, which is much more difficult to take down ever since Fortification came in onto the towers. Towers on the top side of the map are much harder to take down, which is why Fortification came in to swap these lane swaps. Uh, but NIP just went through with it anyway. Yeah, and you know, you can see right here at the end of this, that the goal of the lane swap is to, yes, get the Jinx away from the Callista Ash, but also to stop the Rek'Sai having a strong laning phase too. But the thing is, on the other side, JDG have a lot of very powerful tools to 
um, counteract that as well. So if we can go through the, the clips from the JDG side of things, it's really important to see how did they respond to this, knowing the fact that NIP have made a habit of doing lane swaps mm -hmm. because they have the Rek'Sai and the Ash. I think are both very, very important to the way that they um, have gone through this. You have Tremor Sense from Rek'Sai. We saw that at the start of that clip there as well, and we'll revisit that in a sense too. So you have some extra information. You can yep. spot one person um, roaming across um, just from top side. You have an Awarden River as well. And then later on, we start seeing the Hawk shots coming to play as well. So it just felt like JDG, it did feel like they were prepared. Yeah, but, the, like, uh, but again, these lane swaps are not end-all be-all because the team fights made a really big part of this game and how it was played out. And that's something that we're going to be looking forward to in the next game as we're ready to head into it. Whether lane swaps or team fights will win and conquer. So let's head over to our casters because we have Munch and Linux ready to break it down. Thanks very much, Ginny. Yep, we're here and we're ready to jump into game number two. And I, I feel like I, I, I feel bad for uh, I feel bad for our analyst desk there because there was a lot to break down in that game yeah. from the lane swaps to the late game team fights to the objective control to even just the fight for vision. Like there was so much posturing, there was so much potential action throughout the game that, that there was an infinite amount of League of Legends to break down across that one. Yeah, yeah, a lot of different things coming up again, like uh, just the, the the level of aggression coming out like through the jungle, looking at some of these dives, looking at some of these lane swaps. But all I care about Munch is how NIP changes it up in game two. The one thing that I don't want to see is I don't want to see teams dodging kill lanes. I don't want to see teams avoiding the action like Nightmare was saying that it's logical and it might be logical. We're here in the LPL where logic is supposed to be thrown to the wayside. True. We want mojo. <laughs> That's exactly. what we're here for. Me and, uh, me and you, buddy, we're the original purveyors of mojo and I want to see some mojo today. And I feel like NIP, they're a team that have had a disappointing lack of mojo across the course of this year. I thought that this would be a pretty mojo heavy squad with like Aki, Shanji, Rookie. I feel like there's, there's mojo galore in theory. It's not been yeah. a very mojo squad. I Maybe mean, today is the day that they got to bring it out. You you look at the, the most mojo team in LPL history, and it has to be, you know, different iterations of, of top esports over the year. Oh, yeah. Hell, four of the five NIP players have been on top esports. <laughs> yeah, like, true. they should be the mini mojo. But like you said, we, we've had, you know, rookies stepping up and really being clutch for the squad. You've had the other four at different times. Again, Joao been much better in playoffs. Shanji's had his moments. But now they're going to have to be able to show it here in this second game. Uh, we do have teams swapping sides. I think NIP is going to have to care way more about that Ash now. Joao has actually only played it once the whole season. And JDG yeah. can just keep looking to, to lean on 2v2 aggression. See how much the draft will change with opposite sides of the map as well. Obviously, aggressive uh, 2v2 being taken off the board, as you mentioned, and also Kanavi losing that Vi. So a lot of the pick potential gone. Ash still open and available. Will Rookie just first pick Talia is honestly the question for me, but no. Bot lane aggression coming out from Fotic. This is what we wanted to see. Yeah, so they're going to take away this one. They still have the threat of the Ash now for themselves, even though I just said Joao's only played it once. But of course, of having other aggressive variations of this lane. Now it's about where JDG want to go with the answers. Hell, you could even maybe think about looking towards mid here yourself, taking away that Talia. Sure, you didn't need it last game, but even just being able to deny Rookie a bit of comfort with such a high priority pick can be a look for JDG. I don't mind the idea of going for that Azir again, to be honest, after Yankau's game number one. That was a beautiful Azir game, especially considering it wasn't even late game team fights like you expect from an Azir. Uh, but Ruler, going to go with the Zeri. This is something they picked a lot in their series versus top esports. Didn't really work out for them. But we'll see if maybe things have changed coming into today. NIP, though, they've got that Varus. You mentioned the Ash is going to be locked in for Dwarf. Yeah, so even though I hasn't played it much, gonna try and have that, that dominating 2v2. Uh, Talia and Nico being the two big things up if they want pressure. And this is where I'm a bit scared for JAG with the fact that they didn't pick mid before this. Might actually even need to just try and answer mid right now because if not, you could be looking to get pressured heavily through bot with a Weaver's Wall pushing you in mid, making those roams down. And JAG are really gonna have to try and shut that down, uh, honestly, with, with Yigao's picks. So Twisted Fate comes through. And remember, this could still be mid lane. We've seen Yaga play it plenty over the years, but more importantly, can be going up towards that top side for Flandre to pressure. That lane could go into the mid lane. So a bit of flexibility in the draft from JDG. They ban out the Rek'Sai though. Which to be honest, is, I don't really know the top lane matchups that well, but from what I've seen, Twisted Fate's pretty well into the Rek'Sai. 
Yeah, I mean, you, you'd, you'd have a fine time, right? Sure, you wouldn't necessarily have any real kill pressure, but you'd be able to take plates. And for JVG, I do expect it to go top. Blind Drew's been playing it more. And especially if you're going to be in a position where you're conceding bot lane, having that range top laner can just give you an easy point yeah. to be able to play around. I'm surprised, though, that NIP aren't banning out mids. I thought, hey, just do the same thing you did last game, take away the Annie, take away the Nico. Then what does Yigao really have that can find pressure in lane? Sure, he could still fall back on something like the Azir, but then you're giving Rookie a, a pushing, you know, very yeah. easy to roam mid laner with this spot 2v2. I think NIP are just going, look, we, we'd love for Yagao to play out of you. <laughs> we would love to play up against what Top Esports played up against uh, earlier in the bracket. But either way, it's going to be Jungler's Band away from Kanavi. Quite a big focus on Kanavi in this draft with the Vi earlier, now Lee Sin and uh, the Zinzao as well. It will be Jax. And again, theoretically, a flex if the Twist of Fate were mid, the Jax could go top. I would anticipate that being Kanavi's pick for the jungle, though. Yeah, I definitely expect it to be, you know, top and jungle, but I think JDG picking this is they're trying to leave themselves some wiggle room, depending on what NIP go here and now. I mean, again, with the amount of bands we have coming out towards the jungle, I wonder, I was wondering if they just go towards uh, maybe something like a, a Jarvid if they wanted to try to punish the immobility on the side of JDG, but sadly has not really been a staple of the LPL, and instead they're just going to go towards the Sejuani Renekton's still up if they just want to try and go for that tried and true pairing. I mean, look at this big comp from NIP. Every single champion on this composition has ways to set up a pick. This is like pure single target engage on the side of NIP and a lot of damage to follow it up as well. We'll see if they do go for that Renekton that you mentioned. Maybe his brother. <laughs> it's actually a Nazus. Shanji locks in Nazus in the top side to take out this Twisted Fate. Yeah, brings it out. This is going to be a fun one to see. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's brought this out before. Uh, Shanshi, again, always being the man of many picks. Now it's going to be about the answer coming out from JDG again. Where do, where do their uh, flex picks go? We expected TF top in the, the Jackson juggle, and it looks like that is going to be the case. Bringing through with the karma. So for JDG, all inning on just setting up their star studded jungler. My goodness, this is going to be an interesting game, isn't it? We've got a Nazus in the top lane. I did not expect to see that today. And it's going to be Twisted Fate top to go up against it for Flandre. Flandre going to have his work cut out, I fear. No mobility. That wither could be devastating for JDG. We'll see if Kanabi can be the carry, if Ruler can be the carry. But NIP, the ball is in their court in the early game. Yeah, and I just checked, actually not having played it in his career. So it's going to be a fun new look for Shanji. Still tons of aggression everywhere else to give time for that Nasus to become a major threat. So we're looking at Ruler and Missing and seeing how can they survive just the amount of pressure that should be coming out against them. I, I've got to say, when I was prepping for this series, Nazus was not a champion I was thinking about, but I'm excited to see how this one goes down. Picks galore, decent lane matchups coming out as well for NIP. They've got early game power. Now we got to see them use it. For JDG, very much a game of scaling. It feels like really the scale has switched between game one and two here. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, hell, again, that's kind of where NIPs have thrived. This is being the more aggressive team in the early game, that they've been the most aggressive team in playoffs so far. Statistically, now we're just going to see if they can do it here against JDG and not, you know, be able to throw a lead back when JDG have so many strong scaling options on their side. Have to see if they can bring it here as we go into game two between NIP and JDG. <laughs> the Jayo is definitely building in strength over the course. A uh, little bit scattered <laughs> to start us off. No lane swaps either. We are going to have some standard League of Legends as we head into this one. It's Phase Rush for Shanji on this Nazus up top against Flandre's Twist of Fate. I'm curious to see how Flandre plays this one out because you can, you can easily imagine the scenario where Shanji just ults and runs him down. Yeah. 
Uh, though I'm kind of surprised that Shanji didn't take the fleet footwork. I mean, of course, with Nasus, right, you have sustain coming out from your passive, but you would think this matchup can be very annoying with Flandre just constantly nailing him with those autos. And now that being the bigger part of your play style, building AD, going with the Emax, uh, will be something that can be a lot more felt. But still, like you said, having more mobility will be able to run him down easier and even potentially try and get away from ganks. But I don't know, a lot of CC actually on both sides of the rift right now down in this bottom lane the zeri for ruler but this time is nip with the double hail of blades lane to start this one off jdg trying to move in to get the xp from these first couple of minions i think ruler being denied at least one or two there and uh, nip starting this lane strong starting as they mean to go on you'd hope as drop yeah. gets some big damage down onto missing he's got to be cautious not to be hooked under tower though Especially, I mean, he's also just, you know, taking all that minion damage there to get that damage on the missing. I want to say there was a key learning from Ruler, uh, of, you know, that Fotik didn't have last game, which was taking the cleanse up against the Ash. I mean, there's a lot of other CC that, you know, Fotik had to deal with last game and thought maybe he wouldn't. But maybe after how many arrows connected onto him, Ruler saw and said, hey, I'm not going to disrespect you all this game. Uh, they are going to have to just be able to absorb all this pressure, though. <laughs> The observers absolutely loving it. We're zooming in on the three for 12 CS Nazis cube. The last cube. person to play it in the LPL for RA versus way by 655 days ago. That's almost two full years. But even then, it's not like it was meta at the time. It, exactly. I, I remember someone played it in the LPL, which is why I assumed it was Shanji. Because again, if there's there's a madman who who brings out the wonky stuff in top lane over the years, yeah. it has been him. But yeah, two two whole years. Now Shanji bringing it back again. It's gonna be all about how it can survive. Not the early game. You know, for NIP where they're looking early, and Hell Aki already making his way over. Might even run into Kanavi here. Spots him with the Scryer's Bloom. Kanavi will be able to finish his blue buff at least, but. I think realizing that this Gromp does not belong to him. Rookie moved over as well. The Blast Cone there as Yagao spots him. Had seen him move over because of that ward in the Banana Brush. And Aki, I think, realizing that actually we don't necessarily have the strength that I wanted to have. So it goes for the Skull Crab instead of the Gromp. Yeah, JDG would definitely still be in a position to, to try to answer and try and follow if any bit of a deeper invade going down. But it's nice to see NIP at least posturing early to look for these aggressive moves right again i want to bring it back to to the analyst desk before the match talking about rookie kind of being that second jungler how much he likes to move he's always done this hell i even think back to him and ning just sitting top for the shy consistently making sure that you know other lanes can get ahead that's going to be the recipe for success here and with uh karma of course falling off after the nerfs that she received yeah. i think rookie's still gonna have a fine time finding windows to leave lane Hook down in the bottom side, missing and ruler. Good damage onto Photic as Kitanavi tries to move in, but denied by Aki and just kind of losing the 1v1 as missing. Kicked out of the bottom lane. Ruler as well. Down 15 CS at this point, and it's not looking like it'll get any time any better anytime soon. Hail of Blades available again for both nip bottom laners. And that was a great way to play it, right? You isolate the jungle, so then your 2v2, which is stronger, can just keep hammering away with those autos. So great decision making overall by NIP, and it's gonna allow for even more plates to come through again. Both these duo lanes have been more reserved over the course of the split, and especially in playoffs, both have opted into scaling lanes. So now getting to yeah. see the new look from JDG in game one, and now NIP falling back on the Varus Ash, it's kind of nice, and it's kind of uncharted territory for both sides in yeah. playoffs. Beautiful stuff from Photo Control. I want to quickly mention Shanji in the top side. Although I may not have time to talk builds because the Wither comes on through. Flash immediately from Flandre. Gets a gold card, but Aki moves in, flashes to find the stun and sets up for first blood with the siphoning strike. They get their bot lane ahead. They get Shanji moving forward with this kill, trying to find as many advantages as they can. It's nice to see NIP coming back with a vengeance after that game one loss. I want to quickly talk about this build from Chanji as well. He's maxing his E. You can see he's got three points in E. He started Doran's ring as well. Typically, you'll see a Doran shield for Nasus up in the top lane. You already mentioned that like, quite often. You see Fleet Footwork. He's not gone for that. He's gone for the phase rush, which a little bit rarer does mean that you can kind of get through these ranged matchups a bit better. He's able to trade some of that damage back onto Flandre regularly. And it means that now you can go for a bit of CDR. He'll still go into like a, an AD sort of tanky build you'd expect. I don't anticipate a full AP Nasus here, but just gets you through that early game. Yeah, right. Giving you that window to also be able to, to just farm minions easily with that ability. So 
doing a nice job so far, especially if Aki can keep putting consistent attention there, which you know he will. I mean, looking up towards top side, once you have that ultimate on the Sejuani, now that Fondre has no sums, is going to be a very easy and repeatable play. But I love it. NIP playing towards both sides of the map. We can see Aki making his way down now. They have pressure to go for this, so he's just going to be able to start a dragon up for free. Great start here from NIP. They're a team that across the year have been able to get leads for themselves. It's just later on that you've got to worry because they're also a team that don't necessarily always finish the games that they start strong in. And I hope that's not a problem for them today. It does feel like they improved on that factor across the course of playoffs. Obviously totally anecdotal from me there, but it does feel like this is a team that has grown across the course of this bracket. Not too surprising considering just how many games they have played in this bracket. And yeah. I'm excited to see what they can do with this composition because it's a comp that snowballs hard. And it looks like they're going to hope for some aggression on bot side. I don't think they could do much here because they haven't had any heavy trading coming out, but if Rookie's coming down, they definitely can. Aki tries to steal the Gromp. Ganavi did finish it, and he is level six. I don't know if this is a fight they necessarily want. Nice dodge from Rookie. On the Mantra Q, Yagao flicked back. Rookie is just destroying Yagao in the 1v1. However, it's not a 1v1 anymore, and his flash is forced. Kanavi pops the Grandmaster's might. Bit more damage onto Rookie will finish the job, and Kanavi answers the early kill top. Getting the kill onto the premier carry for JDG. It's exactly what you want to see. Now even going to be able to steal away some Raptors from the enemy. So moving him forward when he is going to be one of these pieces in late game, you really have to be conscious of finding counter straight flanks onto the back line. But Aki's back up towards top side. Again, you still know that Flandre won't have his sums up. His wave's pushing towards Shanji. There might be an opportunity to try to set up a play. Hell, you even have complete vision control over, over River in the top side with that control ward. Yeah. Look at that wave clear from Shanji. <laughs> Basically just one shots the whole wave. Uh, it feels good to have Adoran's ring on Nazis right now. It's Kanavi thunking away on the Scuttle Crab. We'll be able to grab that for himself. You see gold just about even. The fact that JDG are finding anything in this early game is very comfortable for them. But Aki sneaking into the top side has the ultimate available. Dives on forward, sets up for the stuns, and Fondre oh, gets out of there. All of the hard seats he was gone. I can't believe the man actually manages to get away. Like you're saying, Glacial Prison being there. I, I, I assume the, the, the passive uh, stun from Aki was able to come off to the wither. Everything still gets out of there. And like you said, Everything that JDG can either survive or even the, the, the scraps they can find for themselves, they will be yeah. incredibly happy. It's one of the problems of Sichuani when you start with your ultimate, right? Is you, your passive stun goes on cooldown, right? So you can't actually get the second stun. Whereas if you go yeah. for the passive first, obviously you can follow with the ult. Jewel does get caught by a hook. Not going to happen there. But it means that actually in this matchup, yeah, Shanji can run him down with the wither, but Flandrick is just still out. out and Nazus offers zero hard CC. And he has Ghost. He can just kite him out with the gold card. So Shanji there at least throws it down, gets the Ghost. Okay. Knows, hey, I wouldn't be able to do it now, but... That's Ghost and ult on cooldown now. So, you know, next time Wither's up, <laughs> Flandre's in trouble. No, 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 no. Exactly. You know what I mean? You're not in trouble if you have your bros ready and waiting. And that's what Kanavi's <laughs> doing right now. Thank God he's got some bros ready and waiting. He's got a 20 CS lead. So far, so good in that top side. You know, he's been ganked twice, did die to the first one, but it was essentially a permanent CC chain. Not a whole lot he could do about it. And we'll see what Kanavi could do off of the back of that lead. So far, already three grubs for JDG. It was traded for a Drake early for NIP. But it will be six grubs by the looks of things. Kazaki's down at the bottom side, maybe wanting to go for a dive. Again, we'll see without heavy trades really coming through. Now, finally, getting some nice damage on the miss and to try to set that one up. But we'll see if they end up being able to go for it. I think it'd still be incredibly risky. I like how JDG are recognizing this, playing far back and not giving any opportunities over. Going back to the Grubs point, though, I don't know if JDG can really use those without something like a Baron or, or some big neutral to push down. But Munch, it looks like the, the potential dive might happen. Aki has There's his no ultimate way. online. Yeah, it feels tough, doesn't it? Rookie was even hovering too, but like the wave just goes so quickly. <laughs> Ruler, I think, wanted to leave there. I don't think he gets that opportunity. Rookie has Pryo in the mid lane. The wave is crashed. He's got his Weaver's Wall. It's time to make the play. 
Aki spotted on a control ward ruler really wants to get out of dodge, but he realizes that he doesn't get that opportunity. 4v2 in the bottom side. You see Flandre, Kanavi, nowhere near. Yagao still mid TP comes Ooh. through though from Yagao. And the wave's just gone. Yeah, Ruler able to delete that one. I don't even really know if we needed the TP to come through, oh. but JDG just being extra careful to make sure that something can go down. They already had Flandre pushing in topside, so I like the fact that he's now covering mid, making sure that you aren't losing CS anywhere on the map. And remember, this is a game all about NIP kind of snowballing this early game to some extent, or at least a mid game. So far, JDG doing a good job of reading their plays and punishing for them. Uh, Shanji has Ghost available, but he's got Kanavi running up towards his top lane as well. Flandre will get a gold card in, start getting some damage. Uh, Shanji just sprints at him! Look at the damage from that Q as well. He wants to just go for Flandre, but he's spotted now. The TP came through from Rookie. Bit more damage onto Flandre, who just TPs back to his own tower. And the play will defuse. I'm a bit surprised you went for the TP. I guess just being scared of Rookie even TPing and just Weaver's walling from there and, and maybe closing the distance fast enough to kill him. But I like that Jaded, you're constantly setting up these small traps because like you said, Gold Lead not really being massively there. Uh, and Hell not being there at all for an IP. They're only CS League being in bot, but it's being equalized by what JDG have been able to find for Kanavi and Flandre. And <laughs> these two are not stopping, man. No, they are not. Chanji. You know, it's one of those angles where maybe Merc Treads <laughs> was the play, because, my God, there's a lot of stunts coming your way. Shanji under tower. Kanavi tanking for the time being, takes a couple more shots, but flashes the last one. And it means that that is a kill. And man, he plays on the top side. they got six groups to work with. Ult in the bottom side leads to nothing. JDG, they're doing this beautifully in the early game. And I love that they ended up, you know, making this play, going for this push, because again, we weren't seeing them getting opportunities where they were able to get plates despite having those grubs. Now covering bot with Yigao. This just, I mean, NIP, they're just throwing it at the wall and seeing if it'll stick, but so far, it's all just sliding down right now and it's leaving a mess on the way. JDG absolutely answering, and Flandre is so far ahead in that top side. One and a half thousand gold lead over Shanji. Again, we saw this man come in into the Labo series after after six series being played with Sheer. A lot of questions were asked. He absolutely popped off against Weibo. Didn't have the you know the same series against Tez as missing goes for the hook. Yakao's here, but so is Rookie Fotic. The target, if they can finish the job, but they cannot. Missing falls. Yagao is next, and they're trying to set up Fotic and set up. They will double kill into the hands of the Varus. NIP baiting JDG and now finally, you know, finding a way to, to start breaking open with their composition, getting more gold uh -oh. onto Photic. Oh. As <laughs> soon as Konami enters the screen, I start trembling on behalf of NIP. Like, he is so scary at this point with the Triforce. And again, JDG have really fallen back to, I, I feel like the way you would describe the play of like setting up Kanavi, which uh, just keeping it very general, right? Yagao supporting Kanavi, Flandre supporting Kanavi with those gold cards has been all about him so far in this second game. JDG clearly having a read that these guys are here, but not expecting Rookie to be waiting in the wings. They almost get Botic down, but by the time the Weaver's Wall comes out, JDG just have absolutely nowhere to go. And NIP needed this, right? They weren't fighting the openings they were wanting to around that bot side, and now finally getting something for Botic. Yeah, they are still down in gold, almost 2,000 in favor of JDG. And Flandre, it's the 1v1 where Shanji can find the advantages. And by God, look at that damage coming out from the siphoned strikes. Andre walks away with his life. Didn't have yeah. to use that ghost either. And especially once these side lanes really open, that's when Flandre's life is going to be hard, right? There's going to be nowhere you can just run to it and feel safe. If the ghost gets down, you can't walk back up, or Shanji will just be able to run you down that, that elongated lane. Luckily, those turrets not being down just yet. Botic going to get caught out. No cleanse available either. The gold card sets it up and Ruler there to finish it off. Beautifully done there as Kanavi jumps in just in time to get an assist. And I feel like, honestly, JDG, they have just read this game so beautifully. Exactly, right? Even though NIP have been putting up, especially a better fight in this game, having two Drakes, you know, having a few, uh, matching in kills, JDG have clearly still been the team with their, their foot forward, right? They're making yeah. the plays first. They've really dictated what's been happening on the map. But Yagao... You might get caught out now. Gonna be spotted. Does have a tower to retreat to right now. NIP though, getting prior up top. 
maybe could try and start this Herald off for themselves. Now you've got Rookie up there, you've got Aki in the area, you can see Dwell moving over. Ganavi, we know, is on the bottom side of the map. And I feel like JD, uh, the NIP can make that assumption with some of the deep vision they've got. Yeah, so they're going to pick up Herald. JDG are going to at least answer back with Vision on the bot side and try to get more gold under the TF by taking this turret. Sadly, nothing else to really take away, right? No camps being up that you can steal. It's going to be hard to actually punish this Stasis. But oh, missing. missing. That flash was very valuable. <laughs> Dodging the arrow and the flick back. And it feels like when we looked at the combos from JDG in the last game off of the back of these Ash Arrows, the CC chaining was immaculate. So far this game, you know, we see one flash dodging both the knockback and the arrow. We saw up in the top side, uh, the, the, the stun coming out early from Aki's ult, and it meant that Flandre could escape. The chaining not so good on the side of NIP today. No, I mean, that same level of coordination not being there, right? I mean, hell, for JDG, Ruler, Miss and Kanavi now all playing together for, for quite a while with this iteration of JDG. Yagao and Kanavi obviously going back even further to 2020. So it's nice to see that for JDG, even with all the, the kind of slight changes, the leaving and coming back over the year, their their ability to, to synchronize, yeah. you know, focus on the same targets, how they layer CC, it's still exquisite. And I have to say, you know, we've been following JDG at a top level for a long time at this point. <laughs> we do want to see strength from this team. I'd love to see JDG make it back to MSI again, have the opportunity to repeat, to defend their title. They need a solid win here against NIP if they want any chance against BLG or Top Esports, whoever wins their matchup or whoever loses their matchup, sorry, tomorrow. It's a nice buffer from missing. The follow-up CC doesn't really do anything from Aki. And Rookie's looking at a different target. Now the hook comes on in, and JDG with a counter punch. Aki the target on the front line as Kanavi charged forward with the triple stun. He's so tanky, but finally goes Ooh. down. And suddenly it turns around again. NIP chasing for more, and four go their way. What a huge fight coming out from the ninjas in pajamas. It looked like everything was going JDG's way, but now they're going to get mid lane turret. They've already picked up all these kills and they're going to get themselves on soul point. The longer this goes on, the stronger that Nazus will get in a side lane. I'm getting a little bit nervous for Flandre if this keeps going the way that that fight went. And it looks so dodgy to start with Fred IP. Yeah, it really just has not been a great game on Sejuani coming out from Aki. Rookie, I think, doing a nice job zoning Kanavi out, right? The big member that they actually need to fear. So we see them focus him down, try and get on that back line. Sure, they take down the Sejuani, but ultimately the Talia is still mostly left unscathed. Oh, and look beautiful. at that. That flick back was just gorgeous right into the Ash and the Tassus for them to be able to finish off the rest of these kills. Rookie really pulling things together once again. Hero moment from Rookie. I didn't even catch that live. And so important because honestly, Rookie's had quite a quiet series so far until that point. You know, he's he's been there, but not been making those all-star plays that we all know and love from Rookie. And he's in like go. great finds the he's in great seismic shoves, but sadly they, they weren't really able to ever do anything with them in that yeah. first game. And like you said, up this game so far, we haven't really seen anything that big until this moment. We just need to see NIP be able to follow through with it. But now, I mean, Soul Point, sure, you're, you're still down a little bit in gold, but I feel like we still haven't even seen NIP utilize this comp to its fullest just yet because you still have other plays available too. Like, I mean, Yigal being on the Karma isn't really a champion that's going to push up and hit tier twos, right? So we've been finding windows where you bring Rookie and Aki over to answer Kanavi uh, shadowing Flandre. Like, you can win that 3v2, you can find those kills. So I still think there's plays that NIP have in their back pocket to, to push this game forward. The question yeah. will be if they utilize those tools. Three Drakes as well. And I've got to say, you know, people generally aren't big fans of the Chemtech Soul. If there's one champion that can use a Chemtech Soul, it's Nasus. Nasus absolutely loves a Chemtech Soul. The uh, damage reduction on low HP, not to mention Ooh. the extra power of the sustain. Hang on, Rookie getting real chunked and Aki just about gets out of the way of that hook. That felt a little bit dicey, and NIP going to lose control of the area off of it. I'm kind of surprised JDG weren't willing to, to posture more aggressively off of our chunked Rookie was. I, like, I understand not going for a, a full-on engage with uh, how far behind some of your members were, but not really even pushing any further into River to try to contest Vision. 
not the way for now. We'll see what on earth is going to go down here. I'm, I'm, I'm just nervous. I don't often feel nervous just watching League of Legends, but I'm so invested in both of these teams. I feel like I've really invested in all four of our top teams this year. I feel like they've all got big names that you want to see at MSI, that you want to see succeed. Oh. Voting caught out here as Flandre flies into the play as well. Cleanse does nothing. Azaki gets over the wall, but Juol was caught on the bottom side, and that's two for JDG. And I love the way that JDG are adapting. They know they can't win in that sideline up against the Nasus, so just create numbers advantage, find the kills, and now they're looking for the Baron rookie. Aki and Shanji gonna try and interrupt. Gotta see a miracle here. The hook slightly wide. Good dodge from rookie. Azaki is forced away and back to the Baron. Wow. Go JDG. No. In fact, back it away. Not confident to go for it. They pulled off too far, right? They 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 really wanted to commit for that engage. All of them walking so far from the Baron allowed its HP to completely regen. So definitely not having the window to go for that one. So NIP end up doing just enough to make sure that disaster doesn't come forward. Oh, it's tense, isn't it? It is real tense here with JDG. So confident to pull the trigger. Photic, Wait, what happened yeah. to his spell shield? Yeah, that also. A vest or something? Yeah, also just walking that far forward alone is so over ambitious. Again, creating the numbers advantage with the TF ult. Doesn't matter if the Nasus follows, you have enough damage and CC to, to take someone down before reinforcements can arrive. Wait, was it ruler stack shiv maybe? I I swear there was no animation that, uh, that hit it, but either way, the spell shot goes down. I feel like you're right that it was very ambitious positioning, but with that spell shield plus cleanse, I feel like you can position aggressively like that, but either way, Spell Shield went and punished by JDG. Really nicely done. And it's those little mistakes like that that you've got to be willing to punish. Yeah, yeah, now oh, JDG wanting to contest. Up towards the top side, so they're going to pull out the TP. Ooh, he now has to flash immediately. Nice punish there by NIP, forcing Kanavi out of the pit. Kanavi goes back in onto Aki, though, but the root doesn't land. And Aki walks away with his life. Drake spawning in 15 seconds. And JDG have been fighting so hard for What's top side control. Then it means that NIP could just walk straight over to Drake. Yeah, it seems like they're content with potentially giving this one up. He pushes out the wave. He's going for the recall. Destiny will be up soon, but it looks it looks like they're conceding. Shanji's just going to solo this while the rest of NIP zone people away. They're going to trade for a tier two in the top side. I'm not 100% sure whether it's worth it or not. It is one of the weaker souls, but like I said, the, the chem drakes given healing and shielding power helps the Nasus. The uh, reduced damage at low HP helps as well. Destiny out to safety from Flandre as Rookie tried to punish with his own ultimate. And now JDG, they jump straight onto the bank. They want to punish NIP. They gotta do this fast because now they don't have the destiny to you know see where everyone is if a fight breaks out to try to have the advantage. He doesn't have ultimate available and he's CC'd up. He can't get into the pit. Baron taken. Rule is the one that gets it and they lose their support. And now an arrow lands straight onto Yagao as well. He's got no flash from the previous play and he falls to Fotic. It's two and a soul for Baron. So uh, JDG end up getting something. And it seems like their goal is going to be trying to just send Flandre to the opposite sides of the map, right? Get away from Shanji and really start to open this up. But NIP will see what they can find now. Like you said, Chemtech Soul, not the most valuable soul in the game, but now we're only five minutes away from an objective that both teams are going to need to fight for. This feels tense. This feels really tense. Five minutes until Elder Dragon NIP. If they get like a 1-3-1 one, one for a while, I feel like Shanji has a window to really make damage happen. And this Nasus, it's not been unimpactful. But it doesn't feel like it was, you know, I got really excited during Jab Select. Doesn't feel like it's been a crazy pick so far this game. But I feel like there's plenty of time for it to become that. Yeah, 500, around 525 stacks just now. Like I said, you still have that that double commit to side lane play available if you really just want to guarantee locking Flandre down and, and taking him out. Especially now that both your soul laners have their TPs available. It means there's really no threat of, of JDG being able to fully answer on the opposite side of the map, but we're also getting close to Ruler being at that third item mark. Let's see if they can find the rookie. rookie. He's caught out again. Zonius comes up through 12, trying to protect his mid laner, and the stun comes out to Konami as well. NIP rally around their all-star mid laner, and they get him out. 
They even make sure that he doesn't have to use Flash. Only the heal being used there on top of Shanji's TP. So some summoners should have to be used. So nice aggress coming out from JDG, but definitely went better than, uh, than it probably so, could have. I've got a little update for you because I've realized that I'm a fool. Uh, Dagda has took me a DM and he saved my skin here. It was Flandre's ultimate that popped the spell shield earlier. It's a really great coordination, punishing the misposition from Fotic. He's in the destiny. Rookie sidesteps from the hook, has the flash available, but I don't know if he gets a chance to use it. Barely gets away from Yaghouse Q. JDG, we're going to see how much more they can push with this. Flandre still having that ult available. Can it be the side over aggress? Knockups onto missing. He's tanky. He walks away. Aki has to flash on out of the players. Ruler slowed down. And NIP are slowly but surely pushing for this one. Kanavi goes down. It's a one for one. It's Ruler on the front line now. But Rookie has re entered. And Shanji's Shanji. on the flank. This could be huge. And a flash from Votic sets it up. Double for the bot laner of NIP. And Shanji comes in to finish the job. Beautiful fighting from NIP. And they show they're no slouch. And the Nasus is absolutely huge right now. I love that Shanji's already making his way to push this advantage forward by pushing in the spot wave. Blondre trying to buy a bit of time, but NIP coming out big from that fight. Phenomenal fighting from NIP. Let's take another look as it was, it was close, honestly, in this it kind of front to back to start us off. Yeah, it's kind of awkward, you know, being so close to NIP's turret. It makes you feel like JNG really shouldn't be able to find a pick here. Regardless, they were able to get Aki's flash, which was huge. A one-for-one one goes down. But the big thing is the, the faster reinforcements. They cut off the TF from really being able to find a position he would have liked. And then Rookie from one side, Shanji from the other. Uh, it means they just have nowhere to go on top of all this CC, just making sure that Rookie and Shanji can reach the rest of these targets. Huge fight from Fotic as well with some of those Qs. Seven, yeah. two, and five now on the Varus. It's the fact that the flash burnt from Ruler from Rookie and then immediately followed up on by Fotic. Like the second that someone is down, he sees his angle of engage and he's a full item up on his opposite man right now. But Ruler's on that Zeri. Three items is definitely a big old breaking point as is that a triple sweeper coming out from NIP? They do not like wards. Yeah, they want to make sure that JDG have no information for this Elder. Also, I got to say, this performance from, from Botic and Joa, it's a bit more surprising that we haven't seen these guys leaning more heavily on these, these more aggressive duos. Yeah. Uh, doing so well now. Again, they, they've consistently been going to that Jinx so far, but doing a great job being able to come back through, zoning them off with the ult, zoning them off from that brush with the Q coming out from the Varus. Just textbook from NIP. Nice bit of play from NIP, grabbing themselves the mid tier two. Just as Elder's coming up in 50 seconds time, we gotta talk setup, we gotta talk about the potential fight that could end the game here in just under a minute. For JDG, it's kind of rough now because you've already pushed in top all the way. And I feel like, you know, having that timer where you're trying to pull Nasus away, the closer Elder comes up. And again, trying to be able to move over with your destiny slightly faster than his TP would come through is pretty much your best way of, of, of moving forward. You do essentially have two crit 80 carries for JDG, right? So the DPS is there. But yep. the question is if you'll really be able to use it between Sejuani, Ult, Wither, Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Speaking okay. of, good buffer from missing, but now the virus ult lands as well. Knocked back from Rookie to try to keep himself safe. Has to flash over the wall. And the Flandre. Is, hello, Flandre is cleaning things up. And NIP, it's looked so good, but it's falling apart. Shanji trying to 1v5 in the middle of everyone, and he just can't do it. Flandre with a triple, and JDG oh. shutting NIP out of this series. It's an ace and an unofficial quadra kill for Flandre. Flandre heard the haters after last series and coming in with a great game. JDG are on fire. Who needs Elder Dragon? Certainly not JDG. 30 minutes on the clock. Down in kills, but up in games in the series. 2-0 now as JDG soar ahead. And like we've been saying all split, right? It has felt like there have been three teams up towards the top that can really trade games. JDG, BLG, and Tez, like however it shakes up at the end, those three are close. 
but NIP sadly being that little bit under. And again, it's just a huge, a huge, you know, kudos to JDG for being able to bounce back after that TS loss yeah. and be able to get two games up. And, and to look this good doing it as well, like the split second punishes are just so beautiful yeah. to see from JDG. You miss them for just a second in the late game and the game just ends like JDG, decisive as ever today. Yeah, again, it, it, it looks good playing sides, playing out through team fights. It's just been gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful stuff. We're going to jump into a break and then kick it to our analyst to break this down and find out if NIP have any way back into this series.
Welcome back to the LPL and JDG putting themselves even further in the lead. A 2-0 so far this series and it's a BO5. Just a reminder, winner gets a fighting chance to make it to MSI and the loser unfortunately on a break until summer split. Now, 2-0 from the side of JDG. No funny business with the lane swapping, but funny business when it comes to the draft. Uh, a lot of things are being thrown our way this time around. Uh, we saw dog. We finally <laughs> we saw, saw Susan, Susan huh. Nasus on the rig. <laughs> there were so many people that were saying, like at the very beginning when Zeri first came out, hey, try Nasus as a support versus the Zeri. So good. You slow her down. You can pin her in point. Same thing works towards the Twisted Fate as well, towards the top side of the map. You slow down the speed. You can follow up to kill him as well. So I feel like it was a pretty good careful. Yeah, no, don't play Nasus support. But you know what you should actually <laughs> play in top lane? That is going to be. Twisted Fate, because the MVP of this series, I mean, I know no, Mary, I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew no, it. No, for this game particularly, I is going to be Flandre. I mean, he's played consistency over the last two games, mm. so maybe even the series. Um, there were questions about whether Flandre should be starting. I yeah. think that now we've seen NIP, the way that they approach this series is by throwing curveballs. They had lane swap in game one, they had a Nasus into the TF in game two. Flandre, with his experience, has been really important here. You know, Shea's only just started playing this year. I wonder if he was subbed in instead, actually whether NIP could have gotten under his skin and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Of course, we won't know because he's not been playing on the Rift here today, but Flandre in this game, he couldn't split push as effectively against the Nasus, but it's so, so well hit, particularly in team fights. I feel like, yeah, that was the point I wanted to pin down as well. It feels like they shut him down from the one and four because JDG has a pretty good four core member to push down mid and have Flandre on the side lane, but it's like, fine, if you're not going to allow me to side lane, I'm just going to team fight you to death. And it's, like, we keep forgetting, like, what JDG do the best. It's team fight in their 3-0 versus when they got 3-0'd by Tess, they were trying to team fight them over and over again because that's what they're really good at. And it fell short in this series. However, here they have showed the skill level when it comes to finding the angles with picks that you would expect on a side lane. Yeah, and you know, like Twist of Fate hasn't always been in Flandre's champion pool. It's been mm -hmm. a top lane champion for not very long, but you can teach an old dog new tricks. So. Oh, you were ah, waiting for that one. Was, the entire oh time. Oh my god, you were just like, Ginny, let me say this joke, please. But when we're looking at this game, particularly something that really set out earlier of course is going to be that draft like that draft coming mm -hmm. through from the side of nip picking the nasa's who had questions into that but in in general the way this game went is for a long time especially early on nip seemed to be in the lead they even had the the chemtech soul yeah, I mean, NIP, their early game stats have been really good. They're one of the best first blood get, um, teams in the entire league. They were leading that stat for a very, very long time. In fact, I think, I think they still are even in the lead with that, even with their last series versus BLG. Their early game stats are not the issue. Yeah, I feel like when it comes to JDG, you need a much bigger lead to try and take mm -hmm. them into these team fights. Because when it comes to the draft again, I feel like having a double range bot lane, you should absolutely be demolishing that lane. You've got non-committal engaged with Sejuani. You've got Rookie on his Aliyah, who was playing this early game skirmish is so freakishly well. Like, we we're talking back and forth. We're like, this is a Rookie Diff skirmish. This is a Rookie Diff skirmish. His knockbacks, the way he was completely shoving, uh, sorry, stopping the map, shoving it in half with his walls was incredible. I just feel like NIP have not found a footing yet in this series. They've tried so many different tricks from the lane swaps to throwing in the Nasus. And I feel like I'm just getting worried because I'm like, how much more do you have in the tank to throw at JDG? Well, I think where a lot of this should start now is actually, now I love the Talia from Rookie, but I think he needs more team fight power, even though the Talia is good at that. I think we need to see a Sol now. I think we need to see that come out of the pocket, look for a, a way for him to scale yep. into the game. It has been a really clutch pick. Yes, you can roam with the Astral Flight as well. We can just fly over the team fights and do the drive back and a Flame Breath, but also that big ultimate can be the extra scaling factor that they need. I feel like we've gotten to a point in both of these games where, you know, the lane swap didn't quite work out, the Nasus didn't quite work out in terms of like getting like a game breaking lead or, or Mm -hmm. stopping the TF from being just a threat elsewhere. You need to have a real gotcha moment and say, we have the tools now, we have the power, we can team fight effectively. I wonder if Aurelian Sol in the right location could be that. Yeah, I wonder as well, realistically, what that could be. Because you were mentioning about the Aurelian Sol, and it's kind of something we highlighted earlier today, where we're looking at the champion pool that Rookie has come to playing and potentially being the second jungler. But I, I also want to touch up on the fact that at the end of the day, it is a best of five series and you're already down to mm. games. NIP had expectations on them that they've exceeded, but there is technically one chance left. 
man. Okay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put him on the spot right here. I think Fawtick needs to step up in this particular series. He's been caught out way too many times. I I love the fact that he is that aggressive AD carry that NIP needs to play this skirmish heavy game that they like to play in the early game. But there have been many instances on the map where he overextends. The Baron is thrown away. They can't and missing is always there. Yeah. Mm. And I think that, you know JDG they're a very opportunistic team. If you make those kind of mistakes, it's gonna end up badly for you. Now I will say in terms of coming from regular season into playoffs and then kind of working their way through that as well. A number of players from NIP have stepped up. I think Aki's had a much better playoffs than regular season. I think uh, Juo absolutely has had a better um, regular season than um, uh, playoffs than regular season as well. So it's not out of the question that Foti can do it. It's just that you have a one game turnaround to do it. Yeah. Now. That's the problem. It's just like you're Time completely up against up. the wall. You know, um, it is a bit of a shock in a lot of ways that NIP got to top four. I think mm -hmm. they should still be looking to fight their way through it. They are a team that has bounced back from game one series, um, like game one losses in series. They have different techniques. We've seen them pull out different drafts. We need to see them really buckle down again. And yeah, I think the right, the eyes are rightfully on the AD carry position. Is this where that experience comes back into play? Because highlighted earlier today, NIP has a, a collective 129 games in the LPL, but then you're looking at JDG, a team that has had so much experience. Could this potentially be the breaking point? Well, I mean, th th this is the thing with the help fail. It's like, you could look at the organization of the NIP and say, oh, the, they've, the NIP, we haven't seen them before. Well, you look at like Rookie, Photic, and Droid, and like, well, they were on V5 as well. Rookie's been playing for, for Yonks. So he's been around for forever. So the individual players have actually put together an awful lot of games together, even if it's not been in this particular outfit under this particular banner as well. Mm -hmm. um, the problem really is then, yes, beyond that point. Okay, so it's all well and good. You've played a couple of games here, but everyone has that here on the stage now. And I feel like you mentioned it a little bit in the green room. You were talking about the NIP match magic and what that means. I do have a C yeah. I do have a CSGO background and I have seen that NIP magic happen. The one versus Wrong five game. Oh my god, they're subbing and getting me. The one versus five clutches, you know, coming back from like a 10 round deficit. And I think this is the point where the NIP magic has to happen for the League of Legends team for the reverse sweep to happen. It is indeed because this is their final chance to be able to break this one back as we're heading to head ready to head into game three of this B05 series with Munch and Lyric. Thanks so much, guys. Welcome back to the Casa Desk. I'm Munch. That's Lyric. And we're ready to jump into game number three of this series. And JDG have just looked so good. I like. I feel like every single time there's a minuscule mistake by NIP, JDG just pounces on them. They, they just look so clean today. Exactly, right? I, I feel like even if maybe there's members of NIP you can point to like wanting to step up like again I feel like Aki's had a rough day of games Fotix been caught out a few times like Trouble was talking about it feels like even if individuals do start performing better let's say out of nowhere in this next game it doesn't really matter because JDG are just performing so well as a unit we were talking about their target selection how they're chaining together their CC just all of these things have been so good from JDG in these two games yeah, they've been absolutely beautiful. And like you say, the chaining of CC, I think like that's one of the things I'd like to focus on is in the middle of these fights, the mechanics that we get to see coming on through and the coordination out of, out of the team composition is just so beautiful. Like it's often something that's not focused on a lot in League of Legends. Quite often bigger conversations are about macro and team play in that regard. But when you look at the, the intricacies of some of these fights, it really is gorgeous to watch. Like go back and watch some of these team fights in slow-mo at the end of the day and you will just be amazed at quite the level of coordination we're seeing from JDG today. Yeah, again, it, and it comes down to like a lot of small timings. Uh, and that's how like we see a lot of our top teams in the LPL being willing and wanting to take like four V5s and set up a lot of these trap plays. It's just nice to see that that confidence is, again, it's out in spades for JDG today. They, they've shown us different looks. They haven't just picked the same composition yeah. over and over like people were criticizing in their last series. And now it's up to NIP. Uh, I really loved what Nightmare was saying. We was talking about NIP wanting to throw curveballs. Because that really has been the name, not only of this series, but even some of their other ones. So you look at the last yeah. one with things like the Diana Yasuo coming out. It's like, all right, what's what's the curveball we're going to get in the next game? And it, it has to land. It has to land. Or they're just out. Rookies denied once again, Munch. And I know that. That strikes a chord with you personally. It breaks my bloody heart is what it does. Uh, it, like, it's been four years since we last saw rookie on an international stage four years it was 2019 worlds that we last saw him play he made it to the semi-finals and has never made it back since he tried with v5 he tried with top esports now he's trying with nip and it's it's you know it would be a tough number even if they win today i'd still say it's a it's a bit of a snowball in hell's chance of nip oh, making it to msi let's be yeah. honest like it's top no, it gets worse to if you the today. remaining yeah. opponents but uh <laughs> 
But it's still heartbreaking to see, isn't it? It's not a team that you want to see fail. This is a team that I think a lot of fans at home, any old fans of E5, any old fans of OMG, have like come together to love this NIP squad. And I feel like there's so much to love. And yet, we're one game away and potentially our last game of watching NIP this split. Yeah, and again, it, it, it wouldn't be that big of a surprise, especially going up against a team like Trady G, where you have a lot of players who are already very familiar with each other. Sure, Rookie's worked yep. with the bot lane before, but bringing in a, a whole different top side is yep. like massive changes to have to deal with in, in only one split. It is really commendable they made it this far, especially yeah. when yeah, absolutely. That, that fourth place slot was kind of open. Like some people definitely had Nip being the, the fourth best team in LPL, but other people had LNG, other people had Weibo. So, you know, again, if it ended here, it'd be fine, but it, we're not, they're not down and out just yet. We got to oh, no. see again that curveball that they could throw here. Let's see, one last punch from NIP. Three aggressive bot lanes banned away by them as they lock in the Rakan for Juo. This is something that different teams have had different levels of priority on across playoffs. We have seen a couple of B1 Rakans before. It's going to be answered with a Nautilus for missing. Yeah, a little bit surprised. Instantly showing their confidence, kind of matching engage for engage, and they don't really care what NIP pick. They are going to go for the scaling option here. Highlighting that Zaya, you know, assuming that's probably what NIP will want to go for themselves down in that 2v2. And JG, once again, don't really care about getting an, an early pick on mid, getting a higher priority jungle. They've kept it really consistent with just wanting to get Ruler and missing on something they're comfortable on early in draft. See what the priority is going to be. Aki and Rookie, I feel like, have been the, uh, the setup for a lot of the early games for NIP. The Smolder hover is intriguing because Smolder ceased to exist in the LPL after a couple of nerfs. Taki going for the Vi instead, and you could just go for the Talia for Rookie. Ari obviously banned away. But to be honest, the Talia has not looked as good as we've seen in the rest of playoffs today. Doesn't feel like it has been the ticket for NIP that they want it to be. Yeah, Nightmare brought up the Ave Soul on the desk. I, I really yeah. love the mention of that. It does give you some scaling. The thing I'm, I'm scared of, if, if NIP lean too heavily in that direction with all lanes, it's like, hey, well, where are you getting prior? JDG will just steamroll you. Uh, they are just going to default back to the Talia. Again, this pick itself hasn't been a problem. Rookie's been hitting some great seismic shoves. And it seems like they're going to be like, hey, that's fine. We're going to go with it. We have a jungle that pairs very nicely with it. Hell, even the Rakan, like this is this is one of the best mid jungle support trios you can yeah. you can ever hope to draft. Yeah, in terms of getting picks, like you absolutely lock someone down. They never get any chance to counterplay. It's not even like you can flash most of what's coming your way with this trio. Flandre goes for the Rek'Sai once again. This, is, I mean, Flandre's looked pretty good today. It has to be said, like. Flandre, one of the players that people questioned that as a decision when he was brought into the roster at the start of the year, and he's had high highs and low lows, as we've mentioned before. I feel like in playoffs specifically, in general, he's looked really good against top esports. Yep. He had a bit of a struggle. The rest of playoffs, he's looked fantastic. Again, he has, he has four out of the five MVPs that JDG have in playoffs so far. The only, yeah. the only MVP he doesn't have is game one, where Missing picked it up with that insane Ash. Uh, we are going to see now coming back into draft, though, taking away the Smolder. So they are respecting that pick, despite the fact that it's been heavily gutted and we, we haven't seen it at all in playoffs yet. Again, Zaya being another one that comes to mind, but caring more about the Kai'Sa. I guess that does go a lot more in line with how their composition plays out. Yeah. I actually wonder like how deep the, the pick rabbit hole NIP will go, because hell, you could even theoretically throw like a TF on top side and again, have that lane where you can try and cut out the Rek side. And then you have like TF porting on you. You have Talia jumping you with the wall. You have the Vio, like so many different ways to pick. But that also might leave you kind of exposed with, with no real front line to work with. Yeah, there's also stuff like uh, Tristana still open and available. We've seen a couple of Photic Tristana games this year. It's a very aggressive, like, go forwards composition. Maybe one of those kind of AD carries instead of going for the scaling of the Zaya. We've seen plenty across the year of Rakan without Zaya. Let's see if Photic does lean towards the bird lady down in the bottom lane. Again, hell, even TF could Ooh. actually be flexed down to bot if they wanted, but oh, you're right. Maybe wanting to bring even more aggression down to the 2v2. This is going to be incredibly scrappy, but no. Actually, going back to your idea, and I like this more, because Tristana, 
in my mind, Tristan is such an insane champion in the game right now because not only are you a champion that can safely play sides, not only do you open up other options in jungle, uh, you're also a great team fighter. You're a great early skirmisher, and now it only leaves them with top. I feel like now that they have Tristana, they do need a heavier frontline, so them showing the Udir is quite nice. They have enough pick, they have enough 5v5, they just need a solid rock to absorb all that DPS that JDG have already drafted. Well, we'll see if we actually get that 1v1 in the top side. We had this uh, top matchup in game number one. We didn't see a whole lot of top laning face in game number one with the ridiculous lane swaps that came on through. It could be Rek'Sai Jungle. That is a thing that exists. And they've just baited me. They've just completely no. baited me. No, <laughs> Wait, no, I mean, they, have, they no. haven't baited you. You're baiting yourself. I'm baiting you're... myself. <laughs> <laughs> the twist of fate comes through for Flandre. And it is Kanavi bringing out the Rek'Sai in the jungle. Yeah, this is going to be a fun run. It's going to be our first Rek'Sai jungle of the LPL playoffs. I'm curious to see how can I be able to handle this one. Again, the early aggressions there, the like different ways you can approach gank angles with those tunnels. A lot of creative options going to be left open. And once again, JDG have an absolute ton of DPS between two crit AD carries and in Azir. NIP, it's a lot more about the, the mid game explosion they could have getting Prios early on with the Tristana and the Talia linking up and trying to set up I say a similar amount of aggression towards that bot side as you did in game two. Feels like the longer this goes on, the harder it will be for NIP. Their composition doesn't necessarily fall off in that way, but all that on the side of JDG, their composition in the late game will come online in a whole different category. Like that is a powerful composition. Whereas for NIP, so much ability to find picks, so much ability to set things going in the early game. But what we saw in game number two is that early game plans were just completely denied by JDG. And I'm worried that JDG have a similar set of tools to do that again. Yeah, JDG, it definitely in a prime position to, te to close this one out 3-0. And again, Rookie, Rookie and the rest of the NIP boys coming together last second. They're going to need to make this one count. A lot of it is going to be about Aki and Rookie coming together to, to enable Fotik and ensure that Fotik can pop off on this Tristana. We got to see that coordination from NIP. It's time for game three backs against the wall for NIP. That lone man in the crowd shouting Rookie's name. It's me, IRL. That's true. <laughs> what That's a true. rookie it touched it, us so badly, but it, it brings me back to what was it, 2020 summer when when I, when IG <laughs> when IG should have made it to Worlds, uh, you know, ended up getting destroyed by LGD. You you let me like I don't want to predict IG. I just want to predict Rookie, and you know, production yeah. made it possible. They did. They did. Instead of a team logo, I had a rookie face. That's my prediction. And uh, I was wrong. I was very wrong because LGD made it to Worlds that year. And then, uh, you know, they did fine. They did fine. They were a fourth seed. There's only so much you should expect from a fourth seed at Worlds. 2.5k gold on either team. It's a tie to start us off. What a novel idea. I've not seen many ties at level one. And Shanji doesn't want to keep it as a tie. So Andre chased away. Ghost for ghost there. And Aki gets onto the chickens here, just trying to deny Kanavi in the early game. Rek'Sai, so weak at the level one, and NIP would have punished it as Duo moves over as well from the top side. The lane swap up there as Kanavi's trying to get onto things. The knockup goes wide though. Kanavi, one HP flashes, and Aki takes first point. Yagao answers though, as Shanti went down two. Oh my god, it's tense to start us off. Honestly, I feel like JDG should feel content with that one, considering that they had less members on the top side. Oh no. They want to they catch up Landre too. Okay, no. Trying to find more. Missing. It's going to be there. Aki goes into the jungle here, but he might have gone too deep for this one. Draws in the area. There's a gold card. Missing. He can follow up. There's not a huge amount of damage here, but it's level oh, one, so it doesn't gone. really matter. He's stuck against the wall. And it's another freebie for JDG. He used his flash in, in the prior engagement, and JDG take advantage of that. Again, JDG have just been reacting to, to the plays that NIP want to make so well. Uh, we can see Ruler being left by his lonesome down in bot side, committing missing up towards his 2v2. And it, it kind of ends up like a normal 2v2 right again, because Twisted Bait's being played more as an AD carry these days. So 
Uh, no. isn't gonna be too different. I guess Flodger have to get used to playing out in the 2v2. Yeah, let's be real as well, though. Like, Rule is winning out of all of this. Zeri just getting two lane and, and just push waves in and just get perfect CS in the early game. You're more than happy with that. As a laning phase, Rookie. Some nice trades in the early game. We've seen this consistently this series, just back-to-back -back sparring between these two mid laners. It does feel like Yagao's had Rookie's number today, though. It feels like he's been the more impactful mid laner. And it's been one of those things of where, sure, Rookie's been getting prio, you know, throughout the series, and, and NIP themselves might dedicate more attention to Rookie, but if you talk about someone who is all about enabling their team, setting up their jungle, and, and kind of being that glue, that's what Yagao does, and he's done such a great job of consistently shadowing Rookie, making yeah. sure that he hasn't been able to find an impact, and finding some impact himself, and getting, getting a kill on his ear so early on is it's definitely going to be feeling great. It's worth talking about it. Just JDG in general. So we spent a lot of today talking about NIP, talking about rookie specifically. But Yagao coming back into JDG this year, he's a player that is, is very sought after among LPL players. And I think a lot of people looking at the start of the year, like Knight and 369 being replaced by Yagao and Flandre, like you've got absolute carries from last year versus more. I guess utility style players historically in Yankau and Flandre and people weren't sure how it was going to work out for JDG and sure they definitely aren't the, the powerhouse that we got to see last year but it does feel like as time goes on this team is becoming more and more comfortable more and more confident in the way that they want to play the game and today I do feel like we're seeing somewhat of a culmination of the split so far yeah and oh is engaged on a ruler comes out good damage onto a ruler here but Dwarf and Fotic may have stayed too long. Kanavi's trying to tunnel into the bottom side. Dwarf flashes rocket jump from Fotic, and they will get away with their lives. Yeah, Kanavi sadly does not have flash because of the amount of action we've already seen on top side. If so, you know they would have been following up and making sure that Dwarf went down or that uh, Fotic had to utilize his flash himself. Is yeah, actually really nice aggressive Damn. trade. And we, we can walk back to that, right? Because I think a lot of people might forget JDG as an org might be on this like big long streak of winning. But it started with Yigao. Like, it started 20, uh, 2022 summer, which 369 was on that iteration of the JDG roster, right? But it's not like 369 and Knight came over together. 369 yeah. came over first. They still have Yigao in the mid lane. And hell, it was Yigao taking out Knight for JDG to be able to win in that, that 2022 summer. So it's kind of nice to see it come full circle where that's where the domination started and JDG hoping to keep it up here certainly are and Yang Gao's in form today that's for sure the fact that he was able to get one of the early kills in the level one is really nice for him already with the haunting guys in lane but his footwork beautiful he's gone for the grasp azir as well basically saying look i've got a lot of upfront pit and burst we're playing for the late game i'm going to do damage no matter what i want to be a little bit tankier they're going to make him a little bit better in those quick trades in mid which is kind of what you're hoping for <laughs> NIP, just like last game, right? Trying to find so much through their 2v2 with the aggressive picks that they have, but JDG really just have not been a team to give over opportunities. Kanavi wants to dive in the top side. Flandre does just take a bit of a punch in the face from Shanji, who starts to run away, but the flash from Kanavi to get the knock up doesn't quite set up. Flandre Ooh. will tank a tower shot, and he goes down one for one. Well played, Shanji. Shanji ends up getting one. You did deny a lot of CS, but it looks like Kanavi. Oh, oh, Rookie flashes to. for it. He wants to finish the job beautifully done by the NIP solo lanes. JDG finally denied a play. They deny the play. They find kills themselves. And while that was going on, Aki was even able to pick up the first strike. So we can see Yigao getting a little bit back in mid lane with the play. But JDG, I mean, getting taken advantage of. Nice find nip to be able to actually find a window. Shanji yeah. really being the catalyst for that. <laughs> We've really got to keep our eyes on Kanavi this game as well, because remember, they've done this weird Rakan, uh, not Rakan, uh, Rek'Sai jungle flex, which not something we've seen a lot this year. Um, whether or not that works out could be the difference maker in this series. So far, he's 0-2. And, and like you said, he's a champion that if you don't get a lot done early, it feels like it's so much harder to find that impact later on. His Flandre, oh he's surrounded. No summoners. Aki not level 6 just yet. Flandre not going to walk in. Drops a ward. Doesn't see anyone. Shanji's in lane. All normal fair so far, it feels like. 
Rookie slides on forward. Flandre, can he dodge? The flake back from Rookie. The stun comes on through. The follow-up is there. And Aki grabs the kill. Now a dive on the bottom side with a double knock-up. Comes out from Joel and missing forced away. Kanabi underneath the towers. Ruler surviving. Joel, barely any HP. It looks good for JDG as Ruler grabs another. So we see teams making aggressive plays on opposite sides of the map. NIP able to get something going in top side, but JDG just enabling Ruler even more. Gonna be able to deny a lot of CS uh, to Votic specifically, who's already down 20 CS. I mean, look at that wave dying. It, it breaks my heart as an AD carry main, but it's a 20 CS lead with a kill and an assist as well. This is the perfect start for Ruler. Yeah, we're going to see them start this one off on the Tristana. I mean, Joel does a nice job of finding the knockup on two, but it's still not enough with Ruler getting all that free damage out. And Kanavi luckily staying healthy enough to where it doesn't matter, can go for the redie with him just finishing that off and then backing out easily. Like you said, a ton of minions lost to the Tristana. We could see two plates already going over to the Zeri too. So that hasn't really been able to be answered back by the top side. I mean, hell, sure you found kills on Flandre, but Shanji's still 20 CS down and he hasn't found any plates for himself. Play picked up for Flandre as well as uh, immediately. Shanji wants to change that fact. He goes in onto Flandre. No summoners available. Ghost about to come up for Flandre and he might have to use it immediately. There we go. Stun. Not quite in range. Shanji keeps on chasing this one down. Kanavi arrives on the scene, but I'm not sure that Shanji cares, but he should because Flandre's walked away. Oh. Shanji chasing for more. No way. He actually gets it. Shanji finds a solo kill. And Kanavi's three levels down. I'm not 100% sure if he wins this 1v1. Doesn't even have his ult. Yagao and Aki arrive on the scene. Shanji walks away. An absolute daylight robbery is a highwayman of the top side. You should never underestimate how fast Animal Man can run because you can tell Flandre thinking, ah, maybe I can cut him out long enough for us to finish it off. But as you do, you're just getting so much movement speed to be able to find those. So once again, they find another kill on Flandre, but sadly can't really turn it into much more. We do see Aki has been taking these grubs. So actually might be potential for five grubs here with, with Yigao going for the reset. Grubs started here. Aki wants to keep going with them. Kanavi's moved over, so has missing. Fotik in the area and Juwal on a flank. That should be enough to dissuade JDG. All right, four for NIP here. And that's all they'll get on this one. So Kanavi moves back in. We'll be able to finish this last grub off. So JDG grab two for themselves. This is the four of NIP. And NIP getting four grubs as well as that first Drake is a good start when it comes to objectives. The problem is they're a thousand gold down. Yeah, and both teams actually wanting to fight Wait. over the scuttle. We're still going. Juo forced the flash away. Yako just dives on in. It's a bit of a massacre so far, but Shanji wants Ruler's to turn it alone. around. Still four strong for JDG. No way for Rookie to get into the play here. And Shanji just ain't that tanky yet. Juo gets a knockup. Yakao there as Rookie's behind enemy lines. And Votic dives on to Ruler, but Ruler is too tanky. He survives and now dives forward. Juo to fall as well. And everything going the way of JDG. Gaming! Kanavi finding the action, setting up Ruler to really take over Yigao, doing similar things that we've already seen on the Azir with the Emperor's Divide. And sadly for NIP, it's uh, looking a little bit muted. They might be able to find Flandre once again, but we've seen what has even finding kills on Flandre really even turn into? It doesn't feel like it matters, does it? You see Aki in the area, nobody else even really nearby. And this is over Crab! This is Dwol! Trying to force a fight over Scuttlecrab, just easily punished. Yeah, finds no one on the engage, immediately has to flash out. It opens up for your Vi to be CC'd, so I didn't even get a chance to move. And then from there, it just really looks easy. It was dicey for a second when, when Ruler was uh, kind of cut off from the rest of his team, but they readjust and know, hey, this lead is not really going to be able to do much. And that's when you see uh, Fotik have to go for the jump in, have to try and go for the assassination, or just going to be doomed. Sadly, doesn't work out anyway, and Ruler and Kanavi can just keep running NIP down. And whether it's in jungle or in top lane, that Rex either sustain that you get during those fights is too much. And you can see the JDG fans over the moon with how this one is going. It's 2-0 in the series right now, and it's 10-5 and five in game number three. It's a 4,000 gold lead for JDG. Two Drakes as a minor consolation prize for NIP, but they have to make some kind of magic happen now. Their back's against the wall in the series, and it feels like in the game as well.
Yeah, and, and they've been trying. They've been trying to make proactive plays. They've been trying to force aggression. They're going to potentially do snow. Not even going to have the opportunity up against Yigao. And this is where I feel like uh, had they actually been able to get the five grubs, then it's like, all right, you could try and overstack on one lane play with those mites. But they were denied that. So that similar level of playmaking, I, I think that similar level of overforcing wouldn't be uh, as much of a benefit as it otherwise would be. And it's kind of left NIP stalled. Can I just say, like, Missing has been on the Nautilus a lot today. His hooks to buffer CC are so clean. I'm not sure I've seen him mess one up. Even at melee range like that, it, it looks like Tristana rocket jump or Ezreal-y, the way that he uses it. Like, I, I feel like he, he's almost immune to... It's almost like a bellows breath at this point when you yeah. see Missing using the ability. It's it's actually a tragedy seeing this matchup uh, and just thinking, like, hey, and I've been playing all this Thresh. And then you think to, like, one of the premier Thresh guys missing. Yeah, it's like, literally. man, I want to see this guy on the Thresh once again. Hopefully, JDG one day will bring it out. But like you said, Missing, I mean, might not need the threshold is showing up quite nicely with the Nautilus. He's looking great today. JDG in general looking great today. Off with such a huge lead. We're only 14 minutes into the game. Look at the items. <laughs> the Look at the items. Up at 14 minutes into the game. In game three of a best of five. I mean, it's just something else, isn't it? JDG, they want to keep themselves alive in the bracket, but will they be able to? The CC chain is good onto Ruler. That's one kill. Shanji with a shutdown, but it's only one kill for an IP. Oh, JDG thinking about going back in. They need to be careful. Rookie is Weaver's Wall. Would really be able to make up the distance quite easily. Not even going to need it. And actually be able to make his way over now. Roller went down, though. So main carry not here for JDG. But they don't seem to mind as Missing looks for an engage. This time he's flicked back. Forced to flash away. Damage coming out on Flandre against three players here. And Kanabi diving in for more. But Aki's on the play. And Kanabi's gone a little bit too deep for this one. Perhaps a chance for NIP. A second kill as the Weaver's Wall comes out from Rookie. But oh. Yagao just puts him into the team. Another mistake punished by JDG. Yagao sacrifices his own life to make the play happen as Flandre gets a cold card out. Hook comes through from Missing. And here comes Roller to turn the play again. JDG, no matter what, they can't be stopped. JDG, charge underneath the tower, and Roller finds his reward. Man, JDG are feeling it. These look like the type of plays you make when you're 2 0 up and you are just feeling incredibly confident, and they actually make it work. Again, it looks so crazy. Both teams just constantly sending it into each other, but somehow JDG. Fight lasts long enough to even get Ruler back into the fray and find some more kills. But we're going to have to go all the way back. Actually, no, we're, we're not going all the way back. We're going to the 4v5. This is where it's kind of funny because we're going to see Kanavi try to go in onto Rookie, but Aki wasn't all that far away. They actually saw him walk towards that Herald over the ward. So gives up his own life for free. And then, my God, Munch, both mid laners yeeting the other one into their teams. A little bit poetic as, you know, Rookie going to face punishment, but finds it on Yigao. And look at the minimap. It buys enough time for Ruler to be able to make it all the way back over here and set up for JDG to keep playing aggressive. Ruler just slides into the play and finishes things off. Photic so low. Walking away from that fight is Yagao now being chased by Shanji. The action just never ends in this one. Yagao, he's got that grasp, but he ain't as tanky as Nu did. This time, Kanabi arrives. Can he get another 2v1? A TP comes through. Rookie wants to join in onto the play. Shanji's still surviving, and Rookie's presence will deter the aggression. Yeah, needing to back off, especially Yigao's Emperor's Divide only coming up just right now. So had NIP ran forward, it would have really been like, hey, we, we're screwed. We need to flash, having to waste summoners with no ways to disengage. We see on the opposite side of the map, though, NIP are able to answer back up on top side again. Just one of the great things about Tristana is yeah. she really can just fit into any role. You can push out inside. You have the safety with that rocket jump. Great in team fights with, you know, a bit of burst and obviously a ton of DPS, tons of Pryo all around. Hasn't been able to find the start that he would have wanted. No, certainly not. I just love the approach to the game from JDG as they'll pick themselves up a trade. It feels like they have control on this bottom side. But like, you know, you always see the coach talking to the players after the draft is done and you assume that they're talking about different Pryos and the kind of pathing we're gonna take in the early game and this sort of stuff. I feel like the entire conversation was give no quarter. I don't care if they've got a better early game composition. Fight them for everything. And it feels like it's Ooh. been working for JDG. 
they were they were really <laughs> helping to chase and I think that one. Splash, the advanced hex splash is back. We yeah. actually saw we actually saw uh, Yagao jump over the one. I thought, oh, they really want this, but just gonna end up committing for the Herald, trying to get information on where NIP is to make sure they're doing this one safely. And ooh, we'll see if this opens up a window to fight. Definitely yeah, does. Just has his own TP, so could be a switcheroo here. Missing, caught out, and just accepts his fate there. I'm not sure he had a choice but to accept his fate, to be honest. Aki grabs that kill. The Herald taken, though. They are still, you know, three, almost 4k down. Gonna try and find a huge play on mid. Could die from both sides. Looking for the dive, but the knock-up stone land. Ruler with a cleanse. The blast code pulls him into the danger, though. And Ruler falls once again. NIP finding yet another chance. The mid lane wave not quite under the tower, so they can't finish the objective yet. And it will mean that they back away. No, moving back into the mid lane here. Can I be trying to defend? I'm sure that's something that he can, but Yagao moves over, but he walks through Fog. And immediately punished by Rookie. So sadly, NIP not going to be able to take mid turret. It was nice to see them actually chaining things together, trying to turn picks into active objectives, even if they did have to overload mid lane. Did give Flandre the opportunity to find that outer on top side. But when we were talking about, hey, NIP being more explosive, being more burst heavy, wanting to try and find these advantages earlier, uh, they need to, to, you know, push forward picks like that and look for this play. As we're gonna see here, trying to get on top of Ruler, getting the summoners early, and then I love it, getting ahead of the play, not allowing him to be able to blast plan away and sending him in to your team. But like you said, Kanavi being here and Yagao being on the way prevented the mid lane turret from going down. More than a kill a minute for game number three here, and I'm loving every second of it. But if you're an NIP fan, you gotta be a little bit nervous with how this one's going because it does feel like JDG across the course of today have felt like the better team. It's felt like, uh, you know, it feels like they've gone back to that form they were in in that series versus Weibo, as opposed to how they got kind of destroyed versus top esports. And remember that if they make it, if they do finish this game, they move further on in the bracket, their next opponent will be either Top Esports or BLG. So we'll either have a rematch of that somewhat obliteration that we got to witness from Top Esports, or they have to go up against the team with the best regular split record in the history of this format. Like, either opponent is going to be a challenge, and I'm really glad that we do see JDG showing us really solid gameplay today because they are going to need to be in form for that follow-up match. Yeah, they will. Like you said, either either going up against TS or getting the Ping Shang Derby against Naid is Aki. He's gonna find Yagao. No one else is that yeah. close. I was gonna say Yagao caught out, but I'm pretty sure that's Aki caught out. <laughs> and Aki forced to flash. I mean, Aki started that play, but Flandre immediately. Ooh. Using that twist of fatal and actually gets a TP bot on a rookie. Yeah, I like that. The second you see the TB being channeled and Destiny closer to mid, you know, maybe there would have been an opportunity there for missing to find a hook or something like that. You're closer and you could just uh, converge for the pick. But I really want to point this out. This top lane discrepancy, right? 50 CS yeah. up for Flandre. Two and a half items. Shanji just finishing his second on his last reset. Like, my God, Flandre again is just so huge in this playoff run so far. Now a fight for the red buff. Aki, I think his smite was true there. Finishing the job. Will get one objective for his team. Infernal Drake spawned in just over a minute's time here. JDG got the most recent Drake, but I do feel like we're getting to the point in the game now where maybe kind of have to start fighting for stuff. Voting on two items of the Tristana. We're very close to a death cap for Rookie. And NIP, I mean, right, even though you look at JDG and you say, hey, again, a bunch of DPS, the longer this game goes, there are no slouches. Tristana going to be dish, dishing out huge damage. Yeah. Talia there, too, with the burst. And you have quite a quite a nice front line coming out from your three supporting casts and a ton of CC. Problem is, JDG do have a lot of mobility on Yigawan Ruler. So it's going to be hard to just be able to lock them down. Hell, we saw last time, even if Aki can lock one of them down, <laughs> the others are enough to get the job done. Harold down in the mid lane, the Sun Disk as well. It's a lot of presence coming out from JDG. They want to set up for the Drake that's up in 15 seconds. Charge lands, Kanabi gets out of dodge. Bit of that. It's not often that you see the tier twos being threatened with Herald <laughs> to set up for a Drake. That's usually in tier one. This being charged up with JDG just so far ahead of the curve at this point. Infinite Pryo in the mid lane with Yagao's passive. 
I like Rookie going off to the angle. He, he did manage to pick up the death caps. We're going to have a lot more damage. Knock up, Skalor onto missing, but the aftershock keeps him alive. And Kanabi's onto the back line, missing, walks away with his life. Is Aki threatening as well? But Aki's gone too deep. Both junglers taken down. And now we're in an even position, missing solo on HP, but some of the carries on NIP. That's the big thing, right? Like, missing's low, but Votic being one of the ones to take big damage in that last fight. NIP still feeling confident. Rookie might surprise them. Nice flick back, Flandre chunked out pretty heavily. Ooh. And Rookie flashes for a solo kill in the middle of the fight. And now the Weaver's Wall, his ruler will be the next target. Trying to get out with his life. Yago trying to save his AD carry, but there's nothing to be done. Double for Rookie as he takes to the stage. The all-star of the mid lane keeps NIP alive. It really feels like we might be overhyping this guy sometimes, but he is consistently making these big hero plays for NIP. It's good to see they were able to translate it into a team fight win and into a soul point. They're finding Mojo right when they need a bunch. And it feels so poetic that you see Rookie making a pop-off play and then Joao as he recalls, Bowland's signature <laughs> appears once more. We're back to 2018 Rookie right here today. Six, two, and four on the Talia, making the plays to keep NIP in this. I love it, makes his way around. JDG not gonna expect this to come through again. The seismic shoves today, it, he might be down 0-2 right now, but his seismic shoves have been gorgeous. And then he keeps just following it forward with the rest of his squad there to make sure that the kills are able to go through. We're gonna see Yagao try to do his best to make sure that they can get away to safety, but with Rookie denying that path with the Weaver's Wall, there's just nowhere they can go. Beautifully done. Rookie grabs a triple. And what a moment for him. Desperate to keep him and his team in this bracket. It's 14 to 13 as we get towards the 25 minute mark. And it's NIP now on Infernal Soul Point. They've got the perfect soul as well to find advantages, especially with a composition like this where you really do want to blow up one person. It does feel like that Infernal Soul, infinite value for them. Right now they're they're completely even in gold. They're They're getting to the points where the Talia and the Tristana are going to be very strong and very hard to deal with. Uh, I like the amount of vision they have up towards the Baron side now, but we'll see if they ever think about using it. It is much harder to even try to go for sneakier plays up against what JDG have, especially with the Destiny there. Smite comes through, and Blue Buff will be stolen away. I feel like we need to take a second here and kind of recap of where we're at because it's been a very chaotic game. We are neck and neck in gold. We are neck and neck in kills. Towers slightly in favor of JDG, but nothing too significant. And let's be honest, Tristana. Gonna make short work of Towers if things kick off. But it's all about the Drakes. It's all about now setting up for this Baron. You can see the blue vision so strong on the top side of the map. JDG now have to move in to try and contest some of that vision. Yeah, at least, at least get again a defensive vision line down in their own jungle, but they're going to be punished. Missing the target, another great hook out from him, but it's not going to be enough. The aftershock keeps him alive for a moment. The ruler just doesn't have the damage to answer. A great pick for NIP. And now Destiny being used too, so they can actually just peel onto the spare and you're not going to have to worry about that, that vision tool being there. And now JDG forced into such an awkward situation. Feels like they've been the ones doing the Baron all series long now. An opportunity for NIP Aki to start the fight. Flandre, the target for the charm, lands onto Ruler. He dashes out to safety, but abandons his other carries. That's two as Fotic dives into the mix, but he's gone too deep. And Ruler's set up now. Shanji chased out of the jungle alongside Kanabi. Ruler dodging away from the knockback from Rookie. And it's enough to stop NIP doing Baron. And it's so sad for NIP. I mean, the one guy who you really can't afford to go down if you want to be able to translate those kills into an objective. You can understand the thought process, wanting to get as much as he can, feeling so incredibly strong to follow that through. NIP are actually locking down, trying to lock down both carries of JDG. Ruler doesn't manage to get away, leaves Swandre in a bit of an awkward position, but it's here. Rocket jump in, you get the reset, but look at how fast Kanavi was on the follow-up to make sure that the damage gets done. Without the Tristana, you don't have the DPS needed to then be able to yeah. turn back onto that Baron. The most depressing part of that is that the Buster shot actually got the kill. So Fotic being over that wall didn't even influence whether or not they got the kill Oof. on Yagao. Really, really tough. And after getting caught out late game in game number two as well, it's a tough look for Fotic. 
Now, I don't feel like this series is down to an individual player. I don't think this, this whole series is on Fotic, but these mistakes in the late game... I say late game, we're 27 minutes in. I guess that's sort of late game these days, but... You can't really be making these mistakes I, when the stakes are this high. I gotta say, though, we're actually really far away from a, a late game that Yigao can imagine, because look at how defensive his build is so yeah. early on. Like, this is here, it's not really gonna be dealing uh, meaningful damage. It's a lot, a lot gonna be about the, the uh, you know, uh, Emperor Divides that he finds, being able to start those engages, being able to isolate Rookie or Fotic from the rest of the squad. Luckily, again, you do at least have Flandre covering the, that share of the damage, right? He is going to be dealing an insane amount being on three and a half. Might even be at four items by now. It's kind of funny to see the, the like, the vegetarian Yakao build versus full carnivore rookie with a death yeah. second item. Like, the polar opposite approach to mid lane right now. Mid lane prio, though, in favor of JDG. And Drake is spawning. NIP would love to get this soul. You can see JDG not being too stressed about it. They still have Flandre pushing up in topside, but you would imagine after this push, start making your way oh, down. Another flick back from Rookie. Big damage coming out from him. Konami looks for the knock up, but Rookie flashes. Flandre's behind enemy lines, but Rookie turns golden and keeps himself alive. Flandre the target now, but he turns golden. And JDG trying to stay alive, but Ruler's taken down. NIP keeping the dream alive. Yago will fall, and that's Infernal Soul. And NIP finally do it. They finally put JDG in a desperate enough position to where the team fighting didn't look clean. The cohesion wasn't on point. The amount of stress they put on them was huge. Now look, actually in the base. I mean, Rookie very specifically in the base of JDG before turrets even going down. Yeah, are they going to end the game right here? It's a really staggered death timer for missing. They've got five seconds till Konami's up. Ten seconds, Unruler and Flandre. They've got a minion wave, and they've got a Tristana. NIP are just going to end the game. They're desperate to finish this one off. Konami wants to get test, but denied by Aki. The tower's full. Ruler arrives, but it's too little and too late. NIP keep themselves alive in the series. Backs against the walls, but they were able to pull it through. Great by NIP. Again, great by Rookie. I know with how much we talk about him, it might sound like it's too much sometimes, but this man just always stepping up when it means most. And sad for JDG, because again, there were there were moments in there that it looked like some decision making was like, hey, yeah. we're 2-0 up. Like we can be this aggressive. We do yeah. feel like the better team. And then it was still close. They almost still managed to even win, but did get a little, a little bit too punished in the end. Yeah, and I feel like we really got to see this pick composition come alive in the later stages of that game. So many of these fights, starting with Rookie finding a target or Chuo getting that charm onto Ruler and getting the knockup off the back of it. Ruler really struggling to function in these later fights. Phenomenal game coming out from NIP, and it means that we officially have a series on our hands. Thank the Lord it's not a 3-0. We're going to 4 in this one. We'll find out how it continues after the break.
Welcome back to the LPL. The NIP magic that Trouble was talking about ahead of this game has come to fruition. They were down 2-0 and and this could have been the last game for them of Spring Split, but instead they bring it back. And in what a fashion they do it. I mean, I don't know. I'm, th I'm throwing my hands up in this particular game because I feel like halfway through the game, we're like, okay, we're going to start planning our end of day show. What do we want in our highlights? This is a 3-0. Suddenly we turn around. Rookie is jumping all across the map, trying to go for the extra plays, trying to jump further into Yagao. He dies, but gets the Yagao shut down. Like, this guy, like, actually bought the biggest backpack he could find in the industry, shoved his entire team in, and he's like, you're <laughs> winning today. And, uh, you know, I think this is now a continuation of what we've seen from NIP in regards to this team really doesn't care if they're down in a series. Comparative to a lot of other teams as well, they can be down 0-2 as they are here, they can be down just one game in a best of three as well, and they really pull out a lot of magic. Yeah, and um, MVP particularly here going to rookie is nothing shocker. crazy, absolutely not a shocker, because as you said it, this guy put everybody in the backpack and took them away. <laughs> you know, we start off the day saying, hey, so Rookie's basically a second jungler as well as a mid laner, because he's everywhere. Turns out he's not just the second uh, jungler. He's also the second, like, AD character. He's doing most of the damage in the team fights. He's also Beautiful. the second, like, everything. He's frontlining, he's engaging, he's damaging. He did absolutely everything. And he did it on the Talir as well, which we've highlighted for him. It's not necessarily been as impactful in the first two games. This third one, though, absolutely immaculate. 38% of your team's damage? That is absolutely absurd. Just another day in the office. 
that's another day. This particular one that was the one I was talking about, because people were like, oh, he's overextending, he's inting, he's diving too deep. Yagao had a huge shutdown on his head, and NIP was behind. But him overextending, getting that shot back, he gets his team back into the game. I think particularly in this play as well, he comes out of Fog of War to do this. Rookie is maybe the best mid laner in the world right now at playing out of Fog of War, and we see that very much on pick champions like the Tali. We've seen it on the Ari as well. We can see it on even the Huey when he's played it as well. Um, and then, of course, he's using the ult to reposition in fights when he needs to. This is why we thought that the Tali would be a very important pick for them. Um, as a whole, though, a big thing we need to talk about here is the fact that they came through team fighting against JDG. This is the team fighting team. We've seen them get out team for the entirety of this series, but it felt like NIP were just ahead of them in this game and they couldn't do it in the rest of the series. And I have to give credit to the bot lane of NIP. It's all Fautic in particular, they stepped the heck up. We pointed our finger at Fautic and we're like, you're overextending. You're not playing for this fight. You're dead before the fights even begin, right? By overextending. I think they massively stepped up every single flank that Flander tried to take in this particular team fight. Suo was ready uh, with the Rakan and Fotic in particular. Stellar, stellar, stellar team fighting. I think it feels particularly good when you win a game versus JDG by pure team fighting, when you know that this is the game and you're beating them at it. Yeah, you beat them at it. You poke the bear's nest. So that is uh -oh. what. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh oh, because when we're looking at JDD, particularly, it's a team that's great at adaptability. It's a team that's great at team fighting. So the creativity from NIP. Does it stop here? Does it get better? Hmm. Well, so when you talk about JDG being like an adaptable team, I'd actually say that's actually been one of their flaws on the whole. If you look at how they played against top esports, they were changing like nothing in their drafts and losing a lot of games. And the thing is, like, credit to them for sticking to their guns when it's working. Now the question is, if NIP have found an angle, are we going to say the same thing that we saw in their last series? They bombed out 0-3 versus top esports because actually the adaptability wasn't there in a, like a whole over draft sense. Yeah, I feel like here they might have overcooked a little bit with the right side going into the jungle, getting punished very early oh, on. Oh, you know, can't quite do the yike. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I've been a huge advocate for Kanavi, but I feel like this particular one with the Rexa, it just didn't feel like very Kanavi-esque. He just couldn't find the openings to allow his team that breath in the early game to make those sides work. Uh, and I feel like maybe sticking to their guns, going back into they have already played before. I feel like he had a fantastic game uh, mm -hmm. onto the Vi. I feel like you snatch that away from Aki and it allows you to make a lot more practical plays in the early game. Yeah, uh, but then, you know, when you're talking about this practice plays in the early game. One thing which I think you were angling towards as well in regards to like, there are different kinds of adaptability and you know, we haven't seen that in the draft side, but the draft side and the adaptability, which of course you were mentioning back there is in terms of like, in terms of the curveballs that are being thrown. That level one again was actually very different from NIP. And we saw actually first blood onto Aki, which is not something that we see very often. Actually NIP have been very good at those first bloods. So actually on JDG, it feels like they're not going to lose through curveballs nonetheless. Yes. You actually have to square up and fight them fair and square. And you know, NIP have shown they can do it in at least one game. And if it's happened once, maybe it can happen again. I mean, you're we're talking about NIP has been able to do it in at least one game, but was it really because of some of the changes that we've seen them throw out? Or was it just one individual player stepping up and saying, okay, everybody, we're not going to lose this 3-0. I'm not going to go down this way because I still want to make it to an international event. Do you want the harsh truth? Absolutely. I feel that Rookie has been going above and beyond this entire series. I feel the same way in a lot of the times about Rookie in respects that I feel about Scout in LNG. I feel like Scout gave a big fight for his team not to lose. And I feel Rookie is doing the same thing right here. Uh, this early game was absolutely disastrous from uh, NIP. Again, we were packing for end of day right here to stand like no, we eulogy weren't. for uh, NIP, but Rookie just refused to lose. And I feel like right here comes the question as well, because we said third time's the charm for the Talia, right? He didn't pivot into the Aurelian soul. He really believed uh, in his ability, his team believed in his ability to carry with the Talia and actually impact the sidelines, which he did very well through the river. However, what happens to the Talia going into this draft? Because Yagao has had some incredible Talia games himself. So what's the fourth time? What's the charm there? Well, that's <laughs> the problem, right? Because um, I think that the problem that's going to hit NAP in a lot of ways is that I don't think there is any one thing which went well for them in a easy to replicate manner. Yep. Now, they did outplay NIP in the team fights. However, a lot of this comes from Rookie doing crazy things. Rookie was still doing some pretty crazy things in game one and two as well. I mean, in game two, he was getting multiple two-man shoves in the bot lane. It's not like Rookie hasn't been pulling his weight in high tight goddamn time. Yeah, we're going to figure out whether or not they'll be able to replicate their success in the fourth game of the series between JDG and NIP with our casters Munch and Lyric. Thanks very much, guys. Welcome back to the Caster Desk, or Caster Desks, plural, since we're, we're casting across continents here. Uh, I'm much enjoyed by Lyric, and we're ready for game number four. And honestly, you know, the desk have talked about it a lot. 
there are a great many things going on in this series. There's a lot of moving parts. Rookie, absolute MVP in that third game. We'll see if it's something that can be replicated. I mean, it's like one of those things where, you know, the performance is going to be replicated, but whether JDG allow it to shut them down like they did in game one and game two is another question, right? Because I really look at that uh, that one time when he was able to get behind them uh, and find that two-man knockback is really the thing that changed the pace of the game. Again, finding the shutdown on, on Yigao in mid was pretty good, but that, that play of rookie finding his way behind them without them expecting really sealed the deal. Uh, I feel like in Shade of G, there aren't too many like takeaways from that game in terms of things you need to change. Sure, I agree. Is Rek'Sai jungle maybe the, you know, the, the pick you want to go towards? No, but Shade of G probably should have won that game anyway. So uh, we're going to go to the next game. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Shade of G decided to go back to blue. And my only question will be if they do see value in taking away the, the Talia. Uh, because Yigao, of course, can play it. Rookie's been having a great time in the series, but they've also shown that they don't need to take it away to win. So I really feel like that is going to be the most telling thing of, of where JDG go with this next game. See if it's going to change if the draft changes. Because, I mean, again, uh, they were talking about it in our analyst lounge. I don't really know what we're calling it, our sofa setup. They were talking about the fact that against Top Esports, the draft really didn't change from JDG. That was a big criticism that a lot of fans at home didn't like. Obviously, the draft today has been a bit different to that of the exactly. drafts versus top esports, so it has changed in general. But the question will be, do they adapt during the series? I'll have to wait and see. To be honest, the way they've been playing, so far it's still two for one. If they don't exactly. adapt this time, I think I'm still okay with it. Well, I don't know. Again, I don't know if there's really anything to adapt off the last game of, of rookie finding just insane hero plays. Yeah. We are going to see them go back to the blue side, though, and this time they're just going to right away just take away that body. I guess showing, hey, we don't care if Rookie gets his hands on the Talia as long as we have something that can single him out. Because again, kind of sad to say for Fotic, but even in the last game, really didn't have the best game. Still was almost the person getting caught out and then causing NIP to lose. So I think for JDG, as long as you have the tools to focus out Rookie, that's really all you need. I'm just going to say right now, it's an ace all angle for Rookie. Without the, the Talia and the Ari as big options, I, I'm saying it's going to be an ace all angle. I don't know what the rest of the draft will look like. I can feel it in my bones. Or is it Talia? Go for it. Well, they go for it. Yeah. There we go. I mean, 40% of the team's damage in the last game when you have a Tristana right alongside you is absolutely ridiculous. That's so, true. I understand going back to the pick once again, but again, I feel like with having the Vi, they are set up much better to be able to deal with it. And I expect JDG to just keep going back to, to the things that they've rounded out with before. We see the Nautilus hover right now. If they wanted to go towards the Zeri with it, I think it'd be totally fine because we know that's where Ruler and Missing can perform. Ruler as well, not really having the greatest performance in that game three. Gonna need to tighten up a little bit. I wonder what Aki will end up going for alongside this Talia later on in the draft. JDG likely to go for an AD carry here. Ruler going to take away that Jinx. It's been Ooh. such a power pick. It's also been specifically a power pick for Photic. So not only is it a good scaling pick for the side of JDG, it's also a bit of denial. And Aki goes for the Nocturne. It was banned earlier in the series. It's something he has succeeded on in playoffs dramatically. And that's another thing that, that going for this Jinx kind of just set up for. You set up for this Nocturne to potentially have a huge amount of success against this immo immobile AD carry. You know Aki loves to pick it. In my mind, it's where NIP have looked most confident when they have the Tilia in mid, the Nocturne in jungle, just all of these different tools to be able to collapse onto one person. And it looks like now you're trying to make sure that you now can't find Fryo and can't bully out Rookie in the mid lane by taking away that end. So finding AD carries now a JDG, taking the Kai'Sa away from Photix so he can't follow up on the dive. Probably want to ban something like the Zaya as well, honestly, but maybe Zeri could be the option. Zeri often locked in alongside dive compositions, but the Zaya just, you know, with the Rakan there, it's not just a good pick for Photic, it's also a good pick for Dro. Yeah, now NIP having the round out with an AD carry. I'm interested to see where they go. Again, you, you mentioned the Zeri. It feels like they're going to have to go with something a little bit kind of standard that is just going to scale up and not really play with the rest of their, their dive setup so far. They end up taking away the Rek'Sai, which makes sense. I think everyone knows by now that this seems like Flandre's absolute favorite champion. Yeah. I wonder now if he just goes towards the TF because it really feels like those have been the two gears, Rek'Sai or TF. 
and it works well with the Nautilus, with the Vi. Like, there's plenty of follow-up on the potential picks. And actually, they are very good at following up on picks as well. Like, the cage, yeah. when you've got some hard CC to set you up, is really powerful. And Yagao going to go for this one. I feel like this has been a pocket pick for Yagao for a great many years at this point. He always brings out in the right angle. Exactly right. We've already seen it once in playoffs. Uh, they brought it out against Weibo, was against Italia, so they feel confident going towards it again. And JDG, it looks like they're going to go with a complete shakeup. So if people yeah. wanted to see, like, stark differences in draft, uh, that's what they're bringing through this time, especially if they lock in the Soren. I mean, look, look at, at our kind of three laners uh, yeah. all set up to go the distance. Absolute team fight comp here. I just want to say I looked up Yagao's stats on the Vega. He's 13 and 4 over his career 76.5 percent win rate this is a pick that again it's not something he plays often but when he pulls it out the angles are good powerful lock in here for yagao in the mid lane scaling across the board for jdg and nip once again with a more proactive side of things thanks to that talia thanks to that nocturne a level six is going to be big for both teams with these junglers I mean, the, the name of the game is going to be proactivity for NIP, right? Especially on that top side where they're going to have Pryo with the rank side. They're going to be able to get Pryo in mid. They they have this jungle that they can enable. Uh, and really being able to steamroll the game, I, I think stacking up four dragons quite early is going to be something that we should look at for NIP. So where for JDG, it's about some of the defensive vision they can get down earlier on. Kanavi being able to spot out where Aki is and, and you know, prevent or, or defend against the aggressive plays that they're going to be looking for. See if they can defend it. I mean, JDG have been so good at defending. I think, like, it was the second game of the series where we saw them consistently yep. weathering the storm against the potential dives from NIP being able to clear those waves. See if they can replicate that kind of performance. Feels a little bit tense. NIP, again, against the ropes. If they could win here, push us to five, it would be truly something special to witness. Rookie once again on that Talia. But JDG changing things up and going old school, going slow, team fight focused, which feels like classic JDG to me. Yeah, I mean, right, this this feels like where JDG thrived. Hell, I mean, I'm starting to think, is this Flandre on top or are we going all the way back to Zoom with, with how much <laughs> this looks like those old JDG compositions? Man, I miss Zoom. I miss Zoom. Here we go. Game four. I mean, much if you replace mid jungle with like Zoe Graves, this is legitimately a 2020 JDG composition. Just yeah, takes literally. two, just takes two changes. Different roster, but uh, you know, as much as things change, they stay the same or something like that. NIP though, a bit more proactivity. And the Rex I top, definitely not something we see in 2020. Uh, Zeri also, uh, you know, believe it or not, not available in 2020. Yeah, so, uh, you know, sadly didn't have that. You know, back then it was all about the Aphelios, uh, Oh yeah, those good times. But I do got to say, I'm, I am a bit worried with JDG in terms of, again, this could potentially just really let NIP do whatever they want on the map. So a lot's oh. going to be down to that decision making. Still, though, we have seen where Nip can falter is the decision making in mid to late game. So if JDG do make it to that point, you, you really know yeah. that's where NIP can fall apart. I think, like, when you look at the compositions, like, NOP, it's not like they don't have scaling. You know, Zeri, Talia, they're perfectly fine going into the late game. You've got a tank top. It's not... Even the jungles kind of have similar MOs at, at different stages of the games. Um, it's not really just about that, though. It's also about, like, like you say, the decision-making we've seen from either team at different stages of the game. It does feel like JDG have been pretty comfortably the better late-game team out of uh, these two squads. Yeah, definitely having a better understanding, I think, of the map. We, we've seen them, especially Flandre, caring about side lanes in this game, just making sure they get a lot of that prep work done before they ever make their way onto objectives. But we need to see what junglers are doing right now. Kanavi starting towards spot, making his way up towards top. Not going to have a whole lot of options with where he can look to play because he has to be afraid of potentially being matched with the strength of NIP's early laners. And how, look, he knows he has that strength looking for the aggressive invade yeah. into this blue side jungle. Lucky found a solo kill early on in the series. He's on that nocturne, moves straight on in, forces Kanavi away. 
And the smite comes out from Kanavi. So at least forcing that smite. Flame Chopper's down, but Photic flashes away, but Joel caught up by the CC. Heal comes on through, and a nice W from Joel dodges the hook from Misty. Yeah, really nice from missing to, to just go forward so aggressively. Photic clearly having the respect and the fear there uh, that he could have gone down in Kanavi after having to run away from his wolves, coming down here and both jugglers much. We're, we're back to the Bakhtagon. We're back to the good old days. <laughs> the start of the split was all about the bot 3v3. And after most of the split kind of moving away from that, going towards scale and playing around grubs, now we are back. Kanavi on the bottom side, Aki. Trying to do this Grump. Kanavi doesn't have vision of the enemy jungler. He's just going to go for that crab. Yeah, you can see Missing just angling over to make sure uh, in case Aki had started to move over or maybe Joel starts to work his way towards that tri brush. You can prevent anything from going on. Shouldn't be that surprised with the trades going in favor of Rookie and Mid. They have been consistently in this series. You even expect them to, again, with the picks that Yigao has been leaning into. And which ADG, a lot of it's probably just going to come down to trying to, to, to stay even in CS. I mean, I guess we don't expect that much from Nip that early on anyway, right? Again, it's Paranoia yeah. and Weaver's Wall being those, hell, even the Quickness uh, being the three big tools for NIP. I can't help but chuckle every time the camera pans over Vagar and Yagao's there on the Leprechaun Vagar skin. It's like the, the skins that were made back in, I don't know, whatever, 2012 versus the skins that are made now. It's like a whole skin line and all of the animations have changed. And back then it's like, my guy's a leprechaun now. <laughs> like all of the spells are the same, but, but I'm slightly greener. I, you know, I, I also hope his logic is something like, it's lucky, or just that, you know, just, just something very basic. Who knows, maybe this is the skin he plays with every time and why it's why that win rate is so cracked. Yeah, the look of the Irish pulling him through. <laughs> Uh, our whole production team and striker <laughs> they, they just they can't believe their eyes they, i'm sure they're over the moon about this one yeah i mean is, is this it, cultural know... appropriation <laughs> <It> might be <laughs> okay bunch we got the grubs coming up i the grubs are up jugglers running into each other we see a gal going for went for the reset so he's gonna have to tp in but i don't really know if this jdg could force him off of this yeah kenami he throws up the emote but he didn't actually get the grub uh, forced away, and that will be Aki grabbing all three, I believe, as Kanavi went over to his wolves. Missing and Ruler trying to pressure in this bottom side. Minus CS lead for Ruler, but nothing too crazy coming out there. As it will be three groups taken by Aki. Drake still up on the map. JDG, Pings. Actually, no, Pings coming out from NIP on towards that Drake. Aki going to go for the reset now. You know, being up a bit in terms of XP. Going to have those two long swords. So they should have the window where they can just uh, start making their way down to start up this Drake. Hell, oh, Rookie, Rookie already here, Weaver's Wall. Runner are missing, could be in trouble. No flash available for missing. The hook doesn't land on the wall either. Knock up after knock up after knock up. And missing will fall. First blood for Photic and NIP start strong. And we've seen many times that Rookie's willing to give up waves in mid to make these plays. Does it here, takes advantage of a window where he knows Missing doesn't have flash uh, and just cuts off the escape route. This is why I was saying I'm, I'm was kind of afraid for JDG in terms of how much scaling they've leaned into. It's going to give NIP a lot of freedom. Rookie moves into this mid lane. Yagao has that flash available. Rookie sat in the baby cage. He's not going to be happy about that one. You know, he's going to be screaming for his mom in a second. Oh, we know that's smolder, not Talia. My bad. Uh, the baby cage, though, not, it's going to be enough to di dissuade the play onto the mid lane. Joel had roamed up two, but with the crab taken. And with uh, with Ruler resetting, maybe there's an angle for Drake, but maybe with Kanavi in the area, deciding against it. I'm surprised that they don't feel confident leaning on it. Maybe going to wait for the wave to get pushed down by Photic now, which while going for that reset. Like I said, in my mind, it should be one of NIP's win conditions is, is getting these started and stacked up as quickly as possible then, right? You're going to be pulling JDG into team fight even earlier, going to have that that window to where you can very easily get Aki and Rookie onto Ruler and Yigao. Yep. Rookie gets prior mid, can lean over towards that Drake. I think Aki has started it. I think he's pulled it out of the pit, if I'm not mistaken, on the minimap there. And it looks like not even needing the laners to move over either. There is a ward in the area. So it's spotted, I think, by JDG. Hard to say whether or not that ward can see it. They certainly know that the Drake's not in the pit. So it's 
Even if they can't see the Drake, they, yeah, they probably know what's going on. They also know that, you know, that Drake is not theirs. That Drake belongs to NIP. You can see Kanavi <laughs> reacting quite well. <laughs> Kanavi I start... really wanted you to eat your words there. <laughs> he did, but not going to be able to make it happen. I love that Kanavi immediately goes for the invade on top side. Doesn't overstay either. Aki making his way over, and hell, even Flandre having the information that, that Shanji started to move back. So oh. nice job of respecting those small advances. Rookie forced to flash out from the cage. Just a bit of a show from Kanavi is enough to force that summoner out. I feel like most of the laning phases of this series, Rookie has had his flash on cooldown. Like so many of these plays, managing to flash out of. But crucially, it's oh, been really the forge punished. Gone. Maybe we get it punished this time. The baby cage sets up the knockup. Look at the combo out from JDG. Kanavi grabs the kill. I'm so happy to see Flandre doing this too, because back in the day on EDG, Flandre was one of the best top laners at like moving down and helping out with mid lane. Again, you could just influence it from, from such a long distance with that call of the Forge God. And between yeah. that, the cage, the ult on Kanavi, like, my God, if Rookie ever walks up and, and isn't even hit by the cage, just in the middle of the cage, he's gonna have to either die or if his flash is up, flash every single time with how much distance that can cover. It's so frustrating to play against. Could be a Mikhail's angle, honestly, for, for Juo, just for anyone that happens to get caught by one of these stuns. Denying that potential follow-up CC chain could be invaluable. I don't know he goes for that, we'll have to find out. Missing, gonna be knocked up down in the bottom side. His hook was denied as well, so that's a flash out from the enemy Nautilus. Nicely played by Juo. Exactly right. Like you said, uh, we've seen Missing be on point with the hooks all series long so far. So the fact that Juo was able to shut that one down is massive. We can see now, though, Shanji finding Pryo on top side, which is leading to these grubs. JDG clearly wanting to stop this though with Ruler making his way over two. Is it gonna be four to two again? Kanavi into the pit, as you say. Uh, Ruler moving up and Flandre TPs to the bottom side. Surely that's enough for NIP not to contest this one realistically. They don't want that fight without their AD carry. So just making sure that the mites don't go through. And again, with a composition that, that might be able to, to start inching ahead a little bit sooner than JDGs are already sitting at a 1K gold lead. I think denying those mites, uh, if those pushes do start coming through, is, is a huge swing for them. And now you expect JDG's bot lane to probably sit up here for a couple of waves before they rotate back down before the next dragon spawns. And I'd be hoping to find an angle where they could punish the Aki being incredibly patient. Shanji trying to close some vision, missing steps on in. Knockup chain comes through, missing low on HP, but straight onto Ruler. Aki dives, Shanji along with him, and Ruler not long for this world. The Queen of the Void takes the kill. And now looking for more as Rookie flies into the play as well. They're snowballing the fight like crazy. NIP, they want this early lead. Flash comes out, Baby Cage, to defend the jungler. Great use of their window to make the play happen. The, the patience from Aki before looking for it now. Again, pushing the gold lead further even more. <laughs> and spreading, spreading the kills out across their carries, right? Rookie, Fotik, and Shanji all sitting at one apiece. I've seen the replay look, here. Yeah, it felt quite aggressive from missing, honestly, to check this. Yeah, clearly just not expecting uh, for this many members to be up towards the side of the map. I think they should have figured it out with, with how Rookie was leaning over and then Ruler just being left by his lonesome. There's really no counterplay for those dives as JDG. They're always going to be able to find access to the Jinx. Honestly, like the longer this goes, JDG's really only hope is going to be helping him peel off at least one find a kill to get excited and then be able to escape yeah. on his own. But we are a long way off from, from that being the play for JDG. And now we're at a point where uh, items coming out for Nip, right? Static Shiv already picked up. Shanji already having the Sunfire too. Yeah. I've got to say, people that came in say we want JDG to change attack. Uh, take it back. <laughs> I want to go back to the previous games because this is not it. They are falling so far behind now. This is the first uh, significant gold lead like this that we've seen from NIP today. Feels like they are really running away with things. Drake coming up in 35 seconds as well. And you just know it's got NIP written all over it. And that's why it was a surprising pivot by JDG to, again, lean so heavily. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, got forced to flash. Yeah, Event Horizon will keep him safe. 
in the end, but with a flash down especially, and rulers flash and cleanse on cooldown, missing with no summoners, Kanavi with no summoners. I mean, yeah. there's just no universe you're contesting this. Like, you, you can't do anything. You're not going to be fighting for the strike. If you start seeing them lean heavily towards one side of the map, you're going to have to back off. You could very easily get dove. NIP are taking turrets across the map. Like, this is going to start getting oh. out of hand. TP coming through. It, oh, I thought it was Flandre. It's not. It's Yagao. Flandre's on cooldown. Shanji is actually about to come off a cooldown. You don't want to commit to this fight, JDG. There we go. Shanji going to use his TP. Knock up lands onto missing. The flick back is there. Not only will they get the Drake, they get a pick on top. NIP really getting everything they want from JDG in this game. Their backs were against the wall and they're making it work. Izaki not even going to give a chance for that one to go over. Oh, there was a ward. Kanavi tries for it. No flash available for Kanavi. He's sacrificed his life. No, maybe he's got onto Fotic. I don't think anything's going to come up this one, but I'm wrong. Daki dives in and Rookie arrives. The Avengers have assembled and Yagao is Thanos in this one. Snap your fingers to that. Ends up going down. NIP find another one. I could empathize with what Kanavi was going for, right? Because if you can even deny one of these drakes, at least you're buying yourselves more time from, from that potential elder fight that'll go on later on. But we might not even get there at this point. NIP uh, really starting to build this lead up. Sure, Flandre is getting some alone time in topside. That really doesn't mean matter at all yeah. to NIP. Congrats, you've got a seven CS lead on Orn. Like, <laughs> it's not exactly going to win you the game, is it? My goodness, NIP off to the races. It feels like it took them two games, but they have woken up. Game number three goes their way. And now, game number four, way ahead of the curve on this one. Shanji's going to finish off this tier one in the mid lane as well, as Rookie uncontested down for that bot tier one. He doesn't have his TP available, doesn't have his ult available. So Herald should go the way of JDG. JDG going to be able to, to look for this one, but still... It feels like they're still waiting on opportunities. I mean, hell, we saw from the last strike, right? JDG aren't going to shy away from fights. But <laughs> actually much. <laughs> we might get another one right now. Aki doesn't have his own ultimate. Trying to steal it with a Q. Herald taking a missing spell shield on the hook. The Orn Horn goes wide as well. Rookie corralling into the mid lane. Ruler. Oh, that's, <laughs> that blue ward saving his life there. Rookie's desperate for it, flashes and finds Rolo as well. The cleanse does nothing and he's taken out of the picture. Shanji tanking for his team as Fotik is untouched and NIP just annihilate JDG to go through for Fotik and into the mid lane they roll. <laughs> this game is snowballing out of control so quickly. 15 minutes and we're already up to about a 5k gold lead like there isn't even anything we can see them transition this into because you, you've already taken Dragon, you've already taken all the objectives on the map, only that bot lane outer turret really being the only prize left for NIP. They're nowhere near it. So now it's going to be about getting resets to come out, playing for that. Is we actually see another item finished up for Fotic uh, right before we came out of this replay with the Runons now being done. They look for the engage. I, I think they, they know, right? Hey, Aki shouldn't have his ult up yet. This might be the timing we need. Call of the Forge guy doesn't connect. But once again, this man comes in and is an absolute hero for the side of Nip. I mean, I guess they were already winning this game. So maybe hero is a little bit too much of an over-exaggeration. But he starts the fight bunch. And starting the fight was all they needed to do. Yeah. Because again, why are JDG even looking for this? I mean, to be fair, he has been an absolute hero. Because look at his score. one one six right now. He's one assist away from being the Master Chief in this one. He's <laughs> had almost 100% kill participation. It's a fantastic Talia game. And I do think we're getting towards the point where the conversation has to start going into, do you ban both the Talia and the Ari against I... Rookie when he's able to make these things happen? I, I, I don't think that could really be the conclusion. I, I think it can be done, <laughs> right? Like, like he's been good on Talia, but this one, again, was the, the boldest JDG Look, draft to me. Giving so it's much away early. rookie. Everything is different. I don't care about what's actually happening. All I care about is my narrative. It's all rookie. You know, man, you know, and then he's going to lock in the Yasu on next game, and it's <laughs> yeah. not going to get any easier. It's like, you know, that's the thing, right? It's not going to get easier if you take him off of this. It's not. Like, Rookie's still going to be an absolute legend on anything else. It's nice to see the NIP bot lane, though, I think, really having a much better game this time around. I mean, Joel was already doing pretty well on the last game, but Fontic, especially. Missing hooks in on towards Aki. Spell shield, though. 
towards the Orn Ultimate. Blast going out to safety. They'll at least secure themselves their own red buff. It's the small wins at this point for JDG. You know what? You know what? Actually, I think about it more. I don't think they need to ban the Talia, but I'm sold. I'm sold. I don't need to see JDG <laughs> getting flamed again because of not banning picks that, that, that people want them to ban. So, or take it away. Again, that was one of the, the things that was said before this series, right? AD pointing out, yeah. hey, uh, I think it was Trouble who said, like, you, you know, Yigao plays Talia, plays it incredibly well, too. Like, yeah, you always yeah. can go back to that. Talia is one of the picks I like to see Yigao playing. So, definitely feels like it could be an option for them. I just want to point out as well, we've not really talked about Fotic this game. He's been pretty criticized as a player across this series. Uh, he's 5-0-0, and I realize he's on Zeri in the early game. A lot of this isn't just down to his own play. It's down to the setup from NIP. But the fact that you're hoovering up these kills as the Zeri this early in the game, the fact that you're at two items already as the scaling AD carry, it feels pretty good for Fotic. I mean, especially the fact that, again, to just be honest, like he was out of position in, in some of the, the other games. Hell, even the game they won, he was getting picked off. How's it happened this time? He's been, he's been able to be a consort, a consistent source of damage for his team in this game. And, and that's what that's what NIP need him to be able to do. And I mean, it does become a lot easier when you have so many people on your team jumping to the back line. But still, the fact that it's giving him the space and he is delivering with that damage is, is a nice boon for NIP. Eight to two. It's not a bad little scoreline. And do you know, at the end of game two, Lyric, I'd pretty much given up on NIP. I was kind of, uh, I was kind of ready to call it because it felt so one-sided in those first two games. But NIP, pulling it out, coming out of the woodwork in the end, and now with an advantage in this fourth game as well. I don't want to jinx anything. I don't want to say too much, but they are on soul point. And they are 5,000 gold up at 20 minutes into the game. This this is feeling a little silver scrapey. Oh, I definitely think it is. I mean, uh, it, it would be hard in my mind for an IP to not be able to pull this one over the line with, with how how hard it should be yeah. for JDG to actually be able to come out with a team fight win. You, you would need an overextension from NIP, which actually, as I'm saying that out loud, wait, that is always possible. <laughs> yeah, that is always, always possible, possible to come through. But if JDG how loses... hard we can jinx it? <laughs> this is an impossible loss for NIP. Uh. I do got to say, though, right? Like, if, you know, assuming that NIP do turn this into a win like they should, JDG really have to be kicking themselves, especially about game three. Last game, they were in a position where I think their highest gold lead was like five or 6,000 at one point in last game. It could have been a 3L. Could have been a 3L. But uh, weren't able to pull it across the line when, when it was going to be easy and now. Again, with, with yeah. the plan they came in with, with how NIP have approached this too, it really looks like we're going to five. And that is a position where I could not have imagined JDG ending up in. No, I don't think many people were predicting five games today. And I think almost everyone was predicting a JDG win, but NIP in the driver's seat here. Man, can you imagine if JDG were to lose this series? They've been kicking themselves. Rookie finds another flick back. That's half of Kanavi's health gone. Laser in onto missing as well. Baron is up on the map. And that's Kanavi sent packing. Honestly, NIP can just start this up. And it looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. We're going to see if they're going to be able to find their way in. Old at least will give them the information that this one's going down. But still, Kanavi committed to the reset. He's nowhere close. Looking for a pick, though. Not actually starting the Baron off. Well, they started it, but then peeling off again after the vision was there. Shanji. Somehow, they go right back to able it. To get they go right like back to it. Prio through the uh, through the Titanic Hydra there. Just one shot in the mini wave almost. NIP peeling off once more as Kanavi spotted on a ward, denying all vision. Is missing. Might have stepped a bit too far forwards here. Needs to be a little cautious. Oh, rookie just got spotted out. Oh, the flip back doesn't land and they flash onto him, but the Sonyas is going to protect him. Almost all the CC denied, but the baby cage is enough. And now a knockup denied from Shanji. Crook tunnels away. It's a pick, though, onto Rookie. A huge pick for JDG. And that was the discipline that we, we were talking about JDG had in game two, right? NIP were desperately trying to pull them into River, and they were going to section them off with that Talia wall with the angle that Rookie had. JDG weren't falling for it. And Rookie and NIP end up getting a little bit impatient, and it, it, it gives over the, the reprieve that, that JDG were desperately hoping for. Yeah. And a fumble like that, you got to say, it's a rookie mistake, Larry. It's a rookie mistake. <laughs> no. As uh, gets caught out in the jungle.
JDG, st I mean, like, let's be honest, one pick onto Rookie, it's not changed that much in the scheme of this game, but it has denied the Baron play because it's a minute now until Drake. Exactly, right? It, it, it's prevented the snowball from happening right now. Again, that ward coming in so clutch. They dodge out on it, and then I love it. You just have to full send it while his team is nowhere around. They really commit everything to making sure that the guy goes down. So they yeah. buy themselves a bit of time, but at the same time, do they really when they've been on this dragon timer the whole game? And that is, you know, that's going to come to a head in, in 40 seconds. Not to mention Rookie. He'll, he's picked up his Zonyas now off the back of using that arm guard in the previous play. I, I will say, that was one of the highest value stasis I've seen in a long time. <laughs> like, denies the Ornal, denies the Vile, denies a bunch of DPS. But then, yeah, I was playing the Vega, so <laughs> there's only so much you can do on that one. And now, we'll see. Potentially a last chance here, honestly, for JDG, because if an Ocean Soul goes over, I'm not sure you're ever killing this Rek'Sai again. I'm not sure you're ever willing Ooh. to fight again. Flash from missing. Yeah, Knavi staying off on the side. It looks like he's going to try and consistently keep pressure onto Rookie, but still, you just got to... It feels like Aki, Shanji, these guys are such a big problem for Ruler. It's going to be really hard to enter, and look, Rookie's still playing off to the side. Rookie's been caught out here. Does have that Zonya's available once more. Ornhorn lands onto the AD carry, though. Aki is just diving onto the back line. He's gone too deep on his own, though. Missing, traded, in kind as the rocket flies through. Photix still alive, and that's who you've got to keep your eyes on. Kanavi dives onto him, but he falls. He's not tanky enough, and Dwell survives on the opposite side. In they go as Shanji finds more. Four for Photix before he falls, and Shanji finishes the job. And I'd be coming out on top once again in the team fight that matters. Now even going to be able to get their hands on the Ocean Soul. Absolutely massive for NIP as they grab Ocean Soul. They grab a clean ace as well. Maybe not clean, but an ace nonetheless. I like the idea to once again just try to pinch your way on to Rookie, but it's like, all right, Aki ends up going in too far. He goes down. But still, Ruler and Yigao you know, never really get in a position to find damage on the Photic. After that flash comes through, Rookie's doing a great job of zoning him out, and it opens up for Photic to be able to do so much, especially once Shanji gets involved and starts bringing this fight forward. Things just got a bit too separated for how NIP would have liked to play the fight, and NIP, and especially Photic, took advantage. Yeah, Photic as well. Like, Flandre missed a knockup onto him early on in the fight. And with how low he got, honestly, that might have been the difference maker for the side of JDG, if he could have just hit that pillar. But either way, all items, it's important to mention, starting to come through. Flandre has his, and he's given over an improved Infinity Edge to Ruler. So we are entering that sort of scaling conversation in this composition. It scales like no other out of all three lanes. But does he scale as well as a 9-1-1, one, one, Zeri? I'm not so sure. That's the thing, right? He's, he's a he's a full item down. Hell, more than a full item down, because Votic also has two, you know, kind of smaller items components compared yeah. to Ruler's just one. So really ahead in every way that he can be. And now we're at a point where flashes are down, and flashes being down feels a lot more meaningful uh, for JDG with the dive that we were seeing. Again, Kanavi kind of functions in the same way, but it feels like there's more follow-up there for NIP side, and we're just gonna go straight back to the dance around the Baron and NIP hoping that they could pull yep. JDG out of their base. Feels kind of funny. It's NIP playing with the shadows, the ninjas in pajamas, as it were. Trying to, oh, that control ward's not denying the vision. They didn't see the ward though, so they They've got information on where that is, but the control ward, unfortunately, not quite deep enough in the brush. Won't matter. Photix still clears that vision anyway. Missing tries to move in. NIP start this Baron off. Playing with Fog of War. Trying to set up for something. Missing takes a chunk from Rookie. Using that Aegis just to keep himself healthy. Look at all the angles that NIP are playing in this fight. Like, Aki's far off to one side. You have Draw threatening another flank. Rookie waiting in the wings. So many different things that JDG need to worry about. They're so ready to dive onto Yagao or Ruler the second they get that opportunity. Then IP peel off of the Baron in the end. 
Not takes the trunk, and here we go. The dive comes through. Shanji is behind everybody. Aki gets into the mix, and he's just one shot. Oh. The Crit Bloom gets a healing as well, but Ruler's down. As Ruler, uh, Rookie pulled in. Kanabi next to go, and Fotik is untouched this entire time. Draw with a knockoff to protect his AD carry. It doesn't matter how good it looked to start off with. NIP, they demolish JDG. And Lyric, I think we might just be going to five. And I'd be pulling it back, really dismantling JDG and showing them, hey, you need more presence in the early game. You cannot allow us to have this much freedom. Phenomenal early game, phenomenal mid game from NIP and punishing this draft from JDG. We do not want any more draft adaptation. Thank you very much. That's enough cooking in this kitchen. NIP push us to five on the brink of a reverse sweep. We go to Silver Scrapes. And again, the story would be so insane. Game three, it looks like JDG's. It looks like it should be a 3-0. But JDG, they make one mistake. NIP, rookie specifically in that game, takes advantage, brings it back. And then have such a dominant game for everything on the line. We're down to a best of one. And it's kind of insane to think how we got here much. <laughs> It's crazy with how good JDG looked to the first two games. I cannot believe we're going to five games, but NIP, they have come alive. They have evolved over this series. And now I honestly have no idea how this one ends. We're going into a break. Do not go anywhere. You do not want to miss game five.
LPL with the Silver Scrapes playing in the background noise, you already know exactly what that means. NFP managed to win another one of their games, and with that, we're going to be sitting at 2-2 for both of these rosters. Coming in today, though, Alex, I was like, are we going to get a five-game banger? <laughs> and you were like, hmm, I'm not entirely sure, Ginny, but we did. You well, blessed us. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, at the start of this, you know, JDG had a 3-0 into a 0-3. They've not gone the distance just yet. They've not had a series this long. And, you know, NIP on the other side, they have played an awful lot of late, uh, of late games. They've had a five-game series. They've had a four-game series. They've had, you know, they've really gone the distance. They've gotten a lot out of this playoffs for themselves. And now we get the final distance, and we're either getting the brooms out for the reverse sweep, or we're broom breaking. Or both. Oh, both? You, well, can't, you can't do both. both. No, you can't do both. You can't. Someone it's either a reverse sweep or it's a broom breaker. Yes. It's one of the two. <laughs> Someone has to go home, right? Because it is elimination day. And I think that adds even more pressure to both of these rosters because NIP are sitting here absolutely incredibly proud of themselves for what they've achieved. And JDG might be kicking themselves and going, could have had it. Could have been a 3 0. I mean, I feel like for JDG, it would have been such a morale boost coming from a 0-3 series straight into a 3-0, showing what they can do in these teamfights exactly as they did in game one and game number two. However, NIP have been matching them toe-to-toe -to -toe in these teamfights. And even though we give a lot of credit to this guy on your screen right now with the back-to-back -back MVPs, I have, to give, I have to give huge credit to also the bot lane of NIP that stepped up massively. Yeah, Rookie coming through as the MVP once again i think he's been such a great instrument coming into this series we highlighted it early on but he has not fell short of any of these expectations and now we're at the point where folks last year jdg lost one best of five the entire year do you know how crazy that is in the playoffs uh, as rigorous as jdg when it's that kind of like level of competition they might be able to they might be losing their second best of five in two back to back that is how crazy the LPL um, kind of playoffs has been in terms of like punishing these you know, great organizations. No, it's not the same roster, but just in terms of like symbolically going from 23 to 24. I mean, Rookie being like the architect of their demise here as well. I really think that also, again, you were talking about the bot lane trouble too. I think that the unsung hero here is actually the fact that Rookie is in one threatening position, Photix on another threatening position. And it feels like, you know, JDG don't have all the tools to close down both carries they need to. Absolutely. And I feel like, especially since how pivotal Rookie has been in the early game, he has been the focus from JDG. Everyone is trying to pile up onto Ruby to shut him down. They forget about Fautic. Back to back two games. Now, Fautic was able to just free hit the entire time and resulted, like, especially when you have a Zeri pressing Q over and over again without it being checked out at all. Because everyone's was chasing Rookie, it resulted in NIP having these winning team fights that ended up landing them into that five game series. And before we even got to these winning team fights, Rookie had such an instrumental early game and that's something that we're going to be looking at but in general when we're looking at the goal difference over time and i had the reign of this game and did not let it go um yes however jdg there's a little bit of that that Critici criticism that was that were coming in from the test series where the, the draft just feels a little stagnant, it feels a little blunt, it, fe it feels a little bit boring, and it feels too much scaling. Scaling on the top lane, scaling in the mid lane, scaling in the bot lane, and just pretty much a jobless buy. Can I be just 
could not influence the map. And you know, uh, so Joe said this on Capture as well, Cast as well. Say so, like maybe they've just tried to change too much now. There is too like a, there's 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 a pendulum swinging back and forth in terms of how much yeah. do you change, how much do you don't. And I think what slipped the net in this one is the fact that you on the Vega. I think it works with the combo really well, yeah. but it doesn't work against Rookie. You don't get to keep him in lane. He gets onto the board really really quickly here as well. And you know the Vega, I I don't mind it in terms of a meta pick, but specifically against Rookie, it just doesn't work. We could actually queue up the next clip so we can see what we're talking about here as well. Um, a bit more in terms of the video on screen. Um, um, we see him get on the board very, very early, six minutes in on the Talir. He roams down towards bot lane, um, and things go from bad to worse there. I mean, you see, look at this um, the minimap here. Got plenty of vision on top side, and you're pushing him. So Shanji knows that he can, like, just push in and be there for free. But because that push on top side, you have the vision, and it means that Rookie gets to go down towards bot side, skirts around the vision, and uses ultimate get in there as well. So we keep playing the clip from this point. You know, you have full information from NIP. You have a ward in the tri brush. You know that Vi's not going to be able to fly off the wall. Rookie stood on a control ward. He has a clear path towards bot side as well all green lights are go. You have um, Draw being able to pull the trigger too. And the wave state is not good enough from JDG to bail them out of this. Rookie getting onto the map at six minutes because you're not getting hard traded on by Yagao. He's not on something like the Azir this time, which can keep the uh, Talir and lane easier at the early levels. It was absolutely disastrous. And then the second global start coming in as Aki starts to take over the reins. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like especially since after the first wave that you highlighted, Aki was able to take almost two waves in the mid lane, which landed him that level six super quickly. And then they started getting on the map much quicker than JDG expected them to. And I feel like it has been about playing through that bot lane for Rookie in particular, together with Aki. Not just shutting down Ruler completely, but also getting Fautic ahead has been the name of the game for this team for the past two games, and it's worked out wonders for them. And, uh, you know, I, the, the genre of League of Legends is often discussed quite a lot. We think of it as a strategy game, we think of it as a MOBA. When you get vision control, um, as a Talir and a Nocturne. Uh, the game is Horror Survival, where in fact, in this case, <laughs> NIP, they are the horror, and JDG were not quite okay, successful in the survival mode. league. If you think about it this right, you're literally sat there with like, you want like shaky camcorder going, oh God, I've got to look into the darkness, who's there? It's like playing Outlast it's really in isolation. Rookie, let's be honest. Yeah, it is. Rookie has actually just become like the Dead by Daylight kind of like, Yeah, it's just point. like showing up and scaring everyone, but it was like, when you look at JDG, there were a couple of instances where they had wards available, and for a split second, just one pixel from Rookie was available, and they were able to punish him for that. But all in all, in general, Rookie has been playing so incredibly well from just the shadows, so to say, that it's a really scary opponent to be going up against. And we had a point in terms of NIP. Can they replicate their success? And it feels like they have. Yeah, somehow they managed to. I think this case, this one I would put a little bit towards what's happening with JDG in terms of the draft. We've covered that pretty extensively at this point, but you cannot fault the fact that NIP's team fighting has been miles different from even the first few games in this series. I think particularly the double carries of, um, of course, Fotik and then Rookie as well have done really well at separating out so they can't both get caught in the engage. And now we're at a point where, you know, we are genuinely wondering whether it's JDG not just top three and locked out of top two, but locked out in top four. I feel like for JDG as well, they, they were usually so good at stalling out the game to get to these team fights, get to their item break points so they can shine in what makes them the best. I feel like there were a few clips right there when you highlighted Rookie going towards the top of the map, their jungler was backing, Kanavi was resetting, and Ruler was trying to crash a wave under tower without any information on where enemy jungle is or enemy mid lane is. So I feel like throughout the series, they have gotten a little bit sloppy in terms of pushing a little bit too far and getting caught out by somebody who's been playing like an absolute psychopath the entire series. And talking about this, Talia might be a huge point of contention for the draft. And this is the final game of the series. Loser goes home and stays on holiday until well, summer split and the winner gets a chance to be potentially in MSI if they do man manage to get into top two. So let's head over to our casters for the final game of today. We have Munch and Lyric to queue up this banger. Thanks very much, G. Thanks very much, guys, on the desk as well. We are ready to get into game number five. You're absolutely right, Ginny. Whoever wins this one keeps their dreams alive of MSI. But before that, they keep their dreams alive of winning that Silver Dragon Cup. That's what's at stake here, because BLG and Top Esports, potential next opponents, and these two squads want their opportunity to challenge them. Yeah, and I mean, for JDG, again, as an organization, after after winning in 2023 summer, after winning in spring, after winning in 2022 summer, like, they've experienced so much winning. Now to potentially go out in fourth would be yeah. such a step down for the organization. 
And I think on that point, it would also be such a sad way for the series to end for JDG, for this series to be the end of their back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back win streak after they were 2-0 up, and I'm not going to lie, kind of through the third game. That would really be heartbreak for JDG. They still have one last chance to redeem themselves, but they're up against the Ninjas in Pajamas. This is the furthest this team has ever made it in playoffs since the rebrand. And we'll see if this can be their moment. If they can make it into top three, it truly would be something special. I mean, right, and then, even if they go in as heavy underdogs against either BLG or Tez, all you need is is one off day, or hell, maybe not oh. even a whole off day like we're seeing from JDG. You just need three off games. <laughs> just need three off games to be able to find it, or, or three mistakes to then be I able mean, to take advantage, turn the game in your favor. Like, you wouldn't need that much to make it to oh. MSI. They took one game off of BLG already. At the end yeah. of the day, like, they were the underdogs coming into their series against FPX. <laughs> the underdogs against BLG, they still took a game. Now underdogs today against JDG. What's the difference between <laughs> being underdogs against BLG or top esports? Their entire playoffs have pretty much been underdog stories. Even WE went the distance. It does feel like NIB have been tested across the course of this year, across the course of this playoffs. And you know what? We talked a little bit about Rookie in 2020, denied Worlds by LGD, an LGD roster that went on a run and miraculously made it to the international. It feels like maybe NIP could make a similar run this year. Yeah, and now it's all going to come down to this draft. Things we got to see again. Do JDG take away the Talia? Something that I think is a little bit under the radar from the last two games. We didn't talk about much. The Rakan, right? NIP picking up both of their wins with that Rakan, I think really supplementing and, and enabling them to have easier access to engage and ways to start fights. I think that's something we need to be keeping our eyes on for NIP, and it seems JDG, they actually aren't going to take the Talia away. They're just going to outright ban it, but that does leave yeah. the Rumble open, something that JDG appeared, and bam, actually both things taken care of. I'm kind of impressed by JDG with the adaptation coming in. It does leave that Rumble open, as you say, though, and a big smile on Rookie's face as they ban the Talia as well. A lot of respect given over to the NIP mid laner. That A-Soul could be terrifying. It's something he's fallen back to in other series where the Ari and Talia were banned against him. But Shanji goes for the Rumble. Not too surprised to see that one. And now I'm actually just interested to see what JDG end up locking in alongside it. The, the whole priority is changing for JDG, right? A lot of times it's been about getting their dual lane very early. This time, going for the jungle, going for topside. So a lot more aggression from JDG in these first three picks. And again, I love that Rakan takeaway. But NIP, Shanji's on something strong. They have really strong team fight tools themselves with, with these first three picks. They certainly do. Pick potential as well with the Nautilus fight coming on through there. This feels like a reasonably even start to the draft. Obviously, Shanji being on comfort, being on a pocket pick is definitely valuable for NIP. See what Flandre can do on that wreck side to try and weather the storm against the Rumble. But now we're going into the second ban phase. AD carries both unpicked so far. So we could get into a weird draft here when it comes to AD carries. But instead, mid lane bans away from Yagao, the form of the Nico. Wouldn't be too surprised to see the Annie as well. Yeah, I think mid lane bans for both sides make sense because Rookie also is willing to pull out some, you know, like more niche picks, things like the LeBlanc obviously being more niche right now and really falling out of the meta. You would have things like the Yone and the Yasuo, which, which he's played before. I wouldn't expect the Yasuo this game, depending on, you know, what Yagao does, but you have AP and Topside. So, like, there's a lot of flexibility for what yeah. Rookie could still end up going, especially if they decide to save his pick for last. So that Nico gone, the Annie gone. We'll see if the Assault does get found away. Things like the Huey as well, things like Azir, the really earlier in the split. I mean, Karma as well. I mean, especially for JDG, Karma, absolutely an option alongside that Xin Zhao. Feels like these picks that have been absolute power picks across the course of this year, just sort of being ignored. There's also things like the Tristana, Tristana. mid lane yeah. that yeah. has kind of been ignored this series. Exactly, and like that would, again, give you some prior to be able to play with around mid lane. You know you already expect to be strong in topside. I think would give a lot of options over, but I like this. We're talking about a lot of the mid lane possibilities, but saving it for last pick when Yagao still hasn't showed what he's playing yet, and Rookie oh, has been oh, the oh, staple oh, oh. of your composition. Okay, we get it. Ruler Zaya locked in for game number five. He's got his own damn skin for the champion, and you know he's going to show up. The Azir comes through for Yagao as well. And finally, what do we get? 
from Rookie. He's hovering the Diana. Yeah, we've, we've, all, we've already up. seen this come out from NIP in the jungle. Haven't seen it come out in mid again. It, it's been uh, showing its face more and more. I haven't been a huge fan of it, so I like the idea of going somewhere else. I know the world loves to complain about the Corky versus Azir, but this actually isn't really something that we see in LPL no. all that much. So uh, going to be brought out here, NIP. Ah, oh, it's a lot of damage the longer this game goes on, especially, but a lot of AOE going to be there between the package and the equalizer. For JDG, a lot more stable than last game in my mind, having uh, some laners that are, are going to have an easier time and have more self peel and defensive tools available to them, as well as Kanavi now finally getting his hands on the Zijiao. Now, after such a chaotic series, we go to game five, and we get Zeri versus Zaya, Corky versus Zaya, scaling in our carry lanes, but the rumble for Shanji certainly could be a catalyst for action in one of our three lanes. You can hear Silver Scrapes behind us here as we head to game number five. And remember, JDG were 2-0 up in the series. They were the heavy favorite coming into the series, but NIP have pushed them the distance. And now we head into game number five, and it feels like the draft reasonably even too. Yeah, feels like it could go either way. You have some signature picks coming out too, like Shanji and the Rumble. So maybe even, again, different people on NIP are gonna be able to step up in this last game to try to shut JDG out. We'll see if they can make the magic happen. It truly would be a ridiculous win here for NIP today to find that reverse streak, the reverse sweep, if I can speak. But it's JDG, they've won the last three splits of LPL. Yes, they had roster changes, but they had roster changes after that first LPL win. It didn't stop them winning. They want to keep that streak alive. They want to earn the right to fight in the lower bracket. It's absolute chaos in there, Lyric, and I don't blame him because it's game number five. JDG and IP. So many storylines to talk about. The fact that it's back to back to back for JDG. The fact that Rookie is trying to make it to an international. The NIP are the underdogs making a bracket run. But at the end of the day, it's a game of legal ends. It's a best of one. And we've got to talk about how Kanavi and Aki are going to approach this early game. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because both might be incentivized to, pl to play around topside. Uh, for NIP, I mean, you have the Rumble, obviously has the strong aggressive trades he can go for with that Flame Spitter, and then looking for the Overheat uh, for some of the extra damage when you just go in for those autos. But the Rumble also has no Flash. We see Shanji just, just rocking with the Ghost Teleport. So that leaves him very exposed to ganks to come through for Kanavi. You have CC on both Flandre and him, so it would be very easy to set up for a gank and even look for repeat attempts, right? Botlane should be able to fare fine in the 2v2 on its own. You already mentioned getting Ruler on the Zaya. Uh, it's, his, it's his third most played, has a about a 70% win rate on it. So it's actually highest out of his most played champions. Like this is a champion to know where Ruler can deliver. And after having a bit of a, a slower season, you know, wasn't really the superstar taking over games. This champion is where he yeah. needs to deliver. He's on his own skin as well. Like, you really can't ask for more in a game five, can you? We've been listening to Silver Scrapes. We're ready for action. And we get Ruler locking in his World Championship special of that Zaya. Expect some fancy footwork coming out from him across the course of this game. So far, level two spike for Ruler and missing, trying to zone away focus control in that bottom side. But Yagao doing reasonably well in that mid lane. And look at that win rate for Kanavi on Zin Zhao this year, 11 and one. Yeah, and I mean, again, even looking at missing with the seven and oh. And again, especially after you were losing on that both times, it's great to see JDG get on champions they're more comfortable with. Uh, and again, that champions that can work relatively well together. We can see on the mini map though, Kanavi making his way over. Looks like he's just gonna end up stealing away these Raptors, but Aki not even gonna catch a whiff of it. Aki, I don't know if he could see that ward, but I don't think he would have been able to. Flandre's oh. in trouble! Shanji looking for more! The ghost procced! But the tunnel will keep Flandre alive one auto away. <laughs> this is what we said right This, This is a game where other members of NIP can step up. His rookie has to flash so early. JDG clearly, clearly wanting to put a lot of stock into shutting this guy down. 
I swear, Rookie's Flash has been on cooldown more of the laning phases of this series than it's been available. It's constantly being threatened by Kanavi. It's just they've not been able to follow up on it later on. Aki now testing Kanavi, seeing if he wants to go for that fight, but he knows he's got Shenji in the wings, and it will be. Aki grabbing that top side. Scuttle Crab. My goodness, this already feels tense with some of these laning matchups. Flandre's got to be cautious on how he approaches Shanji. It's crazy, though. And again, how much this champion just able to sustain itself back up and, and be just fine? Not even having the way steep E to, to come back to lane or anything like that after the heavy trading came through. Is he a gal now? Gonna be fine. Yeah, not the greatest dash ever, but still does enough. Gets the shield. Photic just a millimeter away from those feathers. That could have been a little disastrous for him, but he'll be okay. Juo looking to get aggressive. Aki's in this bottom quadrant going for the Scuttle Crab. Photic and Juo very happy to be aggressive off of it, denying a cannon. Doing a nice job of playing aggressively around this side of the map when their jungler is over here. I mean, it looks like they might even just be setting up a play for Aki. He's doing the Krugs right now, but can very easily turn this into a gank bot if, if they stay extended for too long. There is a ward in Tribrush, but realistically, does that save you? Soman is going to be used here. Dwell with the aftershock, keeps himself alive. Forced to flash. Now Ruler trying to escape. Ghost already used. Flash available Ooh. as the knockback onto missing blocks. Aki forced to flash himself and is followed. Fotik dives in and Aki gets first blood. They're able to find one down in bot. Sadly for Ruler, not enough feathers to get out to try to find a root under tower and maybe equalize it. It did look a little bit dicey for a second for NIP, but they managed to get the kill through. Immediately, Kanabi going to take this opportunity and go for the Drake. Knows that the resets have to come on through from the side of NIP. Unfortunately, they're waving a really awkward spot for Fotik. He can't really step up to crash it. He can't really base and just leave this frozen. So he's got to stick around. Can't spend that little bit of gold. Yeah. And the silver lining being, you know, Ruler didn't have to blow his flash in that play. NIP using all summoners in bot lane. So now the potential for a gank from JDG to take advantage of that is open. We know Yagawa's going to be able to keep pressure up in the mid lane. Rookie going to have to be a little bit more conscious now that he doesn't have a flash. So I definitely think even though right now these plays have led in favor of NIP, the setup has been there for JDG to, to start making some aggression plays of their own. Pings on towards that bottom side is Chanji just going to crash another wave up there. Flandre, unfortunately. Ah, the laser denied by Ruler, blocking the cannon. Revenge for the earlier cannon that Photic denied from him. As, uh, it's already getting personal between the AD carries. Cannon, like, you, know, you can kill me, you can kill my team, but take it by cannon minions. That's not acceptable. Jungle is both coming into the bottom side as well. Aki forced out by that of Kanavi. Yeah, I think Aki reading it well, right? Again, Fotik using all of his summoners in that play to help Aki find that kill. So Kanavi wanting to try to take advantage and set up a gank of his own. Aki just waiting in the wings, dissuading that from happening, and now finally going to allow for... Actually, no, not even to commit to the reset. Like you said, the wave just being in a really awkward spot for NIP since that went down, and it's allowed for Ruler to start getting ahead. You expect Fotik to be able to equalize that one here, but... JDG just gonna be able to translate up to the top side and start taking these grubs. Yeah, I was amazed to see the recall even being channeled there from Fotik. Now he'll go for the recall after soaking up that wave, like you say, evens the CS numbers a little bit. Andre returns up to that top side. Shanshi scaring them both away in a 2v1 here. Just walks forward like, these are my grubs. This is my territory. Ghost Ghost use towards Kanavi. Equalizer in the choke and Kanavi forced to flash away. Yeah, nice getting a sum out from that. You're not going to uh, let him get that last grub. Still, JDG finally the one to pick up the first set of grubs, and JDG haven't really cared about taking these so far this series, so that might even be enough for them. Might give them more tempo to play around bot side when the next spawn does come through. But for NIP now, having the ult on the Vi is going to start allowing for some of these kill threats to come through. We can even see him invading on the top side. Missing just about diving away there. As uh, Aki has found Kanavi in this top side. Obviously, Shanji knows someone does or anything, but I don't think it matters because there's no flash. And Shanji finds himself his first kill of the game. And honestly, NIP, they make the picks look easy. Yeah, I love uh, the plan coming out from the old OMG duo, right? Uh, Aki waiting around, knows the flash isn't there from the equalizer. And you just wrap around and make your way into the enemy jungle, knowing that. Uh, 
the aggression was already being tempered on the bot side by your own dual lane. So NIP doing a nice job of not only covering their bases in bot lane, but also making these aggressive excursions up the top. This lame kingdom bot, by the way. 10 CS lead for Ruler, and the wave is pushing towards him. He's denying so many CS from Photic. This is why you love to see Ruler and Missing on your scoreboard. Because, my God, they're just so good at the game. And I, I will say, this split has not been their split in terms of the 2v2. They've not really been one of the 2v2s we're really looking to as the absolute premium in the LPL this year. But it feels like... Right now in this game, finding that individual lead on absolute comfort for both players. Yeah, and I kind of want to expand on that. We'll see if I could, though, with Hockey being forced out. I don't think JD should be able to do too much based around this. Should just end up having the back off, especially with Rookie now not even showing in mid. It's going a little so bit weird bad. there. It kind of unreset while it was basically under tower. Aki going to be able to clear the vision. It's going to be a smite fight for the Gromp here. And Aki just strolls on in and takes it. Denying Kanavi. And even with the move over from Yagao, nothing too much going to happen on this bottom side. But yeah, I want to go back to that point about Ruler, right? Because one of the big things about JBG's dominance last year was, you know, even if there was still a lot of back and forth on how Ruler would play like mid game or like find impact in team fights, or see, sometimes we cut out, the laning was always there from Ruler and Missing last year. They were just really one of the dominant 2v2s, able to come out with a lot of CS leads. Hasn't been the case this year. It's been Elkanon, it's been Jackie Love and Mako, really being the ones coming through as like lane dominant 2v2s. So it's nice to see in this final game that, that the JDG bot lane defaults to comfort and, and are able to show us that again. Because I was wondering, yeah. hey, is it is it still there for JDG's bot lane in this meta? Feels like it absolutely is. And I love the amount of presence that Kanabi's had on this bottom side just to essentially isolate this 2v2. Aki's been trying to get in and, and deny this extended 2v2 from happening. And Kanabi's never really like moved into the lane properly. He's just been there to match Aki and say, no, no, they're 2v2ing. <laughs> Ruler and Mystic get this 2v2. And you can see a 20 CS lead has been built off the back of it. Yeah, and Fonji's done a great job of really not even getting pressured in top lane. Is down a little bit of CS right now, but is it going to care? And hell, look, Flandre's actually making his way over for this Drake. So JDG very clearly wanting to prioritize this one. Shanji has no TP and no equalizer. Yeah, so opportunity for Shanji to get some tower plates, and he's just got to hope that the rest of his team uh, is on board with the fact that this is not a Drake that they can contest. There's a wave under the tower in the bot side as well, so you don't really anticipate much coming out from NIP here. However, Fantastic. they're still looking. That control ward reveals that Flandre's there. Surely at this point you don't fight, but maybe they do. Hooks go in. This is a 4v5 that NIP has signed for themselves, but Shanji has roamed on down. It doesn't matter though, because Votic's already gone. One for one now as Rookie chased down by Flandre. Shanji just going to burn him up, but Flandre's so difficult to finish a kill on. The flash for the knockup, the dive on in from Drew, oh. and he actually turns it around. One for one from Flandre. Yeah, it ends up being a two for two overall. That was incredibly chaotic. But we do see Rulers getting more free time oh, with this turret and bot, more plates going over. Again, a good thing for NIP is Shanji being the one to pick up a lot of those kills in top side. And he's even doing uh, those objectives up towards top right now himself. So gonna pick up a few more grubs. We'll see how many he gets. Actually only gonna be able to get one before backing off. But yeah, a lot of gold going over to both sides, just different parts of the map. Yeah. Similarly to the other games in this series, though, two grubs denied. This time it's NIP denying them. Typically, it's been JDG with only the two grubs. But regardless, there will not be any void mice in this one. And it feels like this is a split map in terms of gold leads, right? You've got Shanji in the top side, 20 CS lead. In fact, slightly more 30 CS lead up there, as well as a couple of kills. Same for Ruler down in the bottom side. And this is all just so strange. The engage comes off on a missing hook. He's actually going to jump right into Flaudre which uh, I think as a Corgi is not where you want to be, so he has to get away by himself. But where JDG Duel is here, Missing finds access to Photic. He's left by himself, uh, and that's how JDG are able to get one. This looked a little bit crazy from Flandre, like, all right, buddy, you guys have gone one for one. You killed the enemy to carry. You did enough. I can't believe he was uh, able to find this return kill on Aki. Aki taking a couple of tower shots there, just went a split. Uh, a split second? What? Went just a millimeter too far in starts tanking up the tower. Importantly, Yagao going for damage on this Azir as well, which I'm really glad to see. Not going for that grass build, going pure damage. And yeah, look 
at Shanji's scoreboard. Look at Ruler's scoreboard. Ruler getting a bunch of plates as well. 30 CS lead. Same story for Shanji in the top side with a couple of kills on top of it as well. Flandre, you may have a bit of MR, but <laughs> you got to withstand a storm up here. Yeah, I mean, now, I mean, having that haunting guys is going to be doing dealing huge damage. I mean, hell, even just almost being able to finish his Leandris outright, even having the Oblivion Orb to, to prevent yeah. the sustain, like really being in a position to where the Rek'Sai shouldn't be much of an annoyance. But and Auntie it's worth, wanting it's to worth be... mentioning that as well, right, is that the boots are already finished, and Shanji, it looks like, yeah, he's not completed an item, but the, the gold value of his inventory versus that of Fladre is massively favoring Shanji. I mean, hell, now actually finishing up the Leandri, so now it really is going to show through. I mean, Flandry's going to have a reset of his own right now, but he actually, he bought that, that Hollow Radiance not too long ago, so we shouldn't really have that much more. Maybe he has enough to upgrade his boots. Yep, there it is. Merc Tread's going to come through. And now eyes are on the Herald. JMG already have Cryo in topside, but Shanji's Equalizer is going to be back up, and that really feels like the tool you have to feel threatened by. At the same time, though, you don't have to worry about a package right now. So, uh, really, Actually, this would be, be the best window you have. It's a really good point as well that uh, you've got both the equalizer and the package. Like, in the right fight, if they get JDG in a jungle choke and both of those oh, come no. down across the team, good lord, you think you've seen a red carpet before? My god, they'll set the entire rift ablaze. Flandre going to be forced away from the tower in the bottom side as Fotic will get some time on this one. Similar positioning on the top side, but it's for the Herald here. This ruler will finish that one off and move back towards that mid lane. Fotic finishes off the tier one on the bottom side after denying just a couple of extra minions. You know, I kind of want to go back to your choke point point because even <laughs> having point, the point. double, <laughs> even having the double just makes a, like so much more things threatening than before. Like. Pretty much every entry point of river, right? Because even one tradition that shouldn't be that punishing, like around Raptor Pit, because there are like multiple ways you can maneuver around those walls. Now it's like, no, you could even just drop the ults and like, well, the rumble ult in the package in like an X-shaped formation. And it's yeah. like, there's nowhere you could go. There's there's absolutely nowhere safe to run. You are just even, burning to death. Even just parallel to one another is yeah. like, you just cover the entire area. I mean, River is a choke when you've got two of them. <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when we get to the team fights. I'm certainly excited to see what NIP have cooked up for us with this composition. And also, I'm just excited that Shanji gets a signature for this game number five. A lot of playoffs have seen him on this Renekton. and a lot of playoffs have seen him in matchups that are pretty tough to have an impact on. And he has been a player that's been a little criticized. Today, he's been looking pretty damn good, and he gets rumble for game number five. It feels like a fantastic way to Ooh. either finish your playoffs or kick off the miracle run. I got to say as well, like, as, as a series that felt like it, it should have been taken by JDG, yeah. once when we come into game five and I see a rumble, I am, I'm feeling scared. Yeah. JDG, because if there's a pick, you know, Shanji's going to deliver on it's this. And then you have the scaling to match with things like the Corky and the Zero. You have decent ways of preventing dives with that equalizer, like like we just saw. Like, there's a lot of tools with what JDG has, but Rook's Speaking being... of dives, Rookie's in trouble, knocked under the tower. Tower immediately eradicated. And it's an easy, easy pick for JDG. Rookie really overset me. No, and I like it too, right? They had actually hoped to make this play only a minute ago up against Shanji. Wasn't able to come through because of the equalizer. Doesn't expect JDG to still be waiting in the wings in this area. They are. Now pick it up and now great control in yeah. topside jungle. They might even look for more. Thank God they're not. Fladre is backing away. Yeah, they will uh, decide against pushing further. Which did feel like it could have got a little dicey for them. But still, getting that tower crucial, getting the kill crucial, and now evening up the gold difference. NIP got the most recent Drake on that bottom side a minute ago. Things were two and one in Drake's. It's a very even game right now. And I'm so glad for game five. Me too. Really like the old start coming out from Kanavi in this play to just push him even further, really give him nowhere that he's able to go and take that one. On for Kanavi, really feels like deserving to make this push so it's, it's kind of crazy though right because it really feels like both teams that have have been anchored or highlighted by one player yeah. uh which you know is no you know both rosters have amazing players across the board right we've seen people like flandre step up this playoffs we've, we've seen the moments from draw and shanji but really looking cannot be the center point <sighs> you go, though 
has ult for ult in the uh, bottom lane right now. TP's available. Yagao still having that flash, though. So overall, Shanji not really winning the trade. The fact it cost him his ghost, too. Yeah, I, I'd agree. And even though the Azir ult, I think, is incredibly important, especially to be able to lock someone down and just like commit to being able to find that pick or if you need it for peel i feel like the rumble one is even more significant to nip's draft than the emperor's divide because you still have other ways to, to make things happen knockup comes through onto aki here as a hook lands onto kanavi as well nip not going to give up control remember no equalizer here so shanji doesn't have a lot of his powers missing gets the knockup onto three and gets out with his life as well shanji trying to chase but in the meantime rulers on the backside he's flanking on zaya oh. and he's making it look good Fotic chased out of the fight dashes oh. on the wall but ruler is having none of it one v one me bro shanji now chase out the bottom side of the fight his yaga wants a little bit more as well there's nowhere for shanji to run jdg individual playmaking turns it on its head i am so impressed ruler there running two of them down aki and Fotik. he was left by himself but he was still able to come out on top again he picks zaya he picks his skin this is what you need to see absolutely dominates the laning phase he's 60 cs up and then walks up and 1v1's voting as well how often do you see a flanking zaya win a fight right it, it's insane the nip wanting to start the fight because missy being so far forward he's on rakan you're able to do that and they instantly realize hey there's no equalizer we can go for the pivot but this blows my mind like ruler is by himself and still, NIP having to run away, not feeling confident and, and looking to fight him, as we're going to get to see how uh, Shanji brings Kanavi down. And man, just just the damage being there from the Leandris. Like we said, he also has the Oblivion Orb to prevent some of the healing that would be there from the Xin Zhao otherwise. And I mean, he just had no chance from here. You guys just having to wait for the cooldowns to be able to finish him off. <laughs> Those basic auto attacks from his here really, <laughs> really hit the mark there. <laughs> Talk about 4 to 100 health. But oh, man, Ruler coming into game number five. Way more than 10 CS per minute on this Zaya. Absolutely smashing them in the fight. Perfect mechanics using his ult to deny uh, Aki's own ultimate and then using the feathers to force the flash out from him. Chasing after Photic. I mean, you could not ask for more. Beautiful fight out from JDG. And now it means they're the ones with a gold lead. It's only a thousand in their favor. But with Drake spawning in 20 seconds, they could threaten Soul Point. Seems like Rookie, though, waiting right now for the package. And IP having everything they need to fight this. Photic doesn't have Flash, but neither does Ruler. So very similar tools on both sides. Again, I think a lot's going to come down to the package and the equalizer. The placement from Shanji and Rookie is going to be key. Let's see if they can lay down that red carpet. Rookie with the package available as Aki tries to threaten some of this vision control. NIP losing Pryo off mid, but still trying to hold on to river control anyway. They have some poke there with the Corgi Hell, even the Zeri a little bit. That's what they're trying to rely on for now, but nothing has been connecting on the JDG. Dwarves pretty far forwards there. Does walk over towards the rest of his team. I think we might just 50 50 this Drake, to be honest. It's 3.5k. Is in they go to start the fight. Keep your eyes out for the package here. As everyone dives in, Aki onto the back line as well. Everybody diving on, but Rookie's been found by Yagao. One for one now. There's two go down, but it's a mid laner for support. That's pretty damn good. And at this point, Dwarves got nowhere to run to. The shield comes through at the last possible second, but it's Flandre to finish another JDG. The team fighting is too much once more and now jdg Flandre clearly gonna be the one to finish off otip you can see pinks coming out on the opposite side for the baron so yeah i got basic auto attacks it's, it's okay. just too much in the, in the same spot too is the best part now everyone from jdg running up to baron the team fighting is there and look at Yagao, 6-0 on two on his ear. Again, the carries of JDG finally showing up in yeah. this game five. Yagao's yeah, Azir today has looked phenomenal. And let's take another look, because NIP, they felt a little split. They didn't feel like they were on the same page on the play. No, and we can see here, again, like you said, coming down the 50-50, the ults come out, but Rookie leaves himself in no man's land. No one else other than missing, you know, went far enough forward to really be punished. So 
Yeah, just kind of left in that awkward stance. So now Yagao getting so much value from the position that Rookie was playing uh, from earlier in the series. Twin NIP fights in game three. And now with them running for Blondry getting the double knockup, it is just so nice for JDG to be able to finish this one out. Magnificent fight from JDG. So well punished on Rookie's equalizer. Is it equalizer? Uh, package. Uh, pretty yeah, much similar. is. They're very similar. <laughs> but now 10 to 6. Massive gold lead off the back of that 5,000 in favor of JDG. Ruler has been found, still has that flash available, looking for Aki, doesn't quite get the feathers, but the damage is there anyway. And Aki just about gets a heal from the Sundered Sky. He walks away, knock up lands. Can they finish the job? Finally, Flandre knocks him down and missing gets out the bottom side of the play. Rookie and Fotic protected by Shanji here, but Juo has been found on the opposite side. JDG, they're picking NIP apart. They're keeping their opportunity alive in this bracket. Missing, surviving the onslaught from Rookie as Kanavi zoning Photic away. I love what JG are doing. Again, like you said, zoning them away, running them down, just giving them more time to open up the base. How far does JDG want to push it? They want to keep going, Munch. JDG have won the last three splits of LPL, and they will not let this be the moment that they're denied. They can't quite finish the game just yet. Mid inhib taken, one Nexus Tower taken. JDG sent away, but an 8,000 gold lead. Jin Dong poised for victory in this best of five. Exactly, 8K gold up. They still have another minute left on Baron. You can tell NIP, they're in a desperate situation. They were hoping they could find the pick they need onto Ruler, dropping the equalizer with Aki going forward, but Ruler had the ult, was able to peel himself away. <laughs> It looked dicey. It looked like Aki might be able to get away, but they throw everything in the kitchen sink at him. You can even see the minimap Yigao wrapping around to make sure that Chua has nowhere to go. Uh, again, like this really being NIP zone destruction, but you had to make the play, right? You can't just let yourselves bleed out as this push comes through. And again, it feels good for JDG to, to find their way yeah. forward when you said this has been, it's been the last few years of JDG would feel a bit underwhelming if they went out now, but the NIP, the, the Cinderella story, the comeback almost being made true. Still, still not down and out just yet, but 7K gold deficit is going to be a tough one to play from. They've been the most dominant organization in the LPL since, I don't know, maybe 2020. I don't know if that's quite accurate, but feels it anecdotally at very least. It would be devastating for them to come out in fourth here, but it doesn't feel like that's going to be the story today. It feels like they want a rematch. They want another opportunity to push forward in the bracket. Flandre tanking a tower shot. This draw is just wrecked by Yagao on the bottom side. 12 to 6, and the siege continues for JDG. And you know, the nice thing for JDG is it doesn't matter who they play in the next match. There's a rivalry there. It's either the JDG Tez like rivalry that, that has existed between these two teams for so long now, or it's the Gal versus Knight rivalry yeah. uh, going against BLG. So and really uh, JDG versus BLG again, like all of last year. Yeah. So it really for either way, it feels like it feels like JDG has scores to settle with both. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. When you look at the storylines in the next stage of the bracket, does feel a little bit like destiny <laughs> that JDG makes it in there. It feels like, well, I mean, we all know how much I love a good narrative. Uh, JDG definitely chock a block on those, but NIP, if they could make it back after going to five games, after losing the first two, coming back miraculously, getting to game five, surely it doesn't end like this. Surely there's more in the tank. I want to see a miracle. I want to see everything NIP have. And NIP, this is an IP's second five game series, right? Like they went to five games up against WE. NIP started from round two. Like uh, they've had to play a lot of CO. Oh, you're right. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. I guess Flandre doesn't really have any damage. I don't know. I'm kind of surprised he didn't try, though. But maybe he just get kited. It is a Zeri. He also does have two MR items, right? So really itemizing to play against Rookie and Shanji in this game. Just going to back off in the yep. end. The one really nice thing for NIP is that they have so much wave clear with this composition that realistically without Baron, it's very difficult to take any towers so long as Rookie is there. And especially if Shanji feels the need, he can drop an equalizer. We'll drop that equalizer, but it just doesn't matter. Oh, and now Yagao flies in. He wants this series done with. Yagao has been phenomenal today and he sets up yet another play. 
Nymero was saying earlier, Yagao is a player who steps up in clutch situations. That's why this man has been able to consistently win in the LPL, and he's doing it here in Game 5. It's so nice to see because Yagao definitely had a slow start to the split as Andre gets engaged on. He's had a cigarette and a Red Bull, and he's ready for more. Aki forced away. No mana to work with either. They can't dive underneath the Nexus Towers, but that'll be a top inhib taken. We're looking towards three inhibs here. This Dwarf Falls. Forget the inhibs. They want the game. Rookie is next. A double for Kanavi as they push onto the fountain. Rule of Force to ult, but it just doesn't matter. Photic barely survived as Flandre tanks the fountain laser. Ruler dived on by Aki, but the gang arrives to protect their AD carry. Game five wins out. JDG, they want to defend their titles. JDG showing again. They are they are different from the rest of the pack. Them, TS, BLG sitting at the top. Now going to be able to make their way to face the loser out of BLG in top esports potentially get hell. I mean, it, it'd be revenge on, on either one for different reasons. It went the distance. It felt like it could have been a 3-0, but still the fact that they showed that even when their backs are against their wall in a fifth game, they could pull it back and have this kind of performance, especially out from Ruler and Yagao, is tremendous. Phenomenal game number five. Like, it has to be said. While it's not the cleanest series we've ever seen, that game five was near flawless from them. Phenomenal bit of gameplay. And it does mean now that JDG will move on in the bracket. I have to say, I'm a little heartbroken for NIP. The story of their bracket run has been such a spectacle to be able to witness. Rookie looking so good across playoffs. But honestly, today, I feel like Yagao has actually maybe been the better mid laner, dare I say it. It's, it's hard, right? Because rookies have the flashy plays, but Yagao able to cement and, and, and make sure the team gets over the finish line. I do got to say, though, I'm sad and I keep going out, too. Games, yeah. uh, especially, again, I do not think we are seeing the best that this roster has put together. Like, they, they just came together in spring with Aki and Shanji, you know, coming to, to join this core. Rookie rejoining the core that he is part of with bot lane, like, it's a team I'm excited to see in summer, but again, it is sad. It was so close, and yeah, it's going to be fun to see where NIP are able to go next split. Yeah. I'm excited for next year for NIP, but I'm excited for next series for yeah. JDG managing to push forwards in that lower bracket. And tomorrow we get to find out who their opponent will be as well, because it's Top Esports versus BLG as our next series tomorrow. The loser of that will have to face this JDG. And I feel like JDG right now, they are a team that when they look good, when they draft well, they look fantastic, but they don't always look good. They don't always draft well. And I feel like that it leads to exciting series when you're watching this squad. Yeah, definitely can be back and forth. It certainly can be. That's going to be it from us. I've been much joined by Lyric. And we're going to kick it over to our analysts over on the, in the lounge uh, to break that series down and talk us through what had happened in game number five. Thank you so much, Munch and Lyric, for casting. You guys are true troopers. But yes, we are back in the analyst lounge, I guess that's what we're that calling it name. right now. Name yeah, I, you know what? <laughs> it's almost as if they get paid to talk. Ah. Almost, almost, you know? We're anyway. all paid yappers. Yappers. <laughs> <laughs> I am Ginny, joined with Alex and Trouble, and we're going to break this one down because unfortunately here, I think what I would like to touch upon is the fact that NIP have got to go home now. Um, this is them done until summer, but they have fought tooth and nail and they have grown so much over the course of just one series. I'm impressed. NIP um, at the start of the year had big expectations put on them. I think after this split and after what's happened in this playoffs, you've met those expectations, NIP. I have become a fan of your team. Um, so if you're out there, fans Aww. of the team, or you're there from there as well, I love watching this team. This series was a show of perseverance. It was a show of creativity. It was a show of star power. And I can't wait to see where this team goes. I mean, it's a mishmash of so many different blends, and I love to watch them play. And it's sad to see them go. And I feel like they met expectations of their big fans. That saw the potential behind the scenes for NIP, you know. Out team fighting JDG is not a small fit, and they actually managed to do this. And they should definitely be proud of that one.
We're proud. They're definitely proud. And I hope the fans at home are proud as well. But with JDG, that actually means that there have certain expectations that people have put on them that they are so far meeting because now they're heading further into this bracket. They're not eliminated and they're not going home. Uh, it did take five games, though. And I think particularly after the way that game three went, um, there will be continued questions about how JDG are going to go forwards. They will be either facing, you know, a BLG, um, a matchup which they owned last year. They don't have that ownership of this matchup this year. And they will be up against, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that mid laner and Knight as well, who got them to so much of their, um, their, their success last year. Yeah. And I feel like for JDG, they have not missed, what, the last three finals? Uh, in the LPL, they have not missed. Not only have they not missed them, but they have also won them. So it would definitely suck if they went out like this uh, mm -hmm. versus a team that didn't have a lot of expectations, a lot of weight behind them. Was JDG definitely has that weight, especially since he's not completing the Golden Road last year and building towards that yeah. one this but time. Around. Again, for JDG as well, important to note here that it's not identical roster mm. as the yeah. one from last year. So uh, as much as there are expectations on the organization itself, the individual players, the team have not don't necessarily need to be held to that standard but of course they will hold themselves to that standard because this game particularly it started off wobbly to say the least but they managed to bring it back with the classic team fights massive team fights and massive individual plays too you know i i look at um particularly i look at like ruler zaya and then the uh, yagao on the azir in the mid lane but particularly that zaya i look at that and i say if ruler ever had all summoners up and ult available even though you have a great team fight dive comp from nip in isolation doing that into full summoners ult into zaya became absolute hell it was so difficult actually getting their combo to work i feel like this is such a jdg comp this was a front to back nirvana <laughs> in the draft like ruler locked and loaded on his world skin on the champion <laughs> that he won worlds and made the difference with i feel this is such a confidence boost going in major props to yagao as well who has been continuously locking rookie in lane and he's had some phenomenal performance on the azir particularly in this game okay but if it's like a draft nirvana was it which album was it was it like was it was it the bleach right, album because right. they were so clean was it never mind because they didn't care about the dive there are options here i'm sorry i just needed that one i needed that yeah, one it's fine you, one. you can have that one We'll, we, we'll, we get it. You're cultured. We'll give him two a, day. You. two a day. Two a day. Yeah. You had two jokes today, and I'm really proud of you. Thank you. You should I'm be proud, proud of myself. yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I am. I mean, we're looking at JDG, I'm sure that as much as they're proud of themselves and happy to the fact that they're continuing, I want to bring back to the point that it did take five games. And especially game three and game four, it wasn't the JDG that was classical and perfect and so methodological at their team fights. They slipped up because they had a massive psycho visiting every single lane back to back and they could not keep track of him. I feel like Rookie got the massivest backpack he could find put his whole team behind it. He's like, we are not losing this series. He but the bot lane the as well. Absolutely. I feel like he created so much pressure. I'm glad you mentioned that because he created so much pressure for JDG that JDG was locked and loaded on him for games three and five to shut him down. That Fotic gone completely unnoticed in all these fights and was able to have massive performances on any carries. Yeah, and you know, NIP, this, this is why, you know, we, we look back at the journey of this from high expectations to good start of the split to a real fall off in the second half of regular split to then build back up through playoffs. I'm I'm really glad this team didn't just phone it in, just say, look, the synergy's not there. Oh, uh, you know, Aki and, and Juo and Fodic, they're not they're not playing well. It's just Rookie and a, and a bunch of other people he's dragging with him. That wasn't the case. You look through this series and it was comprehensive team fights. It was multiple people stepping up. I mean, Shanji in that last game as well got his rumble and, and very, very nearly did some, some dastardly work in this last game here too. So, you know, I walk away from this series not not thinking that this game was defined by which team made the worst plays. I thought it was defined by the players that really carried it, and that's exactly the kind of League of Legends I'm interested in. Would we say that Rookie, potentially a household name to that international stage, could be missed this time around? Oh, absolutely. You know, he hasn't been seen in an international tournament since Worlds 2019. And every time he makes it so close, but not quite there. You know, he was in regional finals last year. He made it there a couple of years before that as well. This will not be the closest he's gotten to international events. He's had a lot of near misses. And you know, every time I see him play, and let's be honest, in the LPL, there are a lot of players we look at here and we say, I am excited and I'm blessed to see games from these players. The fact that we don't see him international, it is, it is sad to see that. However, you know, we are equally very, very excited and, and it's a very great opportunity for us to showcase ourselves as a region as well. Look at the teams which do go forward, whether that is uh, BLG, Top Esports, or JDG, and say, you know what, these are the real cream of the crop. And absolutely, there's like 
12 international title holders. We're down to the last three and the last four teams that we had up until today with NIP included 12 international titles, including MSI first and Worlds first. That is absolutely absurd. Like someone unfortunately had to go. Yeah, I mean, G2 is shaking in their boots. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had to bring that up. Had but to. I mean, it, it is what it is. I have no loyalties at this point to Yeah, any this region. is the point. We bring you over here and we just say, so um, about this region, which has done really well against yours in the past, you know. Yeah, just gotta, how like, do you feel? We're going to start, like, you know, like the campaign of fear just a little bit early. Just, yeah. you know, you got a little bit of advance. Listen, forward. if the expectations are, like, on the floor, then if it gets, like, a little bit better <laughs> than the floor, like, you're already really hey, happy. I've been brainwashed really a little bit. I've been, I've been only here for, like, what, two months? Yeah, well, I mean, but the, the takeaway from this is, you know, every time I walk away from an LPL playoff series, I look at the players, I look at the individual play as well, I look at the drafts, you know, we're very creative with that as well. And it really does feel like we just bring something special every time a best of five happens. Yeah, and I think as well, something to really highlight here is that when we're looking at the last five games that we've seen, it felt like individual players have been stepping up to the plate time and time again. We've had multiple MVPs. I mean, when we're looking at NIP, it was rookie mainly, but still, the, uh, the MVPs from the series, the MVPs from these different games, it feels like it's a multi-level threat of every single team and I feel like a little bit of an unsung hero this particular series and since JDG ended up walking away with it has to be Kanavi this yeah. man even in the losses the way he was spacing teams the way he was trying to stop very creative engages that were coming from the side of NIP making a B1 jobless buy almost work like he has to be commended for the, the level of gameplay that he puts out and you know he was on my shortlist for MVP um and you look at a team like JDG and the rosters have changed. You know, Yagao mm -hmm. went in, he, he he went out, he came back in again. We've had different players over time as well. You know, like um, we had a lot of different players, but Kanavi remains the same. So if you had to pick an MVP for this series particularly, just throw it out there. He's going to pick Yagao. I can see, I can see him. Would you not? I would pick Kanavi. Okay. Um, no, actually, I would also go with Kanavi. No, I think that Yagao... Hey, high five. I, I, <laughs> okay, I agree with you for once. You get, you get one. Um, but I really think that Kanavi, um, his impact on team fights cannot be understated. Um, a lot of the work that he does, it won't always be always the flashy players. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. you look at the way that... Um, so there was, even in the, the game loss in game four, the one with the um, the Vega, um, I looked at that. And you look at the Vi and you say, like, he's he's queuing forwards, but he's not ulting forwards. He's ulting mm. back into the team fight to keep him safe. But using the threat of that R just before it's used to yeah. make sure that um, players are kind of kept accountable across the board. Yeah, we have MVP ready as well. So that's hence the discussion that we're having in regards to who we think the MVP is going to be. And with it Probably being Yagao, for this you game. guys are so <laughs> on well, point. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, so Analysts <laughs> analyzing. <laughs> I think that Yagao on the Azir as well. Um, in the regular season, we had a lot of conversations about Yagao in terms of like his damage percentage is low, his kill participation is low. It doesn't matter. Playoffs Yagao is one of the most clutch players in League of Legends. Whenever this guy gets into an important game, you know that Yagao is going to deliver. MSI last year, he did the same. He's done all the same for you know a number of years at this point. And with him stepping back into JDG, no, he's not Knight and he won't be the same player, but God, Damn it, he's clutch. I feel like this is the conversation all the time. Like, no one can be knight, but I feel like what Yagao brings to the table is just consistency. Mm -hmm. He needed to shut Rookie down. He did that excellently in game one and game two. Rookie could not have the same impact. And game five. And game five, absolutely. His Azir was massive. Yeah, and it, just completely shutting Rookie out of team fights time and time again has made it so difficult for NIP to play through that individual player that has put them in the backpack. And also, like in that last game season, the last time we saw him play the Azir, the game before that anyway, was the Tank Azir, which is much easier to go forward on and play aggressively on. He was playing like full damage Azir in this one. He didn't have that Glass same degree cannon. of error. Let's go. Glass cannon, and the cannon hit true. I mean, there was like, there's, there's just, just a mess everywhere. That cannon hit true. And it really felt like um, he found his moments really well. Yeah. I think Yagao's yeah. specific skill set, if you walk away, it really is about just finding those engages on the right timing. Mm -hmm. And to further highlight how these team fights have played out and how important and instrumental Yagao was to these fights, we have. Have a couple of clips that we're going to be playing to dissect, so to say, the beauty of the team fighting here at the LPL. Team fights are kind of our specialty here. Uh, we have we JDG. Like to, we have we JDG. Have <laughs> well, I mean, you look at any of the top teams. You got like your team. You got all of these things, and that, like particularly, I think from JDG, just so many hero plays across this game. You know, we see Yagao comping up with Kanavi here. That's one play where Kanavi gets the kill onto Rookie. In this one, you know, it's a mess of a fight, but it's Ruler with all of his summoners and his ult available, going in and getting a huge play onto the backline. The flanking Zai. You know, this guy has a world skin for a reason. And you know, we go later into the game, and it really was Yagao again that starts to pick up the slack after that. 
point. What a beautiful team JDG is when they're all locked in. Absolutely. I felt like they slipped just a little bit in games number three and number four. But particularly when it came into this one, they took every single fight to NIP. We know that NIP liked to play aggressive. They did play aggressive in this particular one. And JDG just brought out their team fight and shoved it straight into NIP's face. And it just works. This is what JDG is known for. Yeah, and Ruler particularly as well, a player that we've highlighted time and time again in terms of how well he's played, but this game particularly has been incredible. And something that he's done was may maybe that we're not so used to in terms of AD carries. It's uh, what impressed me particularly was the discipline when it comes to even though he could use Flash to reposition, didn't feel like doing it. Yeah, I, I, I really love that. Because in this game, if Zaya doesn't have Flash, the team fights are much, much harder. I mean, when we talk about Ruler, you know, we are talking about arguably the greatest AD carry of all time. He's up there. He's on the shortlist either way. You know, he's down. Uh, he's, he's, he's very close to that. Last year, I mean, this point last year, I thought he was the best player in the world as well, leading up and towards MSI. I don't think he's met those standards for himself this year, but we do see those occasional flashes where he is just that absolutely dominant, overbearing team fight carry where if he has the resources on the Zeri, on the Zaya and stuff like this, and you just can't get to him quite before he flashes out, he will outplay you. He's so good at just walking that knife's edge and getting maximum value out of the team fights like we saw in that game five. I feel like there's some positives in playing in a team like JDG, right? If oh, really? Ruler, <laughs> oh, wow. doesn't mm, this have, team that wins so much. Yeah, <laughs> if, if Ruler doesn't have the best day and he hasn't necessarily been that pop-off performance carry that we have seen, that we have seen glimpses like you mentioned here, then like some Lucian's popping off and all that. He's Zaya right here in game number five, super pivotal for the win. However, you've got Flandre to fall back on, you've got Kanavi to fall back on, you've got Yagao with some incredible performances as well. So luckily for JDG, Ruler doesn't always have to be the be all for the team to win. However, moving forward and knowing you're gonna face either BLG or Top Esports, they both looked extremely scary in their previous series. Mm -hmm. And also mm -hmm. for Top Esports, they've already 3 all of them. Well, this is the thing, right? I think in a series like this, where it does go back and forth, like maybe you can fall back on another carry to be the star for a little while. When you go up against the top two, when you go up against BLG, when you're going against Top Time Esports to on the form, um, I, I actually do think everyone needs to be online. You can't mm -hmm. wait for someone else to become the main character. Everyone needs to step up together here as JDG. And I think particularly after you know the shellac they were given by Top Esports. They'll be hungry for blood. It is a classic matchup. It is the classic matchup, matchup of modern LPL history if it's Top Esports. And of course, it is the 2023 one yeah. if BLG um, end up going down to the lower bracket as well. So whoever they face coming through from the, the matchup we have tomorrow, it will be absolutely red hot. I was going to say, because you're running with, well, against Top Esports, it will be this, but, it, but well, we don't it know. Could be it, it could be that. It could be. It could be Top Esports. It could be BLG. But either way, that's the matchup that we're going to be looking at tomorrow. And it's actually, unfortunately, Unfortunately, looking at the playoff playoffs bracket that we have available, the game that we saw today was an elimination game. So just to really hammer that home, NIP, that's them done for spring. That's I don't I'm not gonna say going back to the drawing board, but to an extent, what went right and what went wrong. And I think a lot of things went right for them, absolutely so, in terms of the expectations, but also maybe a couple of mishaps here because from what we've seen from them from game three and game four, it felt like they can take JDG on at their own game. I don't want to hammer anymore on NIP, honestly. I feel like they should be absolutely, utterly proud of what they have achieved right here. I feel like making sure that you beat teams in their own game, beating JDG in that team fighting game is a huge achievement on its own. Aki has had a fantastic development through the speed, lots of slip ups together with Sol early on, but everyone absolutely stepped up. And honestly, I cannot wait to see them next split. Yeah, and to further stay in this vein of positivity, Rookie has been a player that we highlight time and time again. I know guys, we've spoken about Rookie so much, but- we But Aki's gone, no. you know? Oh. But before, before, before we, he's gone, before we end things, uh, we would like to roll some of the incredible plays that we've seen from Rookie today. Yeah, you know, there is a reason why so many of these champions have become like synonymous with Rookie's champion pool. We highlighted a couple, largely the Ari, the Talir, and then the Aurelian Soul. We saw a lot of them banned this series, and we even saw the Talir taken away from Rookie. Um, later into the series as well. The way that he gets involved in the early game is oppressive. That's why they have to shut him down early. The way that he gets involved in team fights, well, you can't shut that, that one so easily. If you're going to straight up fist fight in a 5v5, you're going to have to face up against him. And you know, in the games which um, NIP won, Rookie was.
was instrumental to parts of that. And the way he plays around Fog of War as well, it turns the game into a horror survival. You just don't know where the next combo is coming from. I feel like this was my biggest surprise coming into the LPL. You talking about Rookie being so good playing through Fog of War and actually seeing it in this particular series. Like, the guy, like the guy was like... literally forcing resets right, left and center, right before very crucial moments and neutral objectives, which turned a lot of the fights for NIP in their favor. It's like, a, you know, that clip from Jurassic Park was like, wow, they really do move, move in herds. It's like this disbelief <laughs> of seeing this legendary thing. They act this way that we've been saying all along. Rookie, it's just, what? what more can we say about this guy? They don't just like go blow for blow, fist for fist, or like without <laughs> like even like considering what objectives are up. That happens, oh, that's well, we real? Occasion I'm not going to say that we don't fight over <laughs> nothing occasionally. Yeah. Like that does happen. It's all but, about entertainment. It is like there, there are two different kinds of League of Legends, right? You have like your gourmet, you have your Michelin star, <laughs> and then you have like your fast food. There is grease dripping off of it. There's four kills. There's like four kills Excuse in five minutes. Us? There are there are dude, dude, two I'm different loving, kinds. And I'm, I'm loving just, League and I'm fast just, food. And I'm just saying, like there are two ways about this, and there is definitely a place for your Michelin star like gold leaf on your food. But sometimes you sat there and like NIP in their um, series versus W when they had the lane swap, or um yeah, like uh, when they had that, it's like well you know well what happens if they do go for the five kills in four minutes. Like, you could absolutely have both. And I love that we do have both here in, in the LPL. Yeah, it's just whatever the flavor of the day is, right? Yeah. And today it was it was a combination of both. It was both, a little bit of both, right? Because yeah. we saw the lane swaps. We saw like them both. a gold leaf on a burger. <laughs> I mean, listen, people do like to eat that. At, but, you know, you, you can't judge people on what, what they're I didn't say you know? I was judging. I said it was maybe, maybe a burger with a gold leaf is just like the flavor of the day. And we're very spoiled in terms of being able to see that. Because, again, we also got a five-game series in total. And we saw a lot of different aspects from both of these teams. And from JGG particularly, it's also going to give them an opportunity to look back and say, okay, Technically, historically, we're the best team in the league when it comes to team fighting, but we got beaten in our own game. What went wrong and what can we prepare for our upcoming match from the loser of Top Esports and BLG? I think it was particularly a lot around the wave crashes and how they played around their waves and their vision. They got a little bit sloppy in terms of, hey, we are safe. You are never safe. If mm. jungler is in fog of war, you haven't spotted them in a while. If mid lane is in fog of war, especially when you're playing against mid laners, they do tend to roam a lot. You have to be a little bit more careful in these regards. And honestly, sloppy drafts can also kill their momentum in their early game especially when they played i think it was game four when they literally had four farming lanes yes to bottom yeah. and just a jobless buy it was it was just very sad to see as a canavi enjoyer yeah and you know um I think a lot of the learnings from this series are obviously going to have to put into a different perspective when you look at regardless of the opponent that they face. I mean, the lanes from both BLG and Top Esports are absolutely ridiculous. You either have Bin or 369. You've got like Cream or Knight who are fantastic in laning yeah. phase in the mid lane as well. You've got like Elk and Jakulov as, as, as both the AD carries there too. And I mean, I look at Jakulov, maybe the best Varus in the world. I look at Elk, maybe the best, you know, Lucian in the LPL contesting for best in the world as well. Lane dominant champions. Yeah, Rula and... might show up on the day. I'm just well, yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not saying that they can't okay. contend, but the thing is like when you're drafting um, to give these openings in terms of yeah. early lane, um, I don't think either of the teams which are currently in, in, in the upper bracket will give you a free pass on that. So JDG going towards like drafts in their next series, they need to be very, very careful not to give over too much pressure early. And they kind of did versus NIP in a couple of these games. Yeah, and that's something to be worried about because tomorrow we're going to be looking at a J. No, we're not going to be looking at JDG. <laughs> it's BLG. There we go. It's going to be BLG and they're going to be going up against top esports. But in terms of how the bracket has played out, the results for today does mean that NIP will be going home losing the this two to three it was so close yet unfortunately so far they have genuinely put their heart and soul into this bo5 and that is something to be extremely proud of that means though that jdg is going to be advancing towards game 11 which will be against the loser of blg top esports and then the winner of that game tomorrow they're going to be bing chilling in the finals and confirmed from heaven's side yeah and that's the thing like the next elimination after that point is then for the last golden ticket to get towards that international event that will be red hot you know i mean blg top east was already it was our one of our very first games of the split on day one uh, which of course we, we I, I flew out here to cover that one as well it feels like such a long time ago now mm -hmm. um and we saw that go three games right at the start of the split it's hard to judge that because these are two teams which you know they've grown a lot in their different ways towards that now right at the end as well towards the end of these playoffs as well we get to see them match up again i cannot wait to see who will come out on top likewise i feel i feel the same way however i do feel like blg are coming as the behemoths of the league this time around and even though top esports put a fantastic three and no showcasing versus jdg who's also a very strong team i think there are a few 
steps between BLG and any other team behind them. So I cannot wait to see what kind of preparation Top Esports would have to come up with tomorrow to actually have a fighting chance versus BLG. Well, one sleep before you can actually see you what Top Esports has prepared. And that's all it is, one sleep, because we're going to be back tomorrow again here. Same time, same place for BLG going up against Top Esports. So take care of, your, of yourselves. Thank you so much for joining us for today. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Bye.